I was a rich second generation who used to drive a Ferrari, but I was reborn back to 1983, the first day after the rebirth. There was a heart-rending cry of a woman outside the house. I got up and, dragging my drunken body, went outside. A woman in a pink suspender dress was kneeling on the ground, covered in wounds. He gasped and muttered under his breath. Zhou Yufeng, you bastard. If you have the guts, just kill me. I looked at the floor covered in broken glass. Suddenly, a severe headache struck. A memory that doesn't belong to me suddenly rushes into my mind. It turns out that the male lead in this life is also named Zhou Yufeng. He is 22 years old this year, married to Jiang Xiaoduo for two years. He's either drinking, gambling, or beating his wife all day long. Zhou Yufeng's parents both died in an accident while operating machinery. Thinking about the experience of beating my wife in the past two years, I said embarrassedly, Hello, sorry about that, Jiang Xiaoduo. Jiang Xiaoduo looked puzzled. Why would Zhou Yufeng, who usually drinks heavily and lacks integrity, apologize to me on his own initiative? It was the urgent knocking on the door from outside. It turned out to be my sister knocking on the door, bringing her little brother to borrow money. Looking at the bruises on my sister's face, I angrily said, Who hit you? Hu Han remembered his sister and went to ask him for compensation for their parents' death. He got beaten. His sister looked very aggrieved. You're just asking a question you already know the answer to. Zhou Yufeng's family has nothing to eat. Xiao Zheng hasn't eaten for a day. Come here and get some money from you. I turned to look at Xiao Duo. Xiao Duo, how much money and leftover food do we have at home? We only have five yuan. But there are still ten pounds of ice tickets and two pounds of white flour. Xiao Duo, I have a favor to ask of you. Just give the fish the five dollars and the ten pounds of ice tickets first. The remaining two pounds of white flour will be enough for us to eat for a few meals. I'll figure out the rest later. When did I become so responsible? Yan Meng replied, It's okay. After handing the money to her sister, I walked out with a black face. Where are you going? I'm going to settle the score with Hu Han. I'm standing at the corner of the stairs, thinking about my parents working in the steel factory for almost 20 years. How could they lose their lives directly due to an operational error? And as the workshop director, Hu Han, reported the condolences to the Jin Shi factory, why wouldn't he want to earn himself a good reputation? I really can't understand. I'm going to find Hu Han to ask him clearly. Stop. Zhou Yufeng, are you crazy? What are you doing here? Uncle Wu came here today to ask you for a favor. Ask me what? It's my parents' affair. Indeed, they mishandled it. My sister often troubles you. I apologize on her behalf. Hu Han sees me being so submissive. Close your stony face. Then hypocritically say, Xiao Feng, are you more sensible? When something like this happens at the factory, don't I feel sad? Your sister said it was me who killed your parents. Isn't this an outrageous accusation? I was in a tight spot at home, so I had to agree with her. Yes, yes, you are right. I'm here this time to ask for some consolation money from the factory for my family. We really don't have any money at home. Hu Han looked impatient. That's what I'm saying. Uncle Hu, if the factory doesn't give it to me, I'll make a scene. Anyway, I can't go on living. I'll kill him. The Mediterranean uncle looked panicked at my madness. He quickly said, Xiao Feng, don't be impulsive. They are still cracking down. You are being reckless by causing trouble at the factory. Aren't you afraid of getting caught? What about your younger siblings? I can't manage all of this. If I can't give them money, I can only cause trouble. Let's see if my parents really made a mistake in their operation. Xiaofeng, employees who make operational mistakes at the factory are not eligible for compensation. But don't worry for now. Uncle and your dad have known each other for many years. Uncle. I'll give you this money on behalf of the factory. How much can you give? It's meaningless if it's too little. I might as well go to the factory to make a fuss. The factory usually gives 600 yuan for condolences. Uncle's family has a single breadwinner. We can only come up with 500 at home. You wait a moment. Uncle will give you some money. All right, Xiao Feng will give you. Ha Han. I will definitely make you pay for what you owe with your blood. When I saw a candied fruit vendor on the street, I walked up and spent two cents to buy a candied fruit stick. Happy birthday. Jiang Xiaodou was surprised to see me buy her a birthday present for the first time. After all, I used to only know how to drink and beat my wife. 
couldn't get away from Hu Han's place till a little late. This is the only one. I'll make it up to you with a different birthday present next time. It's so sweet. Don't you want some? I've had some. You have it. Seeing the adorable Jiang Xiaoduo so happy in front of me. I'm so happy. In the blink of an eye, it's time to go to sleep. Jiang Xiaoduo shouts from inside the room. Aren't you coming in to sleep? Jiang Xiaoduo keeps pressing on my back. But she's someone else's wife. Finally made it through the night. The hen from Mrs. Wang's house that's been making so much noise will be slaughtered sooner or later. Then Xiaodou woke up too. Walking into the living room, she was surprised to find a bowl of delicious egg noodles with chicken and puff pastry on the table. I quickly introduced it as longevity noodles. I bought you a candied hawthorn stick for your birthday yesterday. You should eat the egg first. Borrow it from Mrs. Wang next door. Xiao Duo exclaimed in surprise. Why did you steal Mrs. Wang's eggs? I told you, I borrowed them. I'll return them later. Then I put a thick stack of money on the table. Little Duo looked surprised after seeing it. Where did all this money come from? Did you steal it? When the original owner, Zhou Yufeng, was alive, he was only known for drinking and beating his wife. So, I can understand why Xiao Duo suspects me. I hurriedly explained that this is the condolence money for my parents which is only reasonable. Compensation. Isn't it common sense to say it was a parental operational error? And they even got a snack. How could there be any compensation? I immediately responded. I was forced by Hu Han to take these money that he gave me because he felt guilty and was afraid that I would cause trouble at Changli. Our family hasn't had any income lately. Let's use this money for now. Later, I will slowly look for evidence to seek justice for our parents. Xiaoduo looked at the man in front of her. A sense of security that she had never experienced before surged through her heart. Now that he has taken the money, he must relax his guard. The rest will be easy. Xiaoduo stared blankly at the man in front of her. Responsible. Clear logic. Careful thinking. Are you Zhou Yufeng? I chuckled and said. What nonsense are you talking about? There's a mole on my wife's butt. Does anyone else know about it? By the way... I'll discuss with you about keeping the three hundred dollars. I'll take two hundred dollars and give one hundred dollars to Yunnan. Can I exchange the one hundred dollars for food coupons? Jiang Xiaoduo nodded and agreed directly. I'll go find Yunnan right now. I was walking and looking around. Suddenly, I heard someone calling my name. Jiangzi, there's a game tonight. With Chen Guida. Let's team up and make a big profit from him. What do you think, Chen Guida? His father seems to be a retired leader at the Lingxue Steel Plant. He is now working at the Lingxue Steel Plant. Yu Feng, I'll come to your house tonight to find you. Is Jiang Xiaodou at home? Cheng Guida, this person must be seen. But I'll go to your house to find you. Well, I'm leaving. How did this coward marry such a beautiful wife? I gently pushed the door with my hand. Why isn't the door closed? When he saw me, Xiaojing was stunned for a moment. Second sister... Big Brother is here. What's wrong with Xiaoang? Why is Big Brother here? Zhou Yu's brow furrowed. What is he here for? You, you should go rest. Fan Gu came to continue kneading the dough while I sneaked a peek at the door. Are you making noodles today? Yes, I'm making them. It'll be ready soon. Why are you here? Let me finish the noodles first. Zhou Yufeng. Why did you use so much of my flour? It's okay, you, we have money now. He questioned where the money came from. Other than selling things from the house, gambling, drinking, and beating your wife. What else can you do? Zhou Yufeng hurriedly turned over the trouser hole and took out ten large banknotes from inside. Take these. You are also taking the exam soon. Eat more nutritious food. Don't be hesitant to eat. Where did you get the money? You didn't go again, did you? Before he could finish, I urged. I urged impatiently. Okay, okay. Let's talk after we eat. I stir-fried some meat. Haven't had it in a long time. Qian and Hu Han asked for it. Zhou Yu Na and Zhou Yu Feng said in unison, Hu Han. He had a puzzled look on his face. I was sitting on the street, eating a two-cent popsicle. Suddenly, a group of people waved at me. It turned out to be Fu Dehai and Zhang Ziwei. Long time no see. Looking at Chen Ziren in front of me, he seems to be a good friend of Jiang Xiaodua's wife. Zhou Yufeng, are you out of your mind? What are you staring at? Xiao Shan, why bother? No need. What a pile of garbage. 
daring to act like a hooligan in front of nature. I really don't understand how Jiang Xiaoduo could be attracted to you. The reason they treat me like this is because in this life, Zhou Yufeng drinks and beats his wife every day. After being reborn, I had to quickly explain. Xiao Shan, you've misunderstood. Xiao Duo and nature are friends. How could I possibly act indecently in front of my friend's wife? All right. Hu Xiao Shan, we're all classmates. Let's go. Hu Xiao Shan, your good days are numbered. After buying groceries, I unexpectedly ran into my wife, Xiang Xiaoduo, at the corner of the street. She looked at me with a terrified expression and quickly covered her mouth. You've also had an ice cream, haven't you? It's been a long time since I've eaten. I bought a watermelon for you. I thought it must be the previous life's Zhugai Feng not allowing Jiang Xiaoduo to spend money on snacks. It's also pitiful to think about. I stroke her head and feel the smell. We have money now. Buy whatever you want to eat. We will only have more money in the future. Let me carry it for you. Not tired, not tired. All right, give it to me. Jiang Xiaoduo looked at me with emotion, recalling the romantic stories between us and the campus. She was lost in thought for a moment. What are you lost in thought for? As I arrived home, I heard a series of urgent knocks on the door. Hurry, hurry! I found out that Brother Chang had stolen money to gamble and was scolded by his wife. You know Director Chen's son, Chen Guida, right? He's particularly susceptible to getting hooked on playing Big Head. Let's team up and trick him. How much money did you bring, Brother Chang? I haven't received my salary this month, so I'll borrow some money from your sister-in-law. I'll borrow from you first. If I win, I'll pay you back. Brother Chang, you still haven't repaid the three dollars you borrowed last time. I only have one dollar with me now. How about we play again next time? Brother Chang suddenly lifted his right foot when he heard I was leaving, and took out a large banknote from his sock. Zhou Yufeng thought about how Chenguida's father, as the retired director of the field, had a wide network of contacts. It should help the parents' workshop to get justice for the dead. I murmured in my heart that I must not cheat Chenguida with Brother Chang. I'm telling you, this way of playing is very exciting. If the two who didn't call the score can join forces to challenge the scorer, as long as one of the two wins, it counts as both winning. As for the playing method, it's the same. You can go with three of a kind, two sets of three, or two sets of four. Isn't this just a multiplayer landlord game? What a lousy hand. Bro, you owe broach in almost a hundred bucks. Again, again, let's play for more. With no money, how do you plan to be the landlord? Can you even spare a penny from those worn-out socks of yours? If you dare to talk to me in that tone, no one is leaving today. If you want to continue playing tough, bring money. If you don't have money, then get lost. Also, let me remind you, if you provoke my wife again, I'll mess you up. Then Zhou Yufeng followed with a smile and said to Chen Guida, Brother Chen, you have a big heart. Let's end it here today. I'll treat you to dinner tomorrow as an apology. Chen Guida looked surprised after hearing it. The next day, Zhou Yufeng deliberately pretended to coincidentally encounter Chen Guida on his way home, in order to get close to him. Brother Chen, what a coincidence. I just finished selling fruit, and I'm exhausted. Brother Chen, you've come at the right time. Let me treat you to a meal as an apology for yesterday. Ha ha, it's all trivial matters, it's okay. Then Zhou Yufeng arrived at the local five-star state-owned hotel. He was moved to tears looking at the prices on the menu. Seven yuan for a bottle of Mao Tai, thirty-nine cents for maple tofu, and four yuan and fifty cents for ginseng chicken. Yu Feng, ordering so much is too polite. It's fine, it's rare for me to have a meal with you, Qin Ji. Let's indulge in the food. Zhou Yu Feng tasted the ginseng chicken in his mouth. Unexpectedly, he heard someone behind him scolding him loudly. Zhou Yu Feng, you trash, coming here to squander, your wife. Jiang Xiaoduo doesn't even know where to eat rotten vegetable leaves. All right, let's go. Chen Guida curiously asked, Do you have a grudge with the son of Hu Hanjia? We were classmates and had some conflicts in the past. By the way, you let me win in the card game yesterday. Do you think I didn't notice? Zhou Yufeng is trying his best to please Chen Guida. Ten thousand dollar king. To achieve financial freedom completely. Chen. Is your relationship with Hu Han not good? Just now when you mentioned him, you seemed unhappy. Chen Guida became more irritable after hearing this. When the director was elected back then, 
he voted for Su Chan Jiang. As a result, I lost the election for the director of the fourth workshop by just one vote. My dad hadn't retired at that time. The head of Hu Han's second workshop was promoted by my dad. This sly fox. Zhou Yufeng quickly and sensibly poured a drink for Chen Guida. Brother Chen, don't be angry. Let me pour you a drink. Who is this Su Chang Jiang? Could it be the son of the director of the Lin Shui Gang factory? Right. Nonsense. He's just a supplier from out of town with a weak connection. Brother Chen, why don't you consider going into business at sea? Don't work in this old factory anymore. I've thought about it, but my dad doesn't agree. But you said my friend started an electronics business in the Magic City last year and made over a hundred thousand in no time, suddenly became an outsider. When do you think this will be spent? Amazing, amazing. After Zhou Yufeng finished listening, he thought that he had crossed over with modern business knowledge and began to lay out his future plans. Oh, Chen, your factory is about to pay the property fees, right? It's a considerable amount, isn't it? Yeah. What's wrong? What if the fruits collected by your grandpa's family are used to pay the housing fees for the workers in the factory? Wouldn't that be yours? No, no, we can't do that. If we directly distribute the fruits collected by my grandpa, it will make others jealous. They might report it. Zhou Yufeng patted his chest and said with a smile, Ha ha ha, Chen, my grandpa, not yours. We can use an intermediary to provide the fruits using my identity. Isn't that feasible? Why didn't I think of that? You are really smart. After saying this, Chen Guida felt a hint of admiration for Zhou Yufeng. They kept drinking until midnight, watching Chen Guida and Zhou Yufeng pass out. Zhou Yifeng said he would take Chen Guo home. Can you ride a motorcycle? Just a little something. Little Zhou's driving skills are good. Chen, you're being too kind. Jiang Ah. Aunt is in the hospital. When I went a few days ago, she was still in a coma, kept muttering about you. But now, it seems like he has changed. What can you expect from a scumbag who only knows how to beat women every day? What's wrong? You seem troubled. I didn't expect Jiang Xiaoduo to hold on to Zhou Yufeng. Tonight, you can do whatever you want. After hearing this, Zhou Yufeng suddenly felt a little at a loss feeling the strong pressure from Jiang Xiaoduo on his chest. Zhou Yufeng vowed to become a wealthy man soon and make Jiang Xiaoduo regret it for life. Chen Guida told Zhou Yufeng that his dad agreed to let him purchase fruits for sale to the factory. Really, we'll have to rely on Brother Chen's connections for the rest. Chen Guida also happily said that if this matter succeeds, he's willing to give you a hundred dollars as a benefit. You can rest assured, I'll thank Brother Chen first. Yufeng it looks like a lot of relatives have come to your house. He opened the door and found his in-laws, the three of them, standing neatly in his yard. Mom, Dad, when did you come over? Xiao Duo didn't tell me, so I could have prepared earlier. Unexpectedly, after hearing it, Jiang Xiaodu's father had no reaction, looking indifferent. Have your parents eaten? I'll go make some food for you. Unexpectedly, Zhang's father slapped Zhou Yufeng directly. This is for my daughter. What have you done to my daughter? Dad. This slap is meant for me to give. Dad, that's enough. After all, a husband and wife are in this together. Zhang Xiaoduo stepped forward to comfort. Are you okay? Zhou Yufeng remembered that he used to drink heavily and abuse his wife. He said calmly. Xiaoduo. This is what I owe you. I let you down before. I'm sorry. After hearing this, Father Jiang angrily said, Zhou Yufeng, stop pretending. You must divorce Xiaoduo. Following this, Mother Jiang also pleaded with Zhou Yufeng, I beg you, spare my daughter. After speaking, he coughed a few times. Xiaoduo, what do you think? Jiang Xiaoduo turned around and replied, Let's get a divorce. Then they went to the Civil Affairs Bureau. If there's no problem, I'll stamp it. After leaving the Civil Affairs Bureau, Jiang Xiaoduo said to her mother, Mom, wait for me. 
I need to give Zhou Yufeng some instructions. This money was previously entrusted to me by you. There is still 285 left. Zhou Yufeng pushed away Jiang Xiaodo's hand. Xiaodo, you hold on to this. I owe you so much. How can I still have the face to ask for these? And if one day I revert back to my original self, you must completely sever ties with me. Xiaoduo doesn't know that the present Zhou Yufeng is actually someone who time-traveled from the year 2022, said with a puzzled look. What does this mean? Just remember it. Mom and Dad are still waiting for you. Let's go. Watching Jiang Xiaoduo leave from afar. Xiaoduo, take good care of yourself. Zhou Yufeng became the man. He became the man. The factory issued a notice that the rodent prevention bonus this time would be replaced with the distribution of fruits. After hearing this, Zhou Yufeng remained calm and composed. I thought that this time buying and selling was just the first step for him to become a successful businessman. Oh my, this one-time welfare can make over 1,500 yuan. Yufeng, work hard. After it's done, I'll give you 200 yuan as a reward. Thank you, Chunga. But we haven't bought packaging bags yet. If there are no packaging bags, it's easy to reveal the filling. It's over once we are reported in the end. Following that, they arrived at a plastic packaging factory. We need to see your factory manager. Why can't we get through to you on the phone? You're looking for the factory manager, right? Are you looking for manager Lee? Hello, Director Lee. I am the chairman of Guida Fruit Farm. It's an honor to meet you. We need fruit packaging bags. The demand is quite high. Can you produce one ton of packaging bags within half a month? The factory director looked shocked after hearing this. One ton? Yes, working overtime should make it possible. Then Zhou Yufeng cleverly said to the factory director, That's great, Director Li. We need you to provide some samples for us to do quality checks on. The inventory of plastic bags is all here. Take some to the inspection. Yufeng, you're amazing. You didn't spend a penny and got the packaging bags. Chen, call Director Li tomorrow morning and tell him if the inspection doesn't pass. Don't give them hope. Zhou Yufeng realized they had the bags, but they were still short of labor. Afterwards, they took Uncle Lu to a state-owned restaurant for a meal. You'll help Chen Guida deliver fruits the day after tomorrow, and I'll give you 50 yuan. No problem. At this time, Zhou Yufeng also began his own plan. Brother Chang, I heard you're the only locksmith in your village. You must have earned a lot of money. This kid is a locksmith by trade. The side job is sneaking into the neighbor's house and secretly opening their door. He ended up getting caught and spent a few years in prison. Zhou Yufeng kept insisting that he show off his skills. Let's see how skilled you are. Upon reaching this point, Nai Chiang Lu took a small tool from his pocket and performed a series of actions on the lock in front of him. With just one sound from him, the lock opened. Zhou Yufeng quickly asked him to teach him. Even Mrs. Lu, fearing that the male lead might turn to a life of crime, rejected him. So the male lead said that if she was willing to teach him, he would give her 100 yuan after delivering fruit the next day. Mrs. Lu, who was easily swayed by money, immediately agreed. The method of unlocking is available. Zhou Yufeng's revenge plan has officially begun. The next day, Zhou Yufeng brought Lu Naichang to the factory. The male lead was well prepared. He changed into a uniform just like the other workers, and also brought a straw hat. Chen Guida, who is unaware of the truth, exclaimed in admiration. What he doesn't know is, the male lead is helping him not for money, but for revenge. Zhou Yufeng suggested to wait until everyone is having lunch before distributing the fruits. It will save a lot of effort, and also save time. Just as everyone was heading to the cafeteria for lunch, Zhou Yufeng falsely claimed to have a stomachache. While saying he couldn't hold it anymore, he ran towards the distance. After running out of Lu Naixiang's sight, Zhou Yufeng instantly recovered. He found Hu Han's office and wanted to go in. Even this old guy locked the door to eat. This made the male Li more determined in his thoughts. There must be evidence of his corrupt practices in this room. Zhou Yufeng then took out a tool similar to Lu Naixiang's from his pocket and skillfully opened the door. Tyson doesn't dare to unlock. You dare to unlock. You're even more badass than Tyson. As soon as Zhou Yufeng entered the room, he began to search. Sure enough, he found a purchase and sales contract for factory equipment. But strangely, there is no official seal on it. This should be a fake contract used to deceive others. Furthermore, looking online at the bookshelf, I found there are actually the four great classical novels. P. 
people like Hu Han probably can't even recognize many Chinese characters. You're still reading? So, he took one of the books down, but he accidentally dropped it, and the book made a loud noise as it fell to the ground. This scared the male lead out of his wits. Open the book and take a look. It turns out to be a box. After Zhou Yufeng's search, finally found the real contract. The male lead is in a great mood with evidence. Hu Han, you are completely finished this time. Look at Zhou Yufeng who has returned. Lu Naichang is very angry. I almost finished sorting the fruits and you come back. Did you fall into the toilet? The male lead didn't hesitate and casually handed 110 yuan to Naichang Lu. Naichang Lu, upon receiving the money, instantly beamed with joy. Mr. Zhou, take care. Leave the rest of the work to me. This Hu Han has a lot of guts. Just a small workshop director, daring to forge official seals. He embezzled over 2.5 million from this batch of substandard equipment. He's as good as dead this time. On the way home, I ran into the same classmate again, as Zhou Yufeng approached. Hu Xiaoshan once again started the mocking mode. Oh, you're in the mood for a stroll again? Another girl also mocked. Poor little duo. A woman who has been married twice is not easy to marry. Jiang Xiaodou should have left this scumbag long ago. These words are too much. And the male lead chose to ignore such rotten fish and shrimp directly. The stillness approached Su Wei. He ignored who Xiaoshan was like a boiling river, reaching out to grab Zhou Yufeng's arm. He actually reached out and grabbed Zhou Yufeng's arm, only to see Zhou Yufeng grab Hu Xiaoshan's arm and twisted it forcefully, directly subdued him. This move directly made Hu Xiaoshan grimace in pain. At this moment, the girl who had just taunted said, Let him go, you lunatic. The male lead then gently pushed. Hu Xiaoshan, who lost his balance, immediately fell towards the girl. The two of them fell to the ground. This time, Zhou Yufeng sneered. You don't have the ability, yet you love to use your hands, like an old hen that never stops. So noisy. Hu Xiaoshan was so angry that he was trembling all over by this remark. He retorted angrily. Just because I got some money from my dad, does it justify showing off like this? It's good that he didn't say anything. Now he has a strong suspicion. Your father, Hu Han, doesn't have many days left. Think carefully. Has there been any change in your father since April? Hu Xiaoshan was instantly plunged into memories. Indeed. His father now either beats or scolds him, and he even keeps a mistress. After a reminder from Zhou Yufeng, Hu Xiaoshan seemed to have guessed something, even though he was unwilling to admit it. The fact was also right in front of him. The male lead who had achieved his goal didn't say anything. Instead, he directly called the factory where the incident involving his parents occurred. After explaining the situation to factory director Kong Jinzhong, director Kong suddenly realizes that this kid Hu Han actually forged contracts and made millions in profit from it. He even purchased substandard equipment, causing the tragic death of the male lead's parents. At this time, Kang Jinzhong urgently ordered all equipment in Workshop 2 to stop running immediately. This matter must not be known to Hu Han. Just as Director Kang was about to go get evidence from the male lead, the male lead said that he can give you the evidence anytime. But you should report to the police as the factory manager now. This way you can get away from it. The position of the factory manager may be in jeopardy all of a sudden. After reporting to the police, Kang Jinzhong immediately went to find Zhou Yufeng. Looking at the evidence in front of him, he was very satisfied. Young man, what's your name? My name is Zhou Yufeng, but this has nothing to do with me. I'm just helping you collect evidence. At this time, the police have also arrived. The work of arresting Hu Han is about to begin. At this time, Hu Han still doesn't know that he has been wanted by the public security authorities. He is about to pay the price for his greed. As he drank water, he looked towards the bookshelf and found that the books had been moved. Looking at the empty book box, Han Tan was shocked. It's all over. But after all, he is an old hand. He forced himself to calm down. Carefully recalling who he had met today, suddenly, he remembered the person who came to the factory to deliver fruit today, and that kid wearing a straw hat. Isn't that Zhou Yufeng? At this moment, Zhou Yufeng arrived at his brother and sister's house. He couldn't wait to tell everyone the news that Hu Han was going to be captured. Yuna is reviewing her homework with classmates due to an upcoming exam. She sees the male lead. The two students whisper to each other as they walk. This guy is here to ask for money. He sold everything in his house. 
It seems that the former Zhou Yufeng has become notorious. The male lead called his younger brother Yu Jing and his sisters Yu Na and Yu Yu over. The matter of Hu Han has been resolved. You won't have to worry about anything in the future. But instead of feeling joy, Yu Na, the younger sister, looked behind him in terror. She pointed fearfully behind him. When Zhou Yufeng turned around, Han Hu was standing at the door. It looks like this old guy is getting desperate. Gang Gang heard everything Hu Han said. Hu Han looked fierce and said, So it's you, you little animal. Hand over my stuff. After speaking, he pounced towards the male lead. But Zhou Yufeng remained calm. He seized one of Hu Han's hands, and with a twist, easily subdued Hu Han. Hu Han's son, Hu Xiaoshan, also failed because of this move. It seems that the male lead is indeed the nemesis of this father and son. Although he is being controlled, Hu Han is still going crazy. Give me back the contract quickly. Looking at Hu Han being so arrogant, Zhou Yufeng added more force, hurting Hu Han so much that he kept screaming, then kicked him, picked up the bottle and smashed it. Who are you talking to, Zaya Pakai? It seems like you haven't figured out the situation. Zhou Yufeng's actions shocked the two sisters and widened their eyes. Now, Hu Han has been completely intimidated, clear, understood. The male lead then punched and knocked out several of Hu Han's teeth. At this time, Zhou Yufeng was very angry. If it weren't for Hu Han, my parents wouldn't have died so tragically. Hu Han looked at Zhou Yufeng in horror. What do you want to do? You still want to settle the score with us, the Yuna family, and my parents matter. At this moment, Hu Han's face has already twisted. It's none of my business regarding your parents. We've known each other for many years. I am also saddened by what has happened. I see that Zhou Yufeng has started performing again, so that's how it is. Let's forget it. Things seem to be taking a turn for the better, Hu Han quickly said. Give me the contract quickly. That's government property. You'll end up in jail. I've already hidden the Huber contract. Who would carry that thing with them? So I hugged Huber and walked out. The two sisters were stunned by the sight. They had no idea. This guy is full of bad intentions. He's setting a trap for Hu Han at this moment. And Zhou Yufeng is about to make his first fortune in this era. Watching Zhou Yufeng and Hu Han walk out of the house arm in arm, the two sisters looked completely confused about the situation. Weren't you just fighting like crazy? At this moment, Zhou Yufeng turned to look at the two younger sisters. The look in her eyes seemed to say, Get ready for a good show. Just stepped out of the house. Hu Han couldn't wait to get the fake contract back. If the fake contract falls into the hands of the police, Hu Han will definitely end up in jail. At this time, he still naively believes that the male lead will really return the fake contract to him. Little did he know that he was falling into Zhou Yufeng's trap step by step. Don't rush, Uncle Hu. Let's talk about how to divide the money first. When Hu Han heard that Zhou Yufeng wanted to split the money he embezzled, he hurriedly pretended not to know anything about the money. Didn't I give it all to you last time? As soon as the words fell, the male lead delivered an elbow strike to Hu Han's face. Don't act dumb with me. Otherwise, I'll hand the contract directly to the police. You embezzled 2.5 million and only gave me 500 bucks. Are my parents' lives worth so little? Let's be straightforward now. I won't ask for much, just 100,000, rest assured. Once we have this money, we'll be partners. As for the issue of equipment not meeting the standards, why don't you just purchase a batch of qualified products to replace them next time? Unbeknownst to anyone, Hu Han was completely deflated upon hearing this. Enduring the pain, he stood up and brought the male lead to a desolate grave site. This old man sure knows how to pick a place. He actually hid the embezzled money here. After a while of digging by Hu Han, he quickly brought a packaged bag in front of the male lead. Zhou Yufeng opened it and took a look. Inside, there were all brand new experimental banknotes. As a result, he smiled satisfactorily with this money. My younger siblings no longer have to live a tight life. Half of the plan has been completed now. The remaining task is to clear our names and to bring Hu Han to justice. On the way back, Zhou Yufeng bought a new set of clothes for Hu Han to change into purportedly to dispel suspicion about the dirty clothes from before. Uncle Hu even praised Zhou Yufeng for being thoughtful. With his new clothes on, Hu Han continued to question the male lead. Where is the fake contract hidden? Zhou Yufeng answers. It's right under the red bricks of your trash can at home. What? You actually put such an important thing there? Hu Han quickly ran towards his home. What he didn't know was, 
that at this time, his home was already surrounded by the police, and all of this was a trap set by the male lead. Watching Hu Han's anxious face, Zhou Yufeng did not approach, but chose to watch from a distance. Suddenly, a loud shout was heard. He is Hu Han. As soon as the words fell, two police officers rushed up and firmly controlled Hu Han. Hu Han, be honest with me. At this moment, Hu Han completely understood why they made me change into new clothes again, made me wash my hands again. All this is to destroy the evidence. This is all a trap. He glared fiercely at Zhou Yufeng across the street, roaring angrily. He was unwilling to accept it. He hasn't had a chance to enjoy it yet. The money he embezzled hasn't been spent yet. But who can be blamed for all this? At this moment, Zhou Yufeng, who has finally avenged her grievances, feels an unprecedented sense of relief. Even his steps became brisk. He walked towards his sister's house with the money bag, preparing to bid farewell to his younger siblings for the last time. Under Zhou Yufeng's operation, Hu Han has been arrested by the public security authorities, falsifying contracts and embezzling 2.5 million yuan. Just these two charges are enough to put Hu Han behind bars. The vendetta of his parents has been avenged. The male lead is also ready to time travel to 2020. At night, the siblings sat together. Zhou Yufeng also told his younger siblings the good news. Hu Han has been captured. Tomorrow you will know this news. I will take out something later. Remember not to get excited, and don't scream loudly. The younger brothers and sisters are staring fiercely at the male lead. What is this kid up to? Only to see Zhou Yufeng take out a green bag, and pour it onto the table. Dozens of bundles of cash fell down. The two sisters looked as if they had seen a ghost. They opened their mouths and screamed. Zhou Yufeng made a gesture as if she were receiving a promotion. If anyone else found out about the money at home, it's about to turn from good to bad. At this moment Yu Na asked, Where did you get so much money from? Did you go and rob someone? This money was earned by my parents at the cost of their lives. Then he recounted the whole incident. Yuna, from now on, you will be in charge of this money. If there are major expenses, discuss it with Yu. If one day I turn back into a jerk and ask for money you can. Remember, don't give me a penny, and don't even pay attention to me. After saying this, Zhou Yufeng got up and prepared to leave. At this moment, Yu Na called out to the male lead. It's quite late, stay and have dinner. After these days of getting along, the younger brother and sister also gained a new understanding of Zhou Yufeng. Although the male lead is also reluctant to part with them, he must return to the year 2020. On the way home, Zhou Yufeng bought several bottles of strong liquor. It was because of drinking that he drank himself to death and crossed over. He thought that if he drank himself to death again, he could travel back in time. Back at home, Zhou Yufeng couldn't wait to open a bottle, without even using a glass. He just drank straight from the bottle. As he finished the bottle of wine, his consciousness is gradually becoming blurred. People often say that those who have drunk are the most real. Because under the influence of alcohol, people will shed their disguises. At this moment he thought of Jiang Xiaoduo. Although they had only spent a few days together, Xiaobo's appearance had already deeply imprinted in his mind. This unfortunate woman is so endearing. Yes. He fell in love with Jiang Xiaoduo. Zhou Yufeng even had hallucinations, thinking that Jiang Xiaoduo was sitting next to him, smiling at him. He wished he could stay in this world. He really hopes that he can live with Xiaoduo. But, after all, he doesn't belong to this world. He is not the true owner of this body. Xiaoduo Yuna, Yu Xiaoxing, goodbye. Two bottles of wine have been finished. Zhou Yufeng also collapsed on the sofa. Seeing this, I felt heartbroken. Just as I was lamenting this, I found mysterious liquid flowing from Zhou Yufeng's mouth. Could it be that he drank poison? Isn't this saliva? At this moment, Zhou Yufeng had a dream. He dreamed of his own funeral. His friends from 2020 were mourning for him. Then they pushed him into the cremator. Yes, he can't go back. Because his body has turned into ash. As Zhou Yufeng opened his eyes again, he found the scene in front of him very familiar. He collapsed. I can't f asterisk 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 ing go back, who arranged my funeral, and sent me to the crematorium. Otherwise, I could have put on a fake show for you. Then he sighed. It's all turned to ashes, damn it. Looks like there's no going back for real. At this moment, he feels some regret. If he had known there's no going back, he shouldn't have divorced Xiao Duo in the first place. 
If he had known there's no going back, I was determined to keep Xiao Zhuo at all costs. Looking at the photo of the two of them, Zhou Yufeng was overjoyed. Xiao Zhuo, wait for me. This time, I will never let go again. He is ready to make friends from this era. Get in touch with Jiang Xiao Zhuo again. At this time, there was a knocking on the door outside. It was his younger brother and sister. The male lead was very happy to see his family again. He warmly welcomed the three of them into the house for a meal. At this time, younger sister Yuna shyly said, Brother, let's go home for dinner. I bought some pork. So, the four of them went home together. After a few days of getting along, the three of them had a whole new understanding of this brother. They would never think of him as a jerk anymore. At this moment Yuzhing said, Bro, just stay at home in the future. Zhou Yufeng gently patted his head. No rush. Let's talk about it when my brother's lease is up. Zhou Yufeng. This surprised the male lead greatly. Before that, she always called him by his name, brother. It seems that Yuna has completely accepted him. The matter of Wuhan has caused a sensation in this city, not only him. Even some of his relatives have been arrested. It's not surprising that this kind of thing has happened. After all, it's a violation of national property, and the amount involved is so huge. I estimate that this time Hu Han will be sentenced to death. This result is also Hu Han's retribution. The siblings walked forward, chatting and laughing along the way. The scene was really heartwarming. On the other side, those classmates who used to look down on Zhou Yufeng had come to Xiao Rei's house. At this moment, they looked panicked. Xiao Rei, help us. I heard that Hu Han and his son have been arrested, and Zhou Yufeng personally testified against them because they had a previous conflict with the male lead, afraid of being implicated. So I came to find Xiao Rei. I wanted him to help plead with Zhou Yufeng. Seeing this really warms my heart. These guys are really despicable. Now I realize I am afraid. What was I thinking when I mocked others before? Under the evidence collected by the male lead, Hu Han and his son, Hu Xiaoshan, were finally sent to prison. The vendetta of the parents has been avenged. This family seems particularly happy and their life has returned to peace. Zhou Yufeng personally cooked several delicious dishes today. Wash your hands and let's eat. Speaking of which, Zhou Yufeng's culinary skills are really good. The four dishes are delicious in color, fragrance, and taste. At this time, Xiao Zheng also said, Brother, the dishes you cooked are so delicious. At this moment, there came a knocking on the door. It turned out to be fatty. This boy is here to plead for someone. Zhou Yufeng looked surprised at the unexpected guests in front of him. What are these people coming to the house for? So Zhou Yufeng warmly welcomed everyone into the house. Have you had dinner? Xiaoang. Go get some bowls and chopsticks for Brother Ji's sister. And at this time, they also revealed the purpose of this trip. So it turns out, after seeing Hu Han and his son Hu Xiaoshan getting captured, they also feel threatened themselves. After all, they had bullied Zhou Yufeng together before because they were afraid of retaliation from Zhou Yufeng. So this time they came to beg for mercy. It's clearly intentional. Now you're saying it's all just a misunderstanding. Zhou Yufeng intentionally wanted to scare them. So he said it's a misunderstanding? What misunderstanding? Upon hearing this, Xiao Guang thought that Zhou Yufeng did not want to forgive them. He lowered his head in frustration. At this moment, Fatty asked, Yufeng, have you reported the incident with Tian Liang Luyang and Lu Man to the police? Oh, about that. You haven't finished eating yet and you're going? The two of them were shocked to hear this. These two little bullies, who used to bully and insult others. Are they now clueless? I saw Lu Man crazily pinching the fat guy from behind. The fat guy winced in pain. Yu Feng and the others have nothing to do with Yu Hanza's matter. Please, for my sake, just let it go, okay? Looking at the two people in front of me trembling with fear. After all, we are all classmates. Zhou Yufeng didn't continue to make things difficult either. All right. Fatty is right. The two of them instantly burst into laughter. Seeing Zhou Yufeng say this, Fatty also feels very honored. I knew it. Yufeng is not that heartless. This matter has been completely resolved. After seeing off a few people, I see that Yuna is about to take the college entrance examination. Zhou Yufeng is getting ready to help Yuna with her homework. Yuna got this question wrong. Let me show you how it's done. Only to see Zhou Yufeng starting to calculate on the paper unexpectedly. Just as Yuna was stumped by a difficult problem, Zhou Yufeng answered it completely. Yuna was greatly surprised, thinking to herself, 
My brother is really amazing. The image of the male lead in his sister's mind also became more majestic. Zhou Yufeng originally wanted to go to Zhenhai City to find Jian Xiaoduo, and she could also develop her career there. But her sister, Yu, is about to take the college entrance examination, so she wants to wait for you to finish the college entrance examination, and then go find Xiaoduo. At this time, Yuna has already prepared the foot washing water. She greeted Zhou Yufeng to come and wash her feet. Through Zhou Yufeng's efforts, her image in the hearts of her younger siblings has completely changed. All of this was really hard won. At this moment, Zhou Yufeng's face broke into a smile. This must be the feeling of home. Suddenly, she felt that not being able to return to 2022 was also quite nice. Life these days has been peaceful and happy. The male lead has completely integrated into this family. Every day is just taking care of my younger sibling's daily life. Time passes quickly. Yuna's college entrance examination has also begun. Watching my sister who has already entered the examination room, Zhou Yufeng thought in his heart, it's time to get ready to go to Zhenhai City. The current Zhou Yufeng is very leisurely. My sister has started the high school entrance exam, and I have also avenged my parents, walking on the way home. The male lead is preparing to buy some ingredients, to go back and make a braised pork with vermicelli for his family to eat. The conversation between the two vendors caught Zhou Yufeng's attention. Did you hear? Not only did money get dug up near the old grave of the Huhan family, money has also been found from several of his relatives' homes. This old man has been so greedy for money, and has even caused loss of life. We must not easily let him off. At this time, another stall owner chimed in. Yeah. They're all just some brutal stuff, daring to embezzle the country's money. Just arrest them and execute them. Upon hearing this, Zhou Yufeng couldn't help but feel a little nervous, so he quickly ran home. Now it's 1983, completely different from 2020. The currency circulation in this era is slow. If the amount of money embezzled by Hu Han does not match the amount found, there will definitely be a large-scale investigation. As long as Hu Han bites on the male lead, it will only lead to trouble. In the end, the investigation will definitely point to Zhou Yufeng. Yu Yu, hurry up and take out that money. Something's about to happen. Yu, who was washing the dishes, looked at the male lead with a puzzled expression. It's simpler than what my brother had in mind. We need to return the money quickly now. We should still make it in time. Still the same straw hat. Still the same graveyard. Looking at Hu Han's father's tombstone, the surrounding soil hasn't been disturbed. It seems that Hu Han hasn't identified this place. Everything is still within reach. On the other side, Hu Han is sitting in the detention center with a low look on his face, no longer as arrogant as before. Currently, a shortfall of 100,000 has been discovered and cannot be reconciled. And Hu Han bit Chi sure, and the money was swindled by Zhou Yufeng. At this point, Director Kang wanted to help the male lead out. So he said, It shouldn't be. This is something that Xiao Feng and I should have handled together. Why did he lift the stone and hit his own foot at this critical moment? At this point, a police officer reminded, Director Kang, that's a hundred thousand. A hundred thousand in 1983 is equivalent to ten million now. You should know that at that time, an ice cream only cost twenty cents. Currently, Hu Han's testimony is very unfavorable to Zhou Yufeng. Moreover, these two had a private meeting before the incident. The police investigation has confirmed this. In short, Zhou Yufeng is highly suspected. The police are preparing to bring Zhou Yufeng back for interrogation. At this moment, Director Kong stopped the police officer who was about to leave. Officer Zhao, can I go see Zhou Yufeng first? It seems that Director Kong is still very loyal. He's thinking of giving Zhou Yufeng some time to prepare in advance. But things are not as simple as he thought. Only saw Officer Zhao shake off his hand. Kong Factory, if it weren't for our years of mutual understanding, you should be my first suspect now. This matter must be handled according to the rules. After saying that, he left without looking back. And Director Kong was temporarily detained at the police station. Keep an eye on Kong Jinzhou until we capture Zhou Yufeng. He can't go anywhere. At this point, Zhou Yufeng has already buried the 100,000 yuan back. Fortunately, he's clever. Otherwise, he would have paid a huge price. At this moment, he is leisurely watching others play chess. Suddenly, heavy footsteps were heard from behind. Soon, two police officers appeared in front of Zhou Yufeng, inside the interrogation room. Lan Xu remained calm. Zhou Yufeng. Where is the hundred thousand dollars? Lan Zhu asked sternly. What money? 
The hundred thousand you swindled from Hu Han, you better come clean now. Lan Zhu then asked in return, Was it Hu Han who said that? Officer Zhao became very angry. Zhou Yufeng, I need you to answer my question now. Instead of questioning me, I told you. Hu Han has already confessed. You used the excuse of having evidence of his corruption to cheat him out of 100,000 yuan. Faced with Officer Zhao's accusations, Zhou Yufeng was shaking with anger, roaring loudly that he didn't do it, and Director Kam was also watching from outside, seeing his little brother being wrong. He was also powerless. At the time when the wiretapping caught Hu Han, he was unaware of it himself, but you appeared with him in the wiretapping. Why is that? At this moment, Zhou Yufeng's mind was working quickly, because he killed my parents. I just want to follow him. I want to see him get caught with my own eyes. At this point, Zhou Yufeng's performance also reached a climax, and he angrily stood up. I want him to sit in jail for good. I want him to pay the price. Seeing Zhou Yufeng so angry, Officer Zhao was also a bit at a loss. He quickly reminded, Stay calm. Then continue questioning. According to Hu Han's confession, he took you to his family's ancestral grave, which is where he hid the money. I dug out a hundred thousand yuan for you. At this point, Zhou Yufeng retorted, Are you suggesting that Hu Han took me to his family's ancestral grave? Upon hearing this, Director Kong couldn't help but burst into laughter, facing Officer Dao's question. In fact, Zhou Yufeng was well prepared. After taking the money, he had Hu Han change his clothes and cleaned himself. It was a preparation to avoid leaving evidence. Now it has finally come in handy. Then Zhou Yufeng asked back, Officer Zhao, I have two doubts. The first one, Hu Han said that day he took me to his family's ancestral grave, but I clearly remember he was dressed cleanly. Second, could it be because he wanted to leave a fortune for his son, Hu Xiaoshan? Why only shift the blame onto me? The question here is raised very timely. At this moment, Officer Zhao also fell into contemplation. Then he got up and walked outside. At this point, Zhou Yufeng also revealed a satisfied smile. He knew his plan had succeeded. At this time, Officer Zhao also arranged for his men to go to Hu Han's ancestral tomb to look for money. But soon there was a response. Boss, we found it. Is the 100,000 yuan really there? Not a single cent less. Right at the spot Hu Han mentioned. Upon hearing this, Director Kong hurried forward to offer a cigarette. Officer Zhao, you really worked hard. Now everything has ended satisfactorily, and Zhou Yufeng has also cleared his suspicion. The two of them returned together at night. Director Kong said he would treat Zhou Yufeng to a good meal, but Zhou Yufeng now only wants to reunite with his family, so he refused Director Kong. After that, the two of them talked about Zhou Yufeng's parents. Director Kong also mentioned that the application for his parents' pension has been submitted. It is estimated that there will be results in the next two days. Looking at this young man in front of him, Director Kong really likes it. If it weren't for Zhou Yufeng, he would probably be implicated as well. So he asked, Zhou, has Hu Xiaoshan already gone in? There's currently a vacant worker position at the factory. How about it? Do you want to come? Back then, the social status of workers was very high. Everyone took pride in being a worker. And it's not like you can just get in if you want to. Director Kang's explanation is clearly an attempt to help Zhou Yufeng. But how could he know? The male lead is not interested in this kind of job at all. He wants to make a name for himself. Faced with Zhou Yufeng's rejection, Director Kang feels regretful. But there's nothing much to say. After all, everyone has their own aspirations. The next day... Zhang Ziwei is skipping rope with her friends, just as everyone was having a good time. The voice of Zhou Yufeng came from a distance. Ziwei, can I borrow your phone for a moment? Later, Zhou Yufeng asked again. Ziwei, do you have Jiang Xiaoduo's phone number? Can you help me contact Xiaoduo? I came to find Ziwei this time just to get Xiaoduo's contact information, but Ziwei said she didn't know. The reason is that Lu Man had previously spoken ill of the male lead in front of Xiao Rui. The day before yesterday, Lu Man even came to find Zhou Yufeng. She wanted to ask the male lead to let her off the hook. Now she's even trying to prevent the reconciliation of Zhou Yufeng and Xiao Duo, this despicable Lu Man. The male lead clearly saw Xu Rui lying, but he didn't want to expose her. Then he tried to contact Xiao Duo through Xin Ziren, but Xiao Rui rejected the male lead again. At this time, 
Zhou Yufeng also expressed her inner thoughts. Although I was a bit of a jerk before, but Xiao Duo and I have been married for many years. I really want to see her again, seeing Xiao Rui still indifferent. Zhou Yufeng took his leave. One week later, old friend Chen Guida came to share good news. It turns out that the compensation from the Zhou Yufeng family has come, around evening time. Director Kang will personally deliver it. Chen Guida is still very teachable. You can tell. He genuinely seems happy for Zhou Yufeng. Seeing the male lead cooking noodles, Chen Guida couldn't help but ask. Boiling noodles without even putting in an egg. I'm crazy. Now you have money. The total compensation adds up. It's already $4,000. Having $4,000 in that era was already impressive. You should know that the monthly salary for each person is only about 30 yuan. Zhou Yufeng is amazing. Not only is he of good character, he can earn money and is also good at cooking. Although it's just a simple clear soup noodle. But Chen Guida still enjoyed his meal very much. Afterward, the male lead told Chen Guida about his plan. Brother Chin, I'm preparing to develop in Zhihai City. I'm leaving tomorrow. Upon hearing this news, Chen Guida was very surprised. What? What are you doing there? Did someone introduce you to a job? No, I don't have any friends over there. But there are more opportunities there than here. And Shaodou is also there. So I want to go and take a chance. At night, Director Kang indeed arrived at the male lead's house with a package. Yu Feng, I heard Guida say you're going to Zhihai City. Why didn't you tell me about it before? If Guida hadn't told me, you would have sneaked away, right? At this point, Director Kang looked a little angry, tapping the table with his finger in frustration. No wonder you look down on the job at the steel factory, so there are better options. Hearing this, Zhou Yu Feng felt relieved and explained, I was planning to tell you when you came to find me and there are no good jobs in this seaside city. I want to do some small business over there. Director Kang was very surprised. This kid is really bold. He actually wants to start a business. Brother Kang, you are overestimating me. I just went to do some small business to make a living. At this point, Director Kang also asked a question that had been troubling him for a long time. Yu Feng, I'm very curious. How did you manage to get the contract back then? This is a very sensitive issue. Because I set up Wuhan myself. If I tell the police, what will happen to Director Kong? But if I don't tell him, Director Kong will feel like I don't consider him a friend. After much deliberation, Zhou Yufeng decided to explain the whole situation to him. After seeing off Director Kong, Zhou Yufeng began to pack his luggage. Looking at the things in the house, there would be no one to use them after he left. So he hurriedly sent the TV to his sister's house that night. The things from that era were really genuine. A TV that's over 10 inches. The male lead struggled to lift it. Seeing Yuna happy in front of the TV. Hastily calling Yuna to come out and pour water. This time Zhou Yufeng not only brought the TV, but also brought the condolence money from his parents. Xiao Na. This is the compensation money from mom and dad. A total of 3,980 yuan. You count it. By the way, human life was really worthless at that time. This money is just in time. Because Xiaona has already completed the college entrance exam. Xiaona is about to go to college soon. Brother is leaving for Zhenhai City tomorrow. This sudden news has surprised Xiaona a bit. She didn't expect her brother to leave so soon. Zhou Yufeng continued. I've brought 500 of our parents' compensation money. The rest is all for you. At this moment, Yu was worried and said, Brother, Zhenhai City is so big. Will 500 be enough for you to bring? How about taking a little more? Zhou Yufeng patted Xiaoya's head. It's enough. Brother is out to make money, not to spend it. Xiao Xing spent the whole day outside having fun. He went to bed relatively early. Looking at Xiao Xing sleeping soundly, Zhou Yufeng was full of tenderness. Softly said Xiao Xing. Brother left, saying goodbye to younger siblings. Zhou Yufeng also officially embarked on her own journey. Today is the day the male lead sets off for Zhenhai City. The weather is very good. Zhou Yufeng is carefully packing her daily necessities into the luggage. And of course, the most important thing is Xiao Duo's photo. This must not be forgotten. It's been several months apart. The male lead misses his ex-wife very much. This time he must win Xiao Duo back. But it's better to do it quickly. Because Xiao Duo has already started blind dates. Stepping out of the house. Good French and Guida is already waiting. The two exchanged a few simple pleasantries. Then the male lead was taken to the station, bumping all the way. Zhou Yufeng finally arrived in Jinhai City. It's really different in a big city. 
skyscrapers tower on both sides. The streets are bustling with traffic. It's much livelier than the small town. Young man. Are you staying at the hotel? Then, a middle-aged lady handed a card to the male lead. Turn around and go. Also, the hotel has a loyalty program. After speaking, she lifted her sagging bosom. This scene frightened the male lead, who waved his hands repeatedly. Perhaps he thought Zhou Yufeng was embarrassed. The middle-aged lady even took the initiative to pull him into the store. Fortunately, a bus stopped here. Zhou Yufeng quickly gets on the car. He studies the map while calculating how to survive in this place. On the other side, inside a luxurious villa, Shin Zirin is making a phone call at home. Ask the owner of the car with license plate 411 to come over. Later, a yellow taxi stopped in front of his house. The driver seemed to be familiar with Miss Shin. He greeted her very happily. Of course I'm here, Sir Jiang. How about it? Is Shaodou very pretty? Tell me. How are you going to thank me? It's just that I've been married once before. But fortunately, I don't have any children. Shin Zirin sighed and said. Sigh, Shaoduo met a scumbag before. But I've already told you about these things. How? I regret it now, only to see Shir Jiang awkwardly smile. How is that possible? Afterwards, the two of them headed in the direction of the library. Inside the library, I saw a very beautiful girl picking out books, wearing a white shirt, with yellow hair, both dignified and beautiful. At this moment, a voice came from behind. Xiao Duo, the girl turned her head. It's the woman that Zhou Yufeng loves the most. Jiang Xiao Duo, seeing the arrival of her friend, accompanied by a man. Smart Xiao Duo immediately guessed Shen Zirin's purpose for coming to her. Dare to say I'll be off work soon. Naturally, you wait for me. I've lost count of how many blind dates I've been on. At this moment, Xiao Duo sighed helplessly. In the blink of an eye, it's time to get off work. Shin Zirin and the blind date partner Shi Jiang have been waiting outside. At this moment, the two of them were chatting happily. They saw Xiao Duo walking out of the library. As she got closer and closer, Shi Jiang's expression gradually turned to shock. It's evident. This kid has a crush on Xiao Duo. I saw Xiao Duo wearing a pink dress. That perfectly outlined her figure. Her long hair was casually draped over her shoulders. As she looked mischievously at the two of them. Don't say Shi Jiang. Xiao Duo, hello? Shin Zirin suggested going to see a movie, so the three of them set off. At this moment, Shin Zirin caught sight of a familiar figure in the crowd. So he hurriedly told Shu Jiang to stop the car. He shouted from inside the car. Shu Jun, Shu Jun, this person is a friend of Zirin and Xiao Duo, and he also knows Zhou Yu. Shu Jun, we are going to watch a movie. Why don't you come along? Xu Jun, who had nothing else to do, got in the car. After being introduced by Shin Zirin, the three of them also became acquainted. At this time, Xu Jun expressed his difficulties. Of course, in our department, new employees don't receive their salary for the first month. They have to wait until the following month to receive it. Hearing this, Xu Jiang quickly responded. It's okay, bro. It's not a big deal to watch a movie. I'll treat you. This is a bit jarring to hear. After all, he just said he hasn't been paid yet, but Xu Jiang said that watching a movie doesn't cost much. This also made Xu Jun feel a little awkward, so Xu Jun quickly added, Let me pay for everyone after I get paid. Zhou Yufeng is worrying about accommodation. At this time, he is bargaining with the landlady. The rent of 35 yuan a month is a bit high for the male lead. So the landlady suggested that he stay at a public lodging, where it's only 50 cents a night. As night falls, Zhou Yufeng also found the public lodging mentioned by the landlady. Young man. This must be it. The male lead sees that this is just a bed space, and the personnel are very chaotic. People from all walks of life are here. But after all, the funds on hand are limited, so Zhou Yufeng decided to stay first. After putting away his luggage, he went to wash up. When he returned to the accommodation, he found his luggage missing. Oh no, it's only been a few minutes and there's still someone in the room. How could the luggage just disappear like that? At this moment, a man puffing on a cigarette reminded the young man to be careful when traveling. Consider it a lesson learned. Luckily, he didn't put his money in the luggage. 
otherwise the male lead would have been in big trouble. A very familiar voice came from behind. You buy. Is there still a bed available? Oh my, it's the class monitor from high school. Is it Shu Jun? Both of them were very surprised after not seeing each other for many years. I never expected to meet again here. It's too coincidental. Since graduating from high school, this is the first time we've met. They are introducing each other's recent situation, because Xu Jun just started working at the tax office, so he has to wait until mid-next month to get his dormitory. That's why he came here. During the day, Xu Jun is still watching movies with Xiao Duo and others. In the evening, he met the male lead. It's really fate. It looks like Zhou Yufeng will be able to find Xiao Duo soon. This woman is trying to break up her best friend's family. She's even starting to introduce potential partners to her best friend. Her husband is still by her side. So impatient? What can bring together classmates who haven't seen each other for many years? Is it love? Is it responsibility? No. It's poverty. Inside this room that costs only 50 cents for a night's stay, Zhou Yufeng is having a conversation with his high school class monitor Zhu Jun. Although it has been a long time since they last met, Xu Jun's attitude towards the male lead is very cold. Facing Zhou Yufeng's warmth, Xu Jun simply replied with folded arms. In fact, he looked down on Zhou Yufeng in his heart. One reason was that the previous Zhou Yufeng was too much of a jerk. The other reason was that he was already a public servant. Although his status as a public servant was also obtained through Shinziren, Xu Jun ignored Zhou Yufeng and turned to make the bed. Then he went to sleep early, faced with the attitude of his old classmate. The male lead could only awkwardly smile. The next day, the male lead arrived at the city's largest clothing wholesale market, planning to conduct an on-site inspection to see if there are any high-return investment opportunities. As someone who time-traveled from 2020, everything in front of me contains business opportunities. As he walks, he ponders. Although Zhihai is also a big city, it is still somewhat behind compared to the magic city and the capital. Here is still somewhat behind. Some fashion that has already become popular in Shanghai and Kyoto will take some time to spread to Zhihai, thus creating a time difference. After all, there was no internet in 1983. The male lead here smiled at the thought. There are just too many projects to do. This has him very excited. The clothing category in the mall has been figured out. Next, he's planning to go to the night market. After all, the rent in the mall is too expensive, and the night market's foot traffic is not smaller than the mall's. The old saying goes, fate is predetermined. Seven parts rely on hard work. Perhaps it's just a coincidence, or perhaps it's fate. Anyway, the male lead and Jiang Xiaoduo had their first encounter after divorce. The two, meeting again, both showed surprise and emotion, seeing their beloved right in front of their eyes the joy in Zhou Yufeng's eyes, calling out loudly to Xiao Duo, although Xiao Duo's expression seems a bit indifferent, but it can't stop the enthusiasm of the male lead. Did Xiao Duo eat? Do you want to go eat together? Xiao Duo replied that she had already eaten. The male lead was very happy to see Xiao Duo again. He had a lot to say to his loved one. So he suggested taking a walk together. At this time, Shin Ziren and a few others also noticed Zhou Yufeng. Shin Ziren quickly walked towards the two and stood in front of Xiao Duo. In an unfriendly tone, he said, Zhou Yufeng, you're already divorced, why do you keep bothering her? You even followed her to the beach. You just can't let go. Say what you have to say right here. The male lead did not pay attention to Shin Ziren. Instead, he continued to gently inquire whether Jiang Xiao Duo could. Xiao Duo also prepared to tell the male lead about her blind date, so she answered softly. Then she turned to look at Shinziren. Nature. There are some things I need to clarify with him. You guys go first. Facing her best friend's concerns, Xiao Duo smiled and comforted. Don't worry. It's okay. So the two of them walked in the opposite direction. Shurs was blind date partner. Shai was shaking all over. In Shai's eyes, her own conditions are so good. It's bad enough that he's a second-time divorcee, but he actually walked off with his ex-husband in front of him. This made him very angry. The seeds of hatred slowly began to sprout in his heart. On the other side, Zhou Yufeng and Jiang Xiaoduo strolled through the night market. Although the two kept their distance, the scene looked really heartwarming. At this point, Jiang Xiaoduo spoke first. Lately, 
My family has been arranging blind dates for him. His own lifelong affair has become a worry for his parents, and his mother has not been in good health. Because of his own affairs, his mother has developed oral ulcers, and her bone has necrotized. In order not to worry the family, he had no choice but to obey the arrangements at home. If nothing goes wrong, he will get married this year. Antiques priced at 500000 I can't believe I bought it for just one dollar. The vendor in front of me said it was passed down to him by his great-great-great-grandfather. He really doesn't even bother to think before lying. Don't you feel guilty? Aren't you afraid that your great-great-great-grandfather will come and knock on your window at night? Soon after arriving, Zhou Yufeng met Jiang Xiaoduo. This was their first encounter after the divorce. At this moment, Xiaoduo's inner feelings were very complex. It was evident. He has deep feelings for Zhou Yufeng. The family has been arranging blind dates for Xiaoduo. Xiaoduo's mother also fell ill because of her daughter's situation. So when Zhou Yufeng heard the news he least wanted to hear, that Xiao Duo is planning to get married this year, it became very clear. The implication is for the male lead to stop pestering her. At this moment, Zhou Yufeng looked surprised. The expression instantly became very low. But he also has no right to interfere in other people's private lives. So the two of them walked in opposite directions. But Zhou Yufeng was not willing. Despite only having spent a few days together. But he has already fallen deeply in love with this kind girl. He couldn't help but call out to Jiang Xiaodou again. At this point, Xiaodou's tears were flowing. How sad this kind girl must be. Even though Xiaodou didn't turn back, but he also stopped in his tracks. Zhou Yufeng quickly walked over and embraced his lover. Before Xiaodou could react, there was a sob. Zhou Yufeng kissed Xiaodou. Haha, you're quite good at this, little one. Just as the male lead was about to launch a further attack, Xiaodou pushed him away. Zhou Yufeng, listen to me. Do you know how much I hate you? Why are you suddenly so nice to me? We've been together for two and a half years. You almost took my life. When you're unhappy, you hit me. I, you hit me after drinking. Even if someone else makes you unhappy, you still take it out on me. Other newlyweds are all sweet. But you keep hurting me. You deceive fools. Insulting the mute and even vigorously kicking the good leg of the cripple. I am extremely disappointed in you. Facing Xiaodua's accusations, Zhou Yufeng also feels very wrong. After all, he is a time traveler. He didn't do any of the things that happened before. Just as he was about to defend himself, Xiao Duo once again started accusing him. But why? Why did you suddenly start treating me well again? Your unpredictable behavior really makes me feel insecure. I can't tell if you're deceiving me or not. Just as Zhou Yufeng was about to explain once again, I'm not listening, I'm not listening. No matter what reasons you come up with now, I don't want to hear them. After saying this, she ran back home. Watching Xiaodua's retreating figure, Zhou Yufeng felt extremely disheartened. He really wants to tell Xiaoduo the truth. Tell Xiaoduo that he traveled from 2020. The previous Zhou Yufeng who hurt him has changed. But what difference would it make if he said it? Would it lead to a rift between Xiaoduo and her parents? Moreover, I still have younger siblings to support. As I am now, I cannot make him happy. The urgent thing is to quickly earn the first batch of startup funds. The next day, the male lead arrived at the antique market. The sound of merchants selling also came to his ears. Suddenly, a piece of paper suddenly caught Zhou Yufeng's eyes. The male lead from his previous life was very successful in business. He also collected some antiques, so he still has some knowledge of these things. At this point, the stall owner said, Be careful. This was passed down to me by my great-great-great-grandfather. It's an object from the Ming dynasty, at least worth 50,000. You can't afford it with your bear-like appearance. Quickly put it down. But he had no idea that the seemingly honest man in front of him was actually an expert. Give it up, boss. How much for this dongling jade pendant? The stall owner understood immediately. Just take it for the cost price. Two dollars. Just one coin. Love to sell it? If not, forget it. In a small park. The male lead is carefully polishing the banknote he just acquired with tissue paper. I didn't expect this guy to be good at handicrafts. Very soon. The previously ordinary piece of paper will be transformed and will appear extraordinary in the sunlight. Dongling Jade. It will soon be sold at a very high price. He is known as a good-for-nothing by everyone in the village. None of his friends like him. 
simply because he beats his wife, is argumentative, and drinks heavily. He even stole eggs from the neighbor. His character is simply terrible. His wife left him because of domestic violence. This piece of paper, bought for two yuan, will soon be sold for thousands of yuan. After polishing the class paper again, the male lead waits for the appearance of the prey in the antique city. Suddenly, a pair of intimate foreigners enter Zhou Yufeng's line of sight. Looks like a married couple. So he put down the unfinished noodles and started observing these two foreigners. It's obvious that these two are here to hunt for treasures in the antique market. At this moment, they are being attracted by a clay pot in front of them. Seeing foreign friends arriving at his booth, the stall owner has also started his performance. Be careful. Don't break it. These are very precious antiques. There are only two of them left in the world. This is one of them. The other one is collected by the Queen of England. Hearing this, the two foreigners were intrigued. They repeatedly touched the clay pot. They looked sincerely interested in buying it, even though there's some reluctance. But the stall owner also reluctantly let go this time. Since you are destined, take it for a thousand bucks. Just as the two were preparing to pay, a fluent English sentence also entered their ears. The clay pot in your hands is not worth a thousand dollars. It's what kids use as a urinal. I bet you can smell it. If you like the smell, just let me know. I have plenty here and I can give them to you. Two foreigners turned their heads to look back. A handsome young Chinese man also caught their eye. The two of them then put down the clay pot and turned to leave. They walked away. At this moment, the voice of the stall owner also came from behind. Seven hundred. Seven hundred is also fine. Seeing that the foreigner was not responding, the stall owner had to lower the price again. One hundred. I'll give you a hundred. This significant price reduction caused great dissatisfaction among the foreigners. They turned back and shouted angrily at the stall owner. I knew it, your stuff is fake. At this moment, these two foreigners are catching up with Zhou Yufeng quickly. They are about to trap their prey. This time, it's the male lead's turn to perform. The foreign couple asked. Bro, you speak English fluently. Are you from our country? Zhou Yufeng dared to explain. I am a local. But my parents do antique business abroad. The clay pot in your hand looks fake at a glance. Not only is the appearance asymmetrical, but the size does not match the craftsmanship of that dynasty. And on top of that, there are stains that look like pea stains. It's obvious it's been urinated on. The foreigner quickly smelled his hand. The taste is indeed extraordinary. So they invited the male lead to be their temporary consultant to help select antiques. This was a serious matter for Jing and Zhou Yufeng, so he gladly agreed. The three of them returned to the antique market together. The vendors selling clay pots recognized the two foreigners from earlier and waved them over. He quickly beckoned them to his stall and called the three of them over to his booth. At this moment, the male Li pretends to be very knowledgeable and says, Boss, bring out some real stuff to see. That clay pot just now was too fake. So the stall owner took out a wooden comb and immediately began to boast. This was left to me by my grandmother. My ancestor was the queen of the palace. Seeing you being deliberate, this time I will reluctantly part with it. The three of them began to scrutinize the comb. Zhou Yufeng thought to himself, How can I make myself appear knowledgeable, and make these two foreigners fully trust me? His eyes lit up. Remember this. This comb obviously has a long history. You can tell from the appearance, it's all patina. It must have been treasured, and with this intricate and exquisite carving, clearly it's made by everyone. In order to prevent the stall owner from overcharging, Zhou Yufeng first communicated with the foreigner in English, telling him not to be too intentional. He would help with bargaining later. The foreigner understands without needing to be told. Afterward, he expressed that he didn't really like this thing. At this point, Zhou Yufeng continued saying, Boss, tell us the lowest price. We'll only buy if the price is right. The stall owner here is very anxious. This cook duck can't fly anymore. So he quoted a hundred dollars. This. How wicked is this woman to break up her best friend's family? She actually started introducing potential partners to her best friend, and even did so in front of the friend's husband. Aren't they afraid of getting beaten up? With the help of the male lead, these two foreigners successfully purchased a fake antique zero. 
moved foreigners exclaimed how awesome it was to thank the male lead for his help. These two foreign friends warmly invited the male lead to dinner. During the meal, Linda was still marveling about how much he liked this comb. It's truly beyond compare. The male lead also expressed that the value of this comb is at least over 10 million yuan. During the conversation, Zhou Yufeng sighed while turning the jade piece in his hand. It's really a pity. Although this tomb book is in very good condition, it is not from a renowned master's hand. Otherwise, its value would be far more than this. But foreigners are quite satisfied. He feels it's very worthwhile to have bought such a desirable item for only 100 yuan at this moment. The J where in the man's hand finally caught the attention of the foreigner. Which dynasty does the J where in your hand belong to? I can see that the J where is crystal clear. It looks extraordinary at first glance. At this time, Zhou Yufeng also began his performance. The specific dynasty is not clear. I bought this from a villager recently. I just think it's very beautiful. And the material is very good. Just bought it. At this point, the foreigner asked. Since even you couldn't tell the dynasty, the history of this ring is likely even more ancient. How much did you buy it for? Could you tell us? The male lead extended a finger. The foreigner was very interested in the jade ornament on Zhou Yufeng's hand. This also struck a chord with Zhou Yufeng, looking at the sparkling jade ornament in his hand. The foreigner liked it more and more as he looked at it. Couldn't help but make an exclamation. Wow! So beautiful! At this point, the male lead continued saying, I bought it because I thought it looked good. I plan to sell it in a few days. The foreigners here were extremely excited when they heard this. It's as if they've discovered a huge business opportunity. Well, why don't you just sell it to me then? Both Linda and I really like it. Are you sure? I really don't know which dynasty this porcelain is from. In other words, if you buy it at a high price, don't come back to me. Even if you come to me, I won't acknowledge it. It's as if these two people were under a spell. We both just simply like each other. And we don't mind anything else. Hearing this, the male lead naturally agreed. And the foreigner also happily expressed his thanks. Later, he handed over a thousand yuan in foreign exchange. This foreign friend is really rich. At that time, the Chinese people's salaries were only a few dozen yuan per month. At this moment, Linda asked thoughtfully, If you sell it to us at the original price, won't you lose money? How would he know? This thing was bought by the male lead for one yuan. He's already made a huge profit. And Zhou Yufeng also said very arrogantly, meeting each other is fate. I am not interested in money. I'm very satisfied to be able to be friends with you both. That's it. The male lead made his first fortune in this era. And the business miracle belonging to Zhou Yufeng officially began. How easy it was to make money in the 80s. With a piece of spotted paper bought for a dollar. He sold it to a foreigner for a thousand dollars. Awesome. After successfully earning his first bucket of gold in life, the male lead's business plan officially started. Back to the rental room. The male lead wants to talk to his high school classmate. Previously, when he was investigating the market at the night market, he happened to meet Xiao Duo and the others. And when the others saw him, looks very unhappy. Especially with a man she doesn't know. Seeing the anger in her eyes made Zhou Yunmen even more puzzled. Adding Xiao Duo's attitude towards her made the male lead even more upset. So I planned to ask clearly. Even the old classmate who was just reading the newspaper immediately pretended to be asleep as soon as he saw me coming back. He fell asleep so quickly. Obviously, this guy really dislikes Zhou Yufeng. But the male lead doesn't intend to give up. Let me tell you a few words. Last night at the night market, who was the guy next to Xiao Duo? Even Zhou Jun completely ignored the male lead, pretending not to hear with eyes closed. It seems that this guy also thinks that Zhou Yufeng is not worthy of Jiang Xiao Duo, but Xiao Duo is his beloved woman after all, and he came to this city for Xiao Duo. So he desperately shook Zhou Jun. I wanted to know the answer, but unexpectedly Zhou Jun suddenly got angry. He loudly questioned Zhou Yufeng. What does it matter to you whom Xiao Duo goes for a walk with? You are already divorced. Why do you still bother her? Seeing the angry Zhou Jun. The male lead is not angry. He just kept asking. So, who is that guy, after all? When Zhou Jun saw him, if you don't answer his questions, I won't be able to sleep tonight. So I said, his name is Xiu Jiang. He's a taxi driver. Let me explain this for you. 
Taxis were not yet popular in 1983, and the procedures for obtaining a taxi license were very complicated. Ordinary people could not obtain a license at all, so this profession was very sought after at the time. But in the eyes of the male lead, a business elite, it was nothing special. Zhou Yufeng was also surprised to hear this. You're just a taxi driver. Do you need to be so arrogant? Someone's daily wage is much higher than what you can earn in two months. Give up quickly. In terms of conditions, you can't compare to others. But the male lead is not discouraged, because he already has a plan to get rich. That night, Zhou Yufeng boarded the train, headed to the wholesale market in Guanghai. He planned to use the money earned today. Let's go to the wholesale market for speakers. After a night on the train, Zhou Yufeng finally arrived at the largest wholesale market in Guanghai City. It's more than three times larger than the wholesale market in Shihai City. And most importantly, it has a complete range of products. The latest fashions will appear here. It's only 2 a.m. at this time. The wholesale market hasn't opened yet. So he leaned against a pillar to prepare to sleep for a while. But when he opened his eyes again, the entrance to the wholesale market is already crowded with people. This is too exaggerated. Just took a nap. And so many people have gathered. Zhou Yufeng hurriedly followed the team into the market. At this time, all the businesses are also calling out their goods. The loudspeakers on the street. It will definitely be popular this year. Regular ones are 40. Small ones are 55. The price is already very expensive. You have to understand, the cost of living was very cheap back then just for a pair of jeans. Converted into 2020 prices, it would be over 3000 for just one pair. And it's not even the price from a specialty store or boss. If I buy in bulk, can you make it cheaper? I'm thinking of getting 50 pairs first. The boss replied that the price for 50 pieces is 50 yuan each. For 100 pieces or more, it's 45 yuan each. This is already the lowest price. Hurry up if you want them. I have a lot of customers here. Upon hearing this, the male lead fell into contemplation. One hundred is too many. I can't handle that many myself. So a plan emerged in the mind of the male lead. Whether there are any speaker slots available, sign up with me. From a scoundrel who only knew how to drink and abuse his wife. What kind of experience is it? To build your own business empire? That can completely turn around a person who was once despised by everyone. After successfully earning his first bucket of gold in life, the male lead's wealth accumulation plan entered the next stage, and he eagerly arrived at the largest wholesale market in the city. He wanted to get a shipment of the latest trendy bell bottoms, but the price difference between wholesaling 100 pairs and 50 pairs is $5. In 1983, this price difference can be considered quite large, and the main character also doesn't have enough funds to wholesale 100 pairs. Then Zhou Yufeng had a sudden inspiration, and came up with the group buying model of CC in 2020, so he started promoting it with his own advertisement. This move indeed worked. Immediately, an uncle inquired about the specific cooperation methods. Later, two more people joined in. Zhou Yufeng patiently began to explain the collaboration method for group purchases to the three people. The three of us all buy speaker cabinets. If the wholesale quantity reaches 100 units, we can get the goods at the lowest price. At this point, the three of them also started talking about the quantities they wanted. This big sister looks very capable. She wants 50 pieces for herself, while the uncle next to her wants 20 pieces, and the chubby guy wants 5 pieces. The four of them already have a total of 105 stakes combined, so the male lead pulled the funds of several people to himself. In those days, this was a huge sum of money. The other three obviously doubted Zhou Yufeng. They all talked at once. Little brother, please don't deceive me. The trumpet store owner has almost sold out. The crowd below is still buying frantically. When the male lead looked, it was immediately sold out, but there were too many people in front of him. He couldn't squeeze in at all. At this moment, the male lead scheming is raging. If I can't buy it, it's all been for nothing. Only to see Zhou Yufeng raise the foreign exchange certificate in his hand. Exhausting all his strength, he desperately shouts at the stall owner. Boss, I have foreign exchange coupons. Get 105 of them for me from the small window at La Baoku. In those days, foreign exchange coupons were very popular. A 100 yuan foreign exchange coupon could be exchanged for 110 yuan worth of cake. The stall owner was very surprised to see a dozen foreign exchange coupons in Zhou Yufeng's hand. He looked very surprised. 
He quickly called his assistant to get the foreign exchange coupons for the mail leave from La Balcou. That's it, everyone got what they wanted. And that lady has been praising Zhou Yufeng for being smart. Otherwise, today might have been in vain. Young man, I just remembered that I also want a man's style horn speaker. It looks like this uncle is quite fashionable. Obviously bought it for himself. Coincidentally, the male lead also wanted to buy one for himself. After all, he sells these. Consider it as a model for his own speaker store. So he ended up buying two more. Time is money. The male lead returned to the seaside city that day. It was still dark at this time. Zhou Yufeng found the market manager Qin Gurli. Don't be fooled by Qin Ji's low official rank. His power is immense. He controls the entire market. Holding the cigarette given by the male lead, Chini Go said quietly, Pay first. Then register. Afterward I'll find you a spot. After completing the procedures, Chini Go then brought the male lead to a stall in the market. Here it is. Tidy up yourself. I have something else to do, so he left here. The sky was just beginning to light up at this time. The male lead finally got everything sorted out. Looking at the warehouse in front of him, the male lead was very excited to see today's sales volume. There are actually such shameless people in this world. He is always thinking about breaking up his best friend's marriage, causing a pair of truly in love people to be unable to be together. Inside the double city hotel, Shin Zirin once again brought the classmates together. The purpose of this gathering is not for anything else. It's mainly to introduce Xiodua's blind date partner, Shi Jiang. Introduction complete. Classmates all took the initiative to greet Shi Jiang. Xiao Duo felt very embarrassed when she saw this scene. She felt like she was being priced openly. She felt like she was being sold by Shin Zirin. At this moment, Shin Zirin said, Classmates, to welcome Shi Jiang, I am treating everyone to this meal. This guy comes from a very wealthy family. His parents and relatives are all in business, and his uncle is a high-ranking government official, just as they were toasting at the dinner table. Our male lead is loudly promoting Lama Warehouse at the night market. Zhou Yufeng is very clever. He fully grasped people's preference for foreign goods. Using a foreign-style clearance sales slogan to attract customers. How do you prove these are imported jeans? After all, talk is cheap. At this moment, the male lead explains the loudspeaker in authentic northeastern dialect. Look at this style. Look at this fabric. There is currently no such thing in the country. After Zhou Yufeng's move, the crowd also gradually gathered around his stall, and the female customer just now completely believed in him. The male lead seizes the opportunity. Keep working hard on promotion. Manufacturer's clearance sale. Only 99 yuan. Opportunity knocks. The price will be restored in two days, and there are activities this year. For customers who purchase our speakers, as long as you wear our pants and walk around the night market a few times, we will give you $5 back. Cash. You can make five yuan in a day. The female customer immediately became interested. The male host continued, and if you don't like it, I'll give you a refund right away. At this point, the female customer was completely fooled. She immediately took a pair of bell-bottom pants. She went home and changed into the bell-bottom pants. After changing into the bell-bottom pants, the female customer returned to the night market. People looked at her pants with curiosity and came to the stall of the male lead. Zhou Yufeng couldn't help but praise. It's really good. Very beautiful. Afterward, he took out the promised five yuan and handed it to the customer. And the several female customers next to him were obviously tempted, too. One was because the pants were really good looking. The other was because the male lead was also very trustworthy. At this time, Zhou Yufeng worked even harder to promote. Imported bell-bottom pants clearance sale. Just change into our bell-bottoms and take a stroll at the night market to get back five dollars. I have to say the male lead really has a good business sense. It's just a short hour. There are more and more flower coins in hand. On the other side, Shin Zirin and his group just came out of the hotel. They all arrived at the night market, watching the girls next to them all wearing bell-bottoms. Several female classmates also became interested, so they walked towards Zhou Yufeng's booth. At this time, the male lead's bell-bottom pants had already sold out. Everyone began to boast about their own charm. They started to pre-order bell-bottom pants. When the male lead gazes at the crowd, a familiar figure comes into view. Isn't that Xiao Duo? 
As she watches the male lead promoting vigorously with bell-bottom pants, Xiao Zhou is very surprised. Before, Zhou Yufeng was lazy and loved to eat. I didn't expect her to change so quickly. The male lead is very happy to see Xiao Duo. Xiao Duo, are you also here to visit the night market? The batch of bell bottoms is sold out. I'll save you one from the next batch. Xiao Duo didn't say anything. She just shyly looked at the ground. The male lead thought Xiao Duo was too shy to take her things. After all, both of them are divorced. So she said she would bring one for you next time. But in fact, Xiao Duo is not embarrassed. She is considering the financial difficulties of her brothers and sisters. She advises the male lead to consider the lives of those people more. Excitement is seen. Shin Zirin is very angry, arguing to take Xiao Duo away, and Li Ditz also teased. Yu Fen, with your bear-like appearance, you're still doing business. Be careful, even the pants I owe are gone. The bride got married. But the groom isn't me. Just because the bride's bridesmaids so discord causing the lovers to be unable to be together, seeing the male lead setting up a street stall. Look at you, looking like a bear and still trying to do business. Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror? Be careful not to lose your underwear. Faced with Li Ditsai's mockery, the male lead totally ignored him. His gaze was always fixed on his beloved Xiao Duo. He had a lot to say to Xiao Duo. He wanted to tell Xiao Duo that he had earned money. In the future, he would earn even more money. I have the ability to make her live better. Li Ditsai, who felt ignored, was angry, gave Zhou Yufen a fierce look. Suddenly, he elbowed Jiang Xiaoduo forcefully, scared little duck with a cry, and then stood unsteadily, almost falling into Yi Jiang's arms. The blind date candidate Yi Jiang also reached out and grabbed little duo's arm. Fortunately, little duo broke free in time. Li Ditsai is definitely doing this on purpose. He deliberately made things difficult for Xiao Duo in front of Zhou Yufen. Zhou Yufen watched with widened eyes. Her beloved was almost pushed into someone else's arms. He controlled the urge to punch someone. At this point, Shin Zirin urged once again, What are you waiting for? Hurry go. Ah, uh, get away from this scumbag. And so, this group prepared to leave the night market. But Zhou Yufen had no intention of letting them leave. So she said to Yijiang, your conditions are so good. We are old classmates after all. Can't we support each other in business? At this time, Li Ditsai once again taunted the male lead. Zhou Yufen, you really have a nerve. Still dare to stop us? And Shuyu is not your classmate. Later, she told Shuyu. Bro, don't take it to heart. We are not familiar with this person at all. We're not classmates either, the male lead said. Looks like you guys don't have much money either. Can't even afford such a cheap trumpet. After saying this, he looked at Ya Jiang with a smile on his face. At this moment, Ya Jiang felt somewhat unable to respond. After all, he's the one driving a taxi. His conditions are much better than these people. How dare you say I have no money? Then he took out a large banknote from his pocket and handed it to the male lead. No need to look for change. Suddenly, Zhou Yufen's expression changed. He happily started recording the measurements of Shi Jiang. At this moment, Jia Pepe also reported the sizes of the three girls to Zhou Yufen. After saying this, they prepared to go back. Shin Zirin kept urging Jia Xiaoduo to hurry up. Xiaoduo, don't look. Let's go. Xiaoduo could only leave reluctantly with her best friend. Xiaoduo, don't leave yet. Let's talk, okay? Friends and family all want to break up her marriage. These people claim to be acting in your best interest, but are actually trying to ruin your life. If you were the female lead, would you be able to cut off all external information and stand firmly by your beloved when you see your beloved about to be taken away? The male lead couldn't help but speak out to try to keep them. Xiaoduo, can we talk? Xiaoduo hesitated for a moment. She didn't resist Zhou Yu. Instead, she stopped with a hint of anticipation in her eyes. After all, the two have been married for many years. There are still feelings between them. At this moment, Zhu Jun reminded. Zhou Yufen, shut your mouth. You are all divorced. Stop bothering Xiao Duo. Zhu Jun has always had opinions about the male lead, but it's their family matter after all. It's not appropriate for him to get involved. The male lead doesn't want to deal with him at all. I know, no need for your reminder. Even though Xiao Duo didn't speak, she had already stopped in her tracks. Everyone turned to look at Jiang Xiaoduo, as if blaming her for not leaving yet. Xiaoduo. 
Why haven't you left yet? What does Zhou Yufen have to hold on to? Wake up. But Xiao Duo feels that there are still many things that haven't been clarified with Zhou Yufen. This time, she wants the male lead to completely let go of his thoughts. After all, I am already single again, and I've already started blind dates. At this point, Li just started the derision mode. Still hanging on to the past, huh? Looks like the injury isn't too deep. It's true that good scars forget the pain. Beating around the bush, the blind date candidate Shu Jiang also looked at Jiang Xiaoduo with disdain. If there are still feelings, why go on a blind date with yourself? This woman really has no self-respect. Just as Li Ditsai was about to mock her again, Shin Ziren roared at him to shut up. Even though she also thought what Xiaoduo did was not right, she still defended her. At this time, the male lead said, Xiaoduo, let's go over there for a walk, just for a while. Then, the two of them walked, one in front and the other behind. Zhou Yufeng has a lot to say to his beloved, Xiaoduo. A lot has happened since you left. Wu Han has been arrested, my parents' grievances have been cleared, and I've entrusted all the compensation to you now. Xiao Duo, look, this is the money I earned tonight. As he spoke, he opened the bag around his waist. Inside, a stack of bills was neatly placed. He wanted to tell Xiao Duo that he had money now. From now on, the two of them didn't have to live frugally anymore. I am now capable of making my loved ones live well. But Xiao Duo interrupted Zhou Yufeng's words. Zhou Yufeng, we are already divorced. I will marry someone else in the future. Can you please stop bothering me? The male lead looked surprised. He didn't expect his beloved would be so decisive. Is this the final goodbye? At this moment, Xiao Duo continued to say, Go back to your hometown. Let's never meet again in this lifetime. Jiang Xiaoduo's ability to say such things did not surprise the author. After all, Zhou Yufeng had hurt her deeply in the past. Every day, he either hit her or scolded her. In the two and a half years of marriage, Xiao Duo did not have a single good day. But the male lead has changed. He won't hurt Xiao Duo anymore. Hearing such heartless words from his beloved, Zhou Yufeng felt very sad. His body couldn't help but tremble zero. I'm about to get married. Don't come and pester me anymore. This sentence seems to be like a heavy hammer. It fiercely strikes at the heart of the male lead. Alas, it must be the most heartbreaking thing. Zhou Yufeng trembled in pain. Suddenly, he smirked devilishly. You can only marry me in this lifetime. No one else can have you except me. Zhou Yufeng's sudden action scared Xiao Duo, freezing her in place. It was as if she had returned to the moment of domestic violence in the past. Tears uncontrollably welled up in her eyes. Zhou Yufeng, why? Zero. Why won't you just let me go? Haven't you caused me enough misery? Now everyone is gossiping about me behind my back, saying that I'm a second-time divorcee. I married you back then under the pressure of my parents. How did you end up treating me, Xiao Duo? It used to be my fault. Give me another chance. I swear I'll never let you suffer again. Actually, the male lead is also very sad in his heart. After all, the man who used to abuse Xiao Duo is already dead. I am a time traveler myself. But who would believe it if I said this? Xiao Duo, come back. I want to marry you again. Right now, Xiao Duo is completely scared silly. She can't say a word. She can only cry while staring at Zhou Yufeng. Seeing this, Zhou Yufeng suddenly starts to feel guilty. What's the difference between his behavior and that of the man before? After sighing gently, she let go of Xiao Duo's hand. There's no need to rush things now. Otherwise it will backfire. So she decided to send Xiao Duo home first. Watching her beloved walk away. Zhou Yufeng's heart is in agony. I have never truly loved someone. It's really hard to understand that kind of pain. Xiao Duo, I know your worries. In the future, I will definitely prove it with practical actions. I will remove all obstacles. Let you come back to me. After seeing off Xiao Duo. The male lead also returned to his own stall. Today's sales are very good. His snack stall has already opened up a sales channel at the night market. More people will come to buy tomorrow. The next day, he once again came to the Guanghai Wholesale Market. This time, he no longer wears a ruffled shirt. Instead, he put on a brand new outfit. This time, he didn't find a partner to make the purchase. He took the goods from the supplier by himself. Get me 60 small and medium-sized speakers from the warehouse. Yesterday's stock has been sold out. Got it. The boss is very nice. In addition, 
Zhou Yufeng's sales volume is indeed significant, so this time, we will purchase goods at the wholesale price of 100 items, just as the two were about to finalize the deal. Suddenly, a voice from behind called out to Zhou Yufeng. The CEO of a Fortune Global 500 company has actually traveled back to the 80s, this time. Will he still be able to create a commercial miracle in order to improve the life of his loved one? To prove that he is not the scum of the earth as others say, the male lead wholesaled a batch of clothing to start a business, in just one night. The stock was already sold out, so he went back to Guanghai Wholesale Market again. Just as he was about to make a purchase, a voice called out to him. This kid was a little chubby, with a center-parted hairdo. At this moment, he was smiling and greeting Zhou Yufeng. Isn't this the old Su who did the group buying with him before? This time, old Su is here to inspect the market for the company, to see if there are any new styles. Those who can inspect the market are naturally trading companies. These are very familiar to Zhou Yufeng. After all, he was doing this before he time-traveled. The unit where Lao Su works is called Guanghai International Trading Company, from leather bags, wallets, belts and other leather products, to clothes and pants, even large refrigerators. As long as it involves import and export trade, it falls within their unit's jurisdiction. In other words, certain foreign products, they all have channels to contact the corresponding manufacturers. This person will definitely come in handy in the future. Thinking of this, Zhou Yufeng became even more enthusiastic. Old Su admires Zhou Yufeng very much. Just overnight, he restocked again. The sales volume is really high. At this point, he reminded the male lead, good business. Everyone is rushing to do it. As the competition becomes more intense, the profit of the goods will also decrease. At this point, Zhou Yufeng said, I'm just doing the trumpet business in the short term. I don't want to do this in the long term. Lao Su didn't understand. So Zhou Yufeng continued to explain, We are in a price war right now, so we need to make a quick decision before others see this opportunity, or we will lose out. Otherwise, we'll end up at a loss. On the other hand, Xiao Duo's dad is getting angry. This old man has a bad temper to begin with. When he heard that Zhou Yufeng was still pestering Xiao Duo, he was even more furious. He's very angry. They're already divorced. And yet he managed to track her here. The evil spirit is still lingering. At this time, Xiao Duo has also returned home. As soon as she opened the door, she sensed something was wrong. Everyone at home was staring at her intently, as if she had committed a serious mistake. Xiao Duo, when did he come? Why didn't you tell me? At this point, Xiao Duo also understood the reason for the tense atmosphere. He came two days ago. Jiang Yongguang here became even more angry. Is he here to borrow money again? How much does he want to borrow this time? Xiao Duo quickly explained that he didn't borrow any money. He just said a few words. And big brother Jiang Mingning also said, What kind of words do you have to say behind your classmates? Look at how angry your dad is. He's about to set himself on fire. Jiang Mingming's words were very unpleasant. It's as if it's Xiao Duo's fault. At this time, Xiao Duo's mom also said, Xiao Duo, how about we just give him some money, as long as he stops bothering you, in their eyes? Zhou Yufeng is still in the same disdainful state as before. You can tell from Jian Yongguang's attitude, out. The male lead has been asking them for money all the time, but the current Zhou Yufeng has completely changed. Not only does he not ask for money anymore, instead, he is making a lot of money, right? As soon as Xiao Duo's mom mentioned giving money, Jian Yongguang immediately objected to this approach. Absolutely not. I know this kind of person very well. If you give them once, there will definitely be countless times, until I've drained you dry. This man is too pitiful. His father-in-law's whole family despises him. Even his friends dislike him. Even his wife has left him. Zhou Yufeng's speaker store is selling better and better. The booth was just set up and customers came in, just as the female customer was about to pay. The male lead's unscrupulous nature was exposed. 99 yuan was yesterday's price, miss, because yesterday was a low price sale. We didn't make any money at all, so today we're back to the original price of 110 yuan per piece. Although the sudden price increase makes people unhappy, but the male lead's trumpet inventory has already become a trend. The beautiful girl can only obediently foot the bill. In the next few days, the loudspeaker club was very lively, with the continuous increase in sales. Zhou Yufeng's wallet is getting more. At this moment, Xiao Duo is also preparing to take the initiative to talk to Zhou Yufeng. 
The pressure from her family is very great right now. Everyone is very worried about the future of her relationship with the male lead. So Xiao Duo is preparing to break things off completely with Zhou Yufeng. The male lead is very happy to see Xiao Duo again. He greets Xiao Duo excitedly. Faced with the enthusiasm of the male lead, Xiao Duo's attitude appears somewhat indifferent. She simply said, Do you have time now? Let's talk. Afterwards, he explained the family situation to her. At this point, Zhou Yufeng also became much more rational. He didn't expect that even Xiao Duo's family would know about the matter. So I awkwardly apologized to Xiao Duo. I know I have caused you a lot of trouble. After all, we are already divorced. But Xiao Duo, don't you feel my love for you? I don't want to make your family sad. And I don't want to make you sad. But I just can't control myself. I feel uneasy if I don't see you for a day. The sincere words of the male lead touched Xiao Duo's heart a little. The attitude of my family is too resolute. I can't leave on my own. So I chose to promise Xiao Duo. I won't bother you anymore in the future. But now I already have you. I have earned a lot of money. I will earn even more money in the future. As long as you want to marry me, you can do it any time. These words made Xiao Duo a little embarrassed. Blushing, Ba turned his face to one side. It's already very late. The debater's time to close up has also arrived. So, Zhou Yufeng suggested taking Xiao Duo home. Soon, Xiao Duo arrived home, watching her lover's figure go into the distance. Zhou Yufeng couldn't help but call her name. Xiao Duo at this moment, Xiang Xiao Duo also turned around. Xiao Duo apart from me, no one is worthy of you. If you don't marry me in the future, you will definitely regret it for a lifetime. This time we are really going to break up. We won't entangle each other anymore. From falling in love during our school days, to getting married after graduation, and then divorcing two years later. The past surged into Jiang Xiaodua's heart like a tide. At this moment, her heart is torn. Tears uncontrollably stream down. Why did it turn out like this? Clearly, they love each other. Xiaodua returned home in a daze. Although she wiped away the tears, but the swollen eyes proved that she had cried. Seeing her daughter return, Mom rushed forward and asked with concern, What's wrong, Xiao Duo? Why are your eyes so red? Did Zhou Yufeng bully you again? Xiao Duo is a sensible girl. She doesn't want to worry her family, so she said her eyes were just tired. But at this time, Jiang Xiaohua also came over. She asked her sister if she had gone to find Zhou Yufeng again. This little girl really doesn't mind being nosy. Seeing her sister not answering, didn't you promise mom and dad not to pester her anymore? Xiao Duo is very sad now. She doesn't want to talk. From childhood, everything in her life has been arranged by her family. Including the divorce with the male lead now, it's also arranged by her family. At this moment, her father's expression also becomes severe. From now on, you are not allowed to see Zhou Yufeng again. If you go to see him again, I will break your legs. Look at yourself. You've lost your memories. What nonsense. We have a young man in our unit. He is very kind. I have already introduced you to him. How about having dinner together tomorrow? Upon hearing this, Xiao Duo completely exploded. This. Fahua's words were too extreme. Xiao Duo was also angry. This is the first time in decades that she has stood up for herself like this. Then she should just marry you directly. As soon as the words fell, the father raised his hand and slapped Xiao Duo. This slap was merciless. Xiao Duo's entire face swelled up, leaving a large palm print. Seeing his daughter being slapped, Mom Duod was heart attack. She held her heart calling what was name in pain. This family is really chaotic. Are they forcing Duo Duo to death? Seeing this, Duo Duo quickly ran to her mother's side, afraid that something bad might happen to her. At this time, Mom Xiao Duo said, I didn't let you marry that jerk Xiao Yufeng before. You just wouldn't listen. And now you're still making me angry like this. Do I have to hit you for you to be satisfied? Why are you so disobedient? Would Mom and Dad hate you? Little Duo feels helpless seeing this situation. She had to compromise. 
With tears, she reluctantly agreed to go on a blind date tomorrow. Is your mom forcing you to get married? Feeling a bit annoyed, right? These lyrics fit Jiang Xiaoduo perfectly. At this moment, she has become the target of her whole family. Her father even cruelly slapped her. Just as Xiaodou was being forced by her family to go on a blind date, the male lead was also diligently selling his speakers in a certain residential area. She really needs money now. She wants to bring her younger siblings over to live with her as soon as possible. So the sales at the night market simply can't satisfy her anymore. It's true that enemies will always come together. Mocking the DUI is about to be launched. Jia Pei Pei greeted Zhou Yufeng when she saw him. Shin Xiren and Zhu Jun also looked in the direction of the male lead together. The male lead dislikes Shin Xiren. This woman has been introducing potential partners to Xiao Duo. So has Xu Jun. This kid always loves to meddle in other people's affairs. Although he dislikes it in his heart. But Zhou Yufeng didn't show it. Instead, he smiled and said, Pei Pei, after wearing the bell bottoms, your aura is much stronger than the person next to you. At this time, Xu Jun's eyes kept scrutinizing the two girls. Then he angrily said, Zhou Yufeng, can't you speak, young man? A dog's mouth can't spit out ivory. This scene reminds me of Hu Xiaoshan. Previously, Hu Xiaoshan also opposed the male lead, which gave Zhou Yufeng a hard time, and later pointed at Jia Pei Pei saying, Putting on your bell bottoms is considered positive energy. I think it's not serious. Who is so shameless to wear this? This move hits the nail on the head of Zhou Yufeng's concerns. Oh, oh, oh. Squad leader, how can you say that your classmate is not serious? Feeling that something is wrong, Xu Jun quickly explained to Jia Pei Pei, making the latter feel embarrassed. At this point, the male lead wants to add fuel to the fire. Just now, he was saying that others are not serious. What's there to explain now? We're all classmates. Do you have to look at others with colored glasses? I work so hard every day. I only earn two cents for a pair of pants. Are you still going to insult me like this? Are you even human? By the way, Zhou Yufeng is really good at making up stories. Clearly, a pair of pants earns over 50. Still crying poverty. These words completely satisfied Shin Zirin's heart that cannot stand to see him doing well. Just as they wanted to continue questioning, Zhou Yufeng quickly slipped away. He took his horn and went to set up a stall at the night market, watching the protagonist's figure leave. Shin Zirin was so angry that he gritted his teeth. It seemed like he could bite Zhou Yufeng to death in the next second. Then he turned to Jia Pei Pei and said, From now on, if you see her, don't talk to her. Just pretend you don't know her. This woman really is baffling. Don't let others like someone you don't like. Night falls. Seeing Zhou Yufeng who is performing a ritual, Qin Ego quickly approached. Brother Qin. Zero. Your business is the best in this night market. At this point, the male lead has already guessed what Qin Ego wants to say. It's nothing more than wanting to get a piece of the action. So he preemptively said that he's just a worker. But Qin Ego didn't give up. Where can I find the source of the goods as ordered? Although Qin Ego's official position is not high, he controls the entire night market. It seems that the male lead will have to make some effort to pass this level, someone said. Divorce is about mutual fulfillment, but the author thinks. Divorce is divorce. Don't talk nonsense. Since the promise to no longer entangle with his ex-wife, the male lead threw himself into work with all his energy. Though his wallet was getting fatter day by day, his own business had long been targeted by someone. Trouble came knocking. Chinigo relying on his identity as a night market manager, just let the male lead hand over the goods directly, want to get a piece of the action. But the male lead is no pushover either, blocked the hand that was holding onto his shoulder. Brother Qin, I'm just a regular worker. I have no idea about the source of goods. Qin Ego immediately turned hostile when he saw this, so he pointed at the male lead's nose and said he didn't know how to appreciate favors. He's just a shiny piece of treasure. The male lead should have some sense. When the male lead didn't react, she started to scold him. Zhou Yufeng, what kind of thing are you? Do you still want to get ahead? If you don't hand over the goods, there's no need for you to come to this night market. The male lead said calmly and confidently, that's fine too. But I've already paid the booth fee. I'll leave after I finish setting up. Seeing this scene, Qin Ego is even more furious. Damn it, you really have a nerve. I doubt if you can still hang around here in the future. But what Qin Ego didn't know is, the trouble his actions today will bring to himself. Zhou Yufeng was not thrown off rhythm by Qin Ego. 
he continued to eat the noodles in his bowl. He hadn't planned to set up a stall in the night market for long. His goal was to grow and expand. At this moment, Zhou Yufeng was planning to make a big profit before leaving, so he called Su Ge. Hoping to commission him to order another batch of Lao Lao Hu and pay when he arrived in Guanghai. This time, Zhou Yufeng was ready to play big. He ordered 110 pieces of Lao Lao Hu in one go. On the way back, he started calculating in his mind. Currently, there are eight left in hand. Adding the ordered quantity, it's 118 in total. If they can all be sold, it would be enough to become a millionaire. During the male lead's closing time, Chinigo, I don't know where he crawled out from again. Zhou Yufeng, you better think it through. If you don't tell me about Hurin, you can forget about staying in this place. The male protagonist just smiled faintly. You think you're a little snack seller and still want to threaten me? You just wait and see. I'll show you how I deal with you. On the way home, Zhou Yufeng and Jiang Xiaodo met again. This situation seems a bit awkward. After all, we have already promised not to entangle each other. Jiang Xiaodo stopped and wanted to say something more, but Zhou Yufeng let go. Xiaodo, hello? So he continued walking forward. This scene surprised Jiang Xiaodo. Previously, it was always the male lead who hurried to chat. This time, he just said hello and left, watching the male lead gradually disappear. Jiang Xiaodo felt very upset. It's as if something is lost. He stood there, somewhat at a loss, as if something is lost. Is it happiness? Being a bootlicker. Finally, nothing left, since his wife left. Zhou Yufeng has put all his thoughts into his career. As long as he does his job well, a real man changes his weapon, even though his speaker business has been quite successful. But he was still far from his goal. So he decided to take a big gamble. This time, he entrusted a friend to purchase 110 trumpets in one go. This quantity was considered substantial in 1983. After all, people were very poor at that time and could barely earn 1,000 yuan in a year. The next morning, the male lead arrived at his friend's house early. This guy is really lucky. He arrived just as his friend was cooking. Seeing Zhou Yufeng come to the house, Sugu warmly welcomed the male lead to sit down. But Zhou Yufeng's mind is now entirely on his speaker collection. He has already used all the money he earned these days to buy new pants. So Sugu brought him to the storage room. Looking at rows of brand new speakers in front of them, Zhou Yufeng also had confidence in his heart. A smile unconsciously appeared on his face, as if what was in front of him was not the horn warehouse, but stacks of brand new banknotes. Brother Su greatly admires Zhou Yufeng. To have such courage and ability at such a young age, even he himself wouldn't dare to make such a large purchase at once. Although the two have not known each other for long, they get along very well. They eat and chat together. You phone, ah? Why the rush for this shipment? And the quantity is so large, Brother Sue. To be honest, someone has started to envy my sales volume. Even the administrator of the night market has threatened me to reveal my procurement channels. It won't be long before the whole city is covered by loudspeaker pavilion. By then, the price will keep dropping. So I want to make some money in the end and then exit. How much money can I make from this last batch of goods? Zhou Yufeng thought for a moment and replied, It's over 10,000 yuan. Su Ji's eyes widened in astonishment. What? I sell my speakers for 110 yuan each. Although the price is a bit high, this price is mainly aimed at white-collar workers and government employees. Most of the buyers at this price are women. They all use money. And they all love you passionately. After speaking, she handed over a passbook. Opening it up, it happened to be 5,000 yuan. Later, Zhou Yufeng picked up his horn and said goodbye. Now he is in a hurry. If this batch of horns in his hand is not sold quickly, when others start selling horns, he will become very passive. This time he has put all his wealth on it. If this batch doesn't sell, or sells poorly, then he will be ruined. A few hours later, familiar sounds are heard again in the night market. The last batch of clearance sale for the horns. If you don't buy now, you won't be able to buy them later. In the eyes of ordinary people, this is just a pair of jeans. But in the eyes of a merchant, these are brand new stacks of banknotes. And this is the commercial miracle belonging to Zhou Yufeng. It all started with these pairs of pants in order to increase sales. 
the male lead goes to the night market at night and sets up stalls at the entrances of various districts during the day. The horn depot is selling off at a loss. Only 110 yuan each. This is the last batch. Once it's sold out, it's over. This old fox is clearly making over 60 yuan profit on each one. Yet now he's saying it's a loss. The sky was still dark at this time, but the office workers were starting to head out. After a busy morning, Zhou Yufeng sat on the side of the road eating breakfast. At this time, he was under a lot of pressure. The sales volume in the warehouse had clearly decreased significantly compared to before. There must be others selling as well. As long as there is a profitable business, others will rush in. This is inevitable. Yes, as more people join, the price will continue to drop, until no one can make any more profit. The most important thing is, to sell it at a high price. If someone finds out the real price, they might take the main character apart. So he wants to sell this batch of goods as soon as possible. Then he can leave, otherwise things will get very complicated. At this point, Zhou Yufeng couldn't care less about the unfinished pancakes. He picked up the bullhorn and continued to promote vigorously, just as he was shouting loudly. A young man in a suit also approached him. This man is called Lu Rui. This is the person that Jiang Xiaodua's dad introduced to Xiao Duo. He wants to buy an old pair of blue jeans, as a gift for Xiao Duo. Remember this person, fans? This guy is very attentive, while on the other side. Shin Zirin. Jiang Xiaoduo and a few classmates are playing mahjong. Miss Shen is excitedly looking at the cards in her hand. Her luck is good today. This is not right. It's messed up again. In contrast, Jiang Xiaoduo seems troubled. She is worrying about the blind date. At this moment, Shen Ziren said, What's wrong, Xiaoduo? Why are you absent-minded? Just arranged a new blind date for him at home. Just now, I called home for him. Said that Lu Rui is coming to pick him up. But Jiang Xiaoduo doesn't like this person. More precisely, she is very averse to this person. As soon as she sees Lu Rui, she feels uneasy. Well, that's better than Zhou Yufeng, right? At least Lu Rui shouldn't lay a hand on you. All right. Let's go for a walk. On the way, we happen to encounter Lu Rui, who came to pick up Jiang Xiaoduo. Meanwhile, Zhou Yufeng was also selling old pants at the entrance. This should be interesting. Just finished a miserable marriage. Now being pressured by family to go on a blind date. Are they treating their daughter like an item? In order to get her married off quickly, mother's method of dealing with things, crying, making a scene, or attempting suicide, almost succeeded. And father, in a fit of anger, slapped her, although reluctantly. She had no choice but to compromise. The person in front of us is Xiao Duo's blind date. His name is Lu Rui. At this moment, he is enthusiastically greeting several people. This guy is very calculating. He knows that the people living in this neighborhood are either rich or affluent. So he appears unusually enthusiastic. This is also the reason why Xiao Duo dislikes him. Seeing Lu Rui's attitude makes Shen Ziren feel somewhat awkward. So I wanted to find an excuse to leave. But then was blocked by Lu Rui. Don't go. Let's take a walk together. Just get to know each other. Due to saving face. Shen Ziren agreed. At this time, the shouting outside the main gate attracted everyone's attention. It was the male lead, Zhou Yufeng, selling trumpet pants. Just listen to Shen Ziren saying, Zhou Yufeng is selling bell bottoms in our neighborhood again. He just won't give up. When Lu Rui heard the name of the male lead, her eyes widened instantly. Isn't Zhou Yufeng Jiang Xiaodua's ex-husband? So she turned her head somewhat displeasedly to look at Xiao Duo. It's as if my own wife is having an affair. You know... You're not even married yet. And Xiao Duo was smiling at the male lead outside the community. This scene made Lu Rui very angry. Jiang Xiao Duo, what are you looking at? What do you mean? Xiao Duo looked at Lu Rui with a puzzled expression. What do you mean? What's wrong with me? While Lu Rui also angrily accused. What do you think she means? Are you trying to rekindle the old flame? Jiang Xiao Duo, you are being very disrespectful to me. Shin Ziren quickly stepped forward to intervene. Stop arguing. Come on, let's go shopping. The current Zhou Yufeng is completely different from the former alcoholic and gambler Zhou Yufeng. This has shaken the firmness in Xiaodua's heart. So she turned her head to take another look, only to hear the furious roar from behind. Jiang Xiaoduo, are you leaving or not? So Xiaoduo got angry too. This is the first time I've seen her get angry. I'll leave if I want to, and I won't if I don't want to. 
Do you have a say in this? Besides, where I want to go is my freedom. What does it have to do with you? Lu Rui was even more furious when he heard this. Do you think I'm willing to go on a blind date with you, a second-hand woman? You're just a temporary worker. What are you so arrogant about? At this moment, the male lead also noticed this, quickly waved to Xiao Duo. Afraid that she might be at a disadvantage, Xiao Duo turned around and saw Zhou Yufeng smiling at her. The male lead gestured for Xiao Duo to come over to him, so Xiao Duo blushed, walked over obediently, and took off the wallet from his body, and handed it to Xiao Duo, one responsible for earning money, one responsible for managing money. This picture is clearly of the couple doing business. While Lu Rui is looking at the two with a displeased expression, this scene has made him very angry. This kid won't just let it go. His own wife actually went on a blind date with someone else. Shook can't stand it anymore. After seeing his ex-wife being bullied by someone else, being protective, Zhou Yufeng quickly called Jiang Xiaoduo over, afraid that she might suffer. This also brought about Lu Rui's dissatisfaction. He clenched his fist and angrily walked towards the two of them. Jiang Xiaoduo, what do you mean? What future is there with this man? How much money can you make with a pair of pants? Aren't you afraid of starving to death? At this point, Zhou Yufeng here became even more enthusiastic in promoting. It's not easy for migrant workers to make money, you know. I work four jobs a day just to make a living. At this point, Sister Bindi said, People work so hard to earn money, and you're still trying to belittle them. You really are despicable. Which department are you from? Hearing this, Lu Rush became completely timid. He knew that the people in this neighborhood couldn't handle it. Fortunately, Big Sister Bindi didn't pursue it further. Instead, she directly ordered two pairs of bell-bottom pants, and others also began to make purchases. It seems that Lu Rui's actions have actually helped the male lead. Zhou Yufeng repeatedly thanked him with clasped hands. This kid is already feeling very pleased with himself. The farce in front of him has instead worked in his favor. It seems that this batch of goods will sell out quickly, and the quality of the goods itself has also been recognized by Sister Bangi. The two who just bought the bell-bottoms folded the pants while praising them. Under the vigorous promotion of the male lead, the crowd in front of the booth also grew. Miss Shen and Zhu Jun, who saw this scene, also fell into contemplation. How come this kid is working so hard now? Could it be that he has changed his mind? The two no longer understand. Night falls. There are hardly any bell-bottoms left on the shelf, and the male lead is also preparing to close the stall. Xiao Duo obediently stands by, quietly watching Zhou Yufeng check the sales volume. Today, more than 40 pieces were sold. We also have to thank Lu Rui for causing a scene, otherwise it probably wouldn't have sold so quickly. It's already very late. The male lead should also take Jiang Xiao Duo home. On the way, Xiao Duo kept looking at the man in front of her. There was a lot of admiration in her eyes. I don't know if he has changed his mind. Xiao Duo wants to explain. The guy, Lu Rui, is a blind date arranged by her family. It's not her own choice. And the male lead is not angry. What do you think? That was just to please my parents. I don't like Lu Rui. Just as Xiao Duo was about to continue explaining, all right, Xiao Duo. It's getting late. You should get some rest. It looks like things have taken a turn, my friends. The emotions expert Mathercoin once said, If your family forces you into arranged marriage, then stand up to them. After returning home, Xiao Duo's father couldn't wait to ask about the results of the blind date. Although Xiao Duo was deeply repulsed by Lu Rui, but in order to reassure her family, it's okay. The person in front of her is called Jiang Mingning, Xiao Duo's real brother. This kid is a well-known prodigal son in the village. He heard that a kid who sells horns at the night market has made a lot of money, so he wanted to do this business. But what he didn't know is that the kid he mentioned is actually his former useless brother-in-law. Zhou Yufeng specifically came home this time to borrow money. Although the previous investments have left the family in heavy debt, he still believes himself to be an investment genius. He aggressively describes his plans to his father. Facing the big picture painted by Haudar, Jian Yongguang was also sweating profusely. He knew very well that his son was very unreliable. Seeing that his father was not fooled, Jiang Mingming continued to deceive. They also sell it in the garden at home. 
110 yuan each. Cost price is only 45. My old father is making a killing. Afterwards, Jiang Mingning's emotions began to get excited. Dad, what are you still waiting for? In less than a month, I'll be able to pay you back, principal and interest. I'm the only hope for our family. You can't ignore me this time. Confronting the frenzied Jiang Mingming, Jiang Yongguang was also helpless and could only nod in agreement. Father, I will definitely succeed this time. You can look forward to a comfortable life. I saw Jiang Yongguang with his back to him, saying, The confiscation has already made me very uneasy. You must not act rashly. Be careful when spending money. Whenever Xiaoduo is mentioned, Jiang Mingming became agitated, complaining that since Xiaoduo married Zhou Yufeng, these two people have been spending a lot of money at home. It seems that he has a strong opinion about Xiaoduo and Zhou Yufeng. Hearing this, Jiang Yongguan could only sigh helplessly. It's not just Jiang Mingming who can spot business opportunities. There's also a man who will deeply hurt him in the future. Jian Jin Lai. This kid has the biggest store in the mall. At this moment, he is discussing something with a man wearing sunglasses. Qian Ji Lai also saw the profit in the Horn warehouse. He wants to get a piece of the action. As the saying goes, money makes the world go round. In order to open up the channels, he prepared a whole envelope of foreign exchange coupons. We see Wu Jixiang with a big smile on his face as he puts the envelope into his pocket. Other people buy the goods at a uniform price. 45 yuan per piece. He buys them at 40 yuan per piece. With this price difference of 5 yuan, no matter how many people sell loudspeakers in the future market, they will not be able to shake the status of making money. Thinking of the money coming in here, even uttered a grateful sound. It's as if a gold mine is about to be put into their own pockets. These two old foxes are carefully planning. But what they don't know is, the current situation has already been predicted by someone in advance. He has emerged from the crisis like a dark horse, and even monopolized the entire clothing industry. All's fair in business. This line fits the current scene perfectly. In a small room. These two are plotting how to eliminate their competitors. The expression on Qian's face becomes increasingly frantic. He knows that there will be many people vying for business in the future, so he's already prepared for a price war. Others purchase at over 45. While he only needs 40, this is his capital for the price war. He seems to see the scene of competitors begging for mercy. The attitude when seeing money coming in. Wu Jixiang was not surprised at all. He knows very well how dark the heart is when money comes in. How ruthless. Suddenly, the money coming in changed the madness from earlier. Instead, with a flattering face said, Uncle Wu, when will my goods arrive? Only to see Wu Jixiang leisurely say, Around tomorrow afternoon. Rest assured. You are the first one to get the loudspeaker inventory in the whole town of Xinhai City. Just when the two of them were having a secret meeting, Zhou Yufeng was also setting up a stall in the garden at home. This is indeed a high-end neighborhood. The homeowners are all very wealthy. The inventory of his speaker warehouse has almost sold out. But the business has also become sluggish. It seems that this neighborhood has reached saturation point, so he prepared to change to another neighborhood to continue selling the remaining clothes. Just as he was walking to the library, two people recognized him. Aren't you the one selling trumpets in your home garden? Get us too. It seems that his sales have been very effective these days. People are already starting to recognize him. I don't know if when the prices of the speakers drop in the future, the crowd will want to kill him when they see the real prices. The library behind the male lead is where his ex-wife works. At this moment, Xiao Duo also heard Zhou Yufeng's hawking voice. At present, Xiao Duo's attitude towards Zhou Yufeng has undergone a great change. She saw the male lead's business talent, and she also saw the male lead's effort. Unconsciously, Xiao Duo's face also turned red. I don't know if it's because I still love Zhou Yufeng, or because I saw that he's making money now. Inside the department store. There are people asking about the news of La Baku. The market for this new type of clothing has completely opened up now. After hearing this, the two of them turned and left, open, watching the back of the customer leaving. Shui Wenwen anxiously fanning herself with a fan. I wonder why Jiang Mingming hasn't come back yet. At this moment, a person hurriedly ran to the stall. This person is Jiang Mingming, and his wife is very angry. In the morning, Many people kept asking about the news of the Horn warehouse, but he didn't have his own. As a result, he found a sense of losing money. At this point, the price of the trumpet in the warehouse had risen to 50 yuan each. 
It was only after Guang Hai shipped the goods that he was able to buy them, so he bought one hundred at once. Spent all the money borrowed from his father, and the nightmare of this couple is about to begin. The man in front of him, in order to fulfill his dream of getting rich, even resorted to using his parents' retirement savings to invest. Little did he know what seemed to be an opportunity. It's actually a trap. The Jiang Mingning couple purchased 100 horns at a price of 50 yuan each. At this moment, both of them were very happy. It seemed as if they could immediately earn a fortune. But what they didn't know was, someone has already bought the horn set for 40 yuan each, and the booth is right upstairs, and this nightmare for the young couple is about to begin. On the other side, Zhou Yufeng, who set up the booth again, has already sold all the horn sets. In just a few days, this kid has earned at least 10,000 bucks. You know, in the 80s, 10,000 bucks was like a million now. He looked at the empty clothes hangers and felt very happy. It looks like he'll be able to bring his little brother and sister over soon. The male lead paused by the public telephone. After inserting a coin, he dialed Su Guitao's phone number. He wanted to confirm the wholesale price of the horn warehouse to see if the current situation matched his speculation. Sure enough. Currently, the wholesale prices of the bell-bottom pants at the warehouse have all gone up, from the original 45 yuan to 50 yuan, and the number of people buying this type of clothing has also increased significantly. It looks like bell-bottom pants will soon be all over the streets. Fortunately, I had the foresight. Otherwise, I would be feeling pretty terrible right now. At this moment, Chinguida asked about the sales of the male lead. Upon hearing that they had all been sold, and had already earned over 10,000 yuan, Su Guotao was surprised, gaping in disbelief. He had not expected Zhou Yufeng to be so capable. Later, she asked the male lead if he would continue to replenish stock. Currently, the prices in the speaker market have all risen. Surely, big merchants will get the goods at a low price. Just like Qian Jin Lai. The market competition is so fierce now. They will definitely sell at low prices. Then everyone won't be able to handle it. So prepare to exit now. By then, everyone won't be able to handle it. So prepare to exit now. Hearing this, Su Guotao admired Zhou Yufeng even more, insisting on coming to drink with him. After that, the two hung up the phone. Right now the male lead still has a very important thing to do. He needs to find Chinigo. This kid previously used his identity as a night market manager to drive him out. Zhou Yufeng is someone who takes revenge when wrong, so he wants to go back and give Chinigo a surprise. Inside the night market, Chinigo, this kid, is leisurely smoking, completely acting like an old cadre. He was very surprised to see Zhou Yufeng suddenly visiting him. The male lead hadn't let Chinigo take advantage of him before, so he was very displeased. Therefore, his expression was very unhappy. Tixioro Bukshio asked the male lead what he was up to with a smile that was not a smile, only to see Zhou Yufeng eagerly handing over a pack of cigarettes, as if the two of them had gotten along very well before. This move left Chinigo totally bewildered. He was thinking, what is this kid up to? At this point, the male lead started setting a trap for Chin Gu. Last time, little bro was wrong. After the night market, I couldn't sell my clothes. Can I come back to set up a stall again? Upon hearing this, Chin Go was very happy. It gave him a sense of satisfaction to retaliate against the male lead. Even shaking the watch is not allowed. The male lead approached him and said, Brother Chin, this time I've come with sincerity. As long as you let me come back to set up a stall, I will tell you the supply channel of the horn warehouse. If you don't hand over the procurement channel, from now on, you won't be able to mix in this area, and you won't be able to inquire about it either. Everyone around here knows me, Chinigo. Although Chinigo's official position is not high, his power is not small, in the face of his threats. The male lead, Zhou Yufeng, is not easy to bully either. No. His retaliatory action has also begun. After selling all the trumpets in his hands, Zhou Yufeng began his next move, cleaning up Chinigo. It's said that this kid deserves it. Not only trying to snatch other people's business, but also pointing fingers and scolding others. After hearing that Zhou Yufeng was willing to supply goods to him, Chinigo happily said that the male lead was doing much better than before. Bid 50 bucks. Sell at 110. This is clearly a big profit, seeing that Qin Yi's fallen for it. Zhou Yufeng said she could directly provide him with the contact information of the source of the goods, but there is a condition. When he heard the condition, 
Chini the dog became somewhat cautious. This guy is addicted to taking advantage. If it was someone else asking him for money, it would be impossible. But the male lead didn't mean that. He wants to continue renting a stall at the night market. But this time, the area of the stall is much larger than before. Upon hearing this, Chini Go readily agreed. Later, he brought Zhou Yufeng to an empty space. The area here is not small. The male lead is very satisfied. Later, Chini Go quickly ran to the telephone booth and eagerly dialed the phone number of the channel for goods. He thought he was about to make a fortune immediately. Little did he know that times had changed. Can't hold back the bitterness that I'll have to bear on my own. The next day, Zhou Yufeng arrived at the post office, having left home for so long without giving any news to the family. Now that I've earned some money, it's also time to get in touch with my younger brother and sister. My sister Yuna has passed the college entrance examination successfully. She will soon be studying at Zhenhai University, so she wants the whole family to come over. This way, the whole family can be reunited. But there are currently two problems that need to be solved. One is the issue of accommodation. The other is the issue of transferring to Jing and use school. If renting a house is not cost-effective, it's better to buy your own. But buying a house is not only expensive, and it's also very crowded. So she prepares to buy a small farmhouse. Not only spacious, the price is not that high. As for the transfer problem of Shaoxing and Xiaoyu, it's difficult to solve. After all, at that time, everything required a letter of introduction. So she thought of her old friend. Kang Jinglong, old fans all know. Previously, the male lead credited him for capturing Hu Han. Otherwise, old Kong wouldn't even be able to keep his position as the factory director. With his diligence now, Zhou Yufeng dialed Kang Jingzhong's phone number. Old Kong is still quite nice. As soon as he heard it was the male lead, he became enthusiastic. Yufeng Ah, how have you been here? You haven't called me for so long. Have you all forgotten about the big brother? How could that be Kong? I'm preparing to return to Lingxue City in the next few days. We can catch up when I'm back. Is there anything you want me to bring back for you? As soon as the male Li mentioned returning to Zero Water, Kang Jingzhong became very happy. There's nothing you need to bring. After you come back, we must have a good meal together. Zhou Yufeng repeatedly expressed his thanks. Brother Kang, I still need to thank you for the compensation my parents received last time. When I go back this time... I'll treat you to a meal at the state-run hotel. The call was very harmonious. Can you transfer the student status of my younger brother and sister? It depends on whether Kang Jingzhong can help. How cheap were the houses in the 1980s? Only about 60 renminbi per square meter. But now, it's over 10,000 renminbi per square meter. It's been several months since I left home. Although the goal of becoming rich is still far away, I have achieved some small success. So the male lead prepared to return home to bring his younger brother and sister back, bumpy all the way. Zhou Yufeng finally returned to Zero Shui City. Xiao Zheng is still growing. So this time, I deliberately bought two big bags of things when I came home. Xiao Zheng is playing with his little friends with a hoop at this time. This kind of toy is not available now. The male lead is very happy to see his younger brother. He loudly shouts Yu Zheng's name. The little guy turns around and realizes that his big brother has come back. Leaving his little friends aside, he dropped the iron hoop in his hand and ran towards Zhou Yufeng. The little guy kept staring at the thing in the male lead's hand. The conditions at home were very poor before, and this kid didn't get to eat anything good. Looking at his hungry little brother, Zhou Yufeng indulgently took out a lollipop for him. Stinky kid. I'll save the rest for when I get home. Just as I walked in the door, Yu Zheng immediately shouted for both sisters to come out quickly to see who had come back. The male lead suddenly returns home. Both sisters are very surprised, repeatedly asking how he suddenly came back. The relationship between siblings is much better now. There are some things I need to discuss with you all. I originally wrote a letter, but it's too slow, so I came back. You guys haven't eaten yet, right? I'll go make dinner. We'll talk while we eat. Very quickly. Zhou Yufeng then prepared a table full of delicious food. Life is good now. All the things we couldn't bear to eat before are now on the table. Over there. You will be going to study at Zhihai University soon. I'm very worried about leaving the two of them at home. Currently, your brother is doing business in Zhihai and has earned some money. So, this time I want our whole family to move there. This way we don't have to separate. After hearing this news, the whole family was very happy. Especially Xiao. 
He himself is not willing to separate from his older siblings. At this moment, Yuna said, It may not be easy to handle the transfer of Yu Yu and Yu Jing. I'll go talk to Kang Jingzhong first, to see if he can help. Afterwards, Zhou Yufeng arrived at the Linsui steel plant. It's the time when the workers get off work. So, Zhou Yufeng waited for Kang Jingzhong at the factory gate. After a while, she saw Lao Kang coming out of the factory with a thermos. In that era, almost every cadre would carry a thermos. Lao Kang, the male lead, was especially happy to see him again. He really likes the smart kid in front of him. Zhou Yufeng quickly handed over the local specialty in his hand. You can't come empty-handed when asking for a favor. The male protagonist was not overly polite either. He directly stated his request. Kang Ge, I want to bring both my little brother and little sister to this place by the sea. Both you and I are over there. You and Jing are still young. I'm a little worried about the two of them being here. He took out an envelope from his pocket as he spoke. Lao Kang, well versed in the ways of officialdom, understood the meaning as soon as he saw the envelope. Waving his hand, he said, You Feng, we don't need to be so formal between us. You're being too polite, brother. To be honest, I feel that I owe my younger brothers and sisters. I haven't been able to fulfill the responsibilities of being an older brother. Now I'm making progress in my work. I want to improve their quality of life. In order to transfer my younger siblings' school registrations to this city, Zhou Yufeng found the eldest brother, Kang Jingzhong. Faced with a wad of banknotes from the male lead's younger brother, Lao Kang repeatedly waved his hand. Yufeng, are you treating me like an outsider already? I'll definitely help with the transfer. But I won't take any money. Zhou Yufeng understands the intricacies of seeking favors. And Kang Jingzhong also needs to disengage and find someone. So I still insist on letting Lao Kang accept it. But at this time Kang Jingzhong said, Yufeng, if you do this again I won't help you. Zhou Yufeng was very moved. He knew that Kang Jingzhong really considered him a friend. So he said, Kang bro, in the future, if you need anything, just come to me. The matter of Yue and Yujing transferring schools has been settled. The male lead is also ready to return to this city to proceed with the next plan. Just got off the train, and I saw many people buying horn cabinets. At that time, the transportation channels were very limited. People in the garment business could only rely on trains and cars for transporting goods. Seeing so many people purchasing horn cabinets, Zhou Yufeng secretly congratulated herself on the timely shipment. Otherwise, with so many competitors, she would have suffered. As the saying goes, one man's joy is another man's sorrow. Business genius Jiang Mingming's warehouse is also on fire. At this moment, the store clerk is rushing towards Mr. and Mrs. Jiang Mingming in a panic. Sister woman, is something wrong? Seeing the flustered clerk, Jiang Mingming asked what had happened. The clerk pointed to the back and said, the money from upstairs is also selling loudspeakers. Jiang Mingming and her husband paid no attention. Now the whole mall is selling loudspeakers. There's nothing to be surprised about. After all, wholesalers can't just sell their own clothes. But the clerk's next words were like a thunderbolt. The speaker in the house only sells for 44 yuan. This shocked the young couple. The lowest bid is also 45 yuan, and it's only a small batch of goods. The money coming in sold for only 44. Isn't this selling at a loss? The scenario Jiang Ming anticipated of everyone selling for 100 yuan did not materialize. This left him a little at a loss. At this time, the shop assistant continued to say, All the other shop owners are saying the same thing too. The brand and quality are the same. But they sell it for 44 yuan. It's like responding to the shop assistant's words. The money upstairs also started to promote vigorously. Loudspeaker. Uniform. Plenty of the same. This is the rhythm of killing the competitors. Jiang Mingming is very angry. Others sell it for 100, but he sells it for 44. So, he called his wife to come and settle the accounts with him. Meanwhile, on the other side, Zhou Yufeng arrives at the night market. He looks around the stall he had previously rented. Suddenly, Qin Go rushes towards the male lead in an agitated manner. He loudly calls out Zhou Yufeng's name. Yufeng, this time I bought 50 pieces of loudspeakers, and they have already arrived. This guy is still dreaming of getting rich. Little did he know that he's already been played by the man in front of him. When you mix in this circle, you'll have to pay the piper eventually to snatch the male lead's business, pointing at someone and scolding them harshly. Now, he still naively believes that Zhou Yufeng will really let him take over the business. Little does he know that he is falling step by step into someone else's trap. 
Moreover, the price at which the male lead sold was very high. After the real price comes out, there will definitely be a large group of people holding a grudge against him. This account will be settled on Chinigo's head, Yu Feng. You had a very successful horn sale before. Can you give me some tips, bro? No problem, brother Go. The male lead readily agreed. But he already had a plan to deal with Chinigo in his heart. So he explained his previous sales model to Chinigo. The kid thought he was about to reach the pinnacle of his life. And he tightly closed his eyes, the beginning of a sour and refreshing expression. Afterwards, he shouted the same slogan as Zhou Yufeng. Speaking of which, this kid's teeth are quite white. The effect was indeed significant after using the male lead's advertising slogan. At this time, a pretty girl asked, Is it the one from before? Chinigo just kept saying yes. Yes, yes, yes. The person before was working for me. I am the boss. Just as the beauty was about to take out her wallet to pay, her action was interrupted by a passerby. The horn kits are now selling for 110 yuan. Beauty, don't be fooled. I bought a horn kit from her before as well. She is a dishonest merchant. Upon hearing this, Chin Yu was not happy. What do you mean? This is the price directly from the manufacturer. Why would you say I am a dishonest merchant? Just listen to the passerby continue to say, the same horn. You sell it for 110 yuan here. The department store sells it for only 44 yuan apiece. You still dare to say you're not a profiteer. Chinigo was very surprised to hear this. His cost price has already reached $50. Others are selling at $44. Isn't this selling at a loss? He then angrily said. Impossible. They must be selling counterfeit goods. The quality can't compare to the speakers in my store. Then the passerby took out the pants he just bought at the department store. Wanting to make a comparison. Let's see if it's really as Chinigo said. After comparison. Both pairs of pants, whether in workmanship or materials used, are exactly the same. At this time, a crowd had gathered in front of Chinigo's stall to watch the excitement. A beautiful woman was accusing Chinigo angrily. How dare you say this is a knockoff? Isn't it identical? They're selling it for 44, and you're selling it for 110. Are you being too greedy? The beautiful woman's words ignited the anger of the people around. Everyone angrily accused Chinigo of being a profiteer. It seems this kid's business is not going to last. At this moment, Chinigo's mind is completely blank. All the money he used to wholesale the loudspeakers was borrowed. If he can't sell them, how will he repay the money? But who can he blame? Zhou Yufeng has already taken in everything in front of the booth. At this moment, he didn't feel happy because he had successfully retaliated against Chinigo. Instead, he fell into contemplation. The selling price of 44 yuan. Previously, he bought it from Ashyang at 45 yuan. It seems that the upstream company of Ashyang has begun to enter the market directly, and a familiar figure appeared before the male lead's eyes. It was his ex-wife, Jiang Xiaoduo, a future business tycoon who unexpectedly traveled back to the year 1983. She had intended to travel back to the year 2020 once again, but found himself madly in love with the wife of this body. Let's see how Zhou Yufeng goes against the tide in this era, and creates his own business empire. After work, Jiang Xiaoduo happened to pass by the night market, and overheard someone discussing the news that the night market had started selling gramophones again thought it was Zhou Yufeng who came back. But the man calling out in the horn shop is not Zhou Yufeng. He just looks familiar. A sense of emptiness swept over her again. Just as Jiang Xiaoduo lowered her head and prepared to go home, but she heard the familiar voice of Xiaoduo. Jiang Xiaoduo's body stiffened in place. Wasn't this the voice of the man she had been thinking about? She quickly turned her head and saw that the man in front of her was indeed Zhou Yufeng. A sense of grievance surged up in my heart. Xiaoduo, how did you come here? Zhou Yufeng smiled and asked. Jiang Xiaoduo remained silent, just nodded hard. Can you walk with me? Zhou Yufeng asked again. His voice was gentle. It sounded very comforting. Jiang Xiaoduo still didn't make a sound, just nodded more vigorously. The two walked aimlessly in the moonlight. Xiaoduo didn't speak. Frowning. This made the male protagonist a little worried. Is this little fool facing some problem? At this moment, Xiaoduo thought of Lu Rui. This guy is very hypocritical. In front of Xiaoduo's parents, he is a promising young man. But in front of himself, he is a quick-tempered person. This makes Xiaoduo a little scared. Seeing Xiaoduo not speaking, 
The male Li began to talk about the things that had happened these days without prompting. Yuna's exam went smoothly. She will come to Zhihai to study at the university in a few days. Younger brother Yujing is still very mischievous. Every day, he is out on the streets crazy with his little buddies. In a few years, the two older sisters probably won't be able to control him. Oh right, I'm making money now. I'm preparing to bring all my younger siblings to Zhihai City. Once the family is reunited, we won't be separated again. But Xiaoduo doesn't seem to like hearing these. During this time, Xiaoduo endured too much pressure. Most importantly, the fact that the male lead didn't tell her he was coming home made her feel abandoned. Tears have filled my eyes. Zhou Yufeng, why didn't you tell me about your return home? Hearing this, Zhou Yufeng finally understood why Xiaoduo was feeling low. It turns out that he has always been in her heart. This made him very happy. Then he took Xiao Duo's hand and ran forward quickly. He wanted to kiss this silly girl. The two of them ran into a small alley. It was quiet here, with no one to disturb them. Xiao Duo is also panting with exhaustion. Suddenly, Zhou Yufeng hugged Jiang Xiao Duo tightly. He loves this woman so much. His efforts have finally paid off, and Xiao Duo didn't refuse either. He himself has been loving this man in front of his eyes all along. Xiao Duo hugged the male lead shyly, afraid that he would disappear from her life. At night, a couple is embracing under the streetlight. After so many twists and turns, Zhou Yufeng and Jiang Xiaoduo finally got back together. The couple, who were forced to divorce, finally reconciled. As the saying goes, what one remembers in one's heart will be responded to. This time, no one can separate them. Looking at the gloomy Jiang Xiaoduo, Zhou Yufeng felt very distressed. So he asked softly, Xiaoduo, do you have something on your mind? Is it your family pressuring you again? If you feel upset, just tell me. But Xiaoduo didn't say anything. She didn't dare to tell the male lead about Lu Rui's bullying. Afraid that Zhou Yufeng would not be able to resist beating Lu Rui. In that case, there would be chaos at home again. Zhou Yufeng knows Xiaoduo very well. This girl has a lot on her mind. So, I didn't ask any further. Just talking about how good my speaker business is. It's already a business of 10,000 yuan. 10,000 yuan household. The conditions at home were already so bad that she couldn't believe it. She couldn't believe this was true. In addition, when the male lead said he only made two cents on a pair of pants, this silly girl actually believed it. Xiaoduo then confirmed again. Is this true? It's true. I earned over 18,000 from selling trumpets these days. I don't need to worry about money now. When Jiang Duo Duo heard this, she smiled happily. That's great. How about we go to the state-owned hotel tomorrow to celebrate? I just received my salary. I have over $28, Xiao Duo. I'm getting ready to buy a house in this city now. I won't let you rent with me anymore. In the future, I will earn more money. I won't let you live in hardship like before. I know you can't completely trust me now. I also know that I've caused you too much hurt before. But Xiao Duo, give me another chance. This time, I will definitely treat you well. Saying this, the male lead lifted Xiao Duo's chin. Xiao Duo, marry me. I swear I will be good to you. Hearing this, Xiao Duo was both moved and flustered. Moved because Zhou Yufeng has always loved her. Flustered because the house is still messy. Yufeng, please give me some more time. I'll go do my parents' work. The male lead readily agreed. After that, he sent Xiao Duo back home. As soon as Xiao Duo opened the door, she froze in place. She saw her older brother Jiang Mingming kneeling in front of their father. Front. The father, however, angrily assumed a boxing stance. Dad, don't worry. We haven't run out of money yet. At the sight of her husband about to get beaten up, Shui Woman quickly came to help out. Dad, don't worry. Originally, our plan was fine. But San Lu got a batch of loudspeakers from somewhere and started selling them for 44 yuan each. Zero. What woman said is right. I didn't explain it clearly just now. That guy is definitely doing this to attract attention. They won't be able to hold on for long before reverting to the original price. The young couple is continuously feeding Jian Yongwang the potion of infatuation. I wanted to temporarily cover up the failure of the investment. After all, the money invested has emptied this family's savings. Hearing this, Jian Yongwang could only sigh helplessly. The money has already been spent. We can only choose to trust the two of them. Then he turned and walked towards his own room, leaving behind a weakly spoken sentence. 
Both of you, don't mess around recklessly. Be steady and cautious. Watching his father's lonely figure, it made Jiang Mingming hate Qian Jin even more. He feels that all of this is Qian Jin's responsibility. Otherwise, he wouldn't have ended up like this. After crossing from the 21st century to the 20th century, Qian Shi's memory undoubtedly opened up the god's eye view for the male lead. In that era of extreme scarcity of resources, opportunities were everywhere. Just like the loudspeaker warehouse, to ordinary people, this was a reason to spend money. But in Zhou Yufeng's eyes, Chinese, this is an opportunity to make money in just one week's time. The male lead earned over 18,000 through the business at Laohu's warehouse. This also provided him with capital to venture into other businesses. As the saying goes, it's good to sit in the shade of a big tree. If you want to make further progress in the business field, the best way is to have a guide who is familiar with other industries. So, Zhou Yufeng thought of Su Guitao. This kid works at the Guanghai International Trade Company. Even though he was just a junior staff member, his connections were very extensive. So the male lead called Su Guitao. The two agreed on a meeting time. The next day, the male lead arrived at Su Guitao's house carrying fruits. These two get along very well. If they don't see each other for a few days, they can't help but exchange a few greetings. You phone. Your speaker business was too successful. It's a pity that you're not doing it now. To be honest, Brother Su, the speaker market has now been completely expanded. Everyone is competing with each other, and the prices are getting lower and lower, so I'm planning to hold a sales event. Do you remember the exhibition held at the Kyoto Agricultural Exhibition Hall in September 1979? Naturally, Su Guitao remembers it. After all, their company also participated in it. Although it was an agricultural exhibition, the things at the venue were quite diverse. There are all kinds of rare items. For example, the latest bicycle models, quartz watches, and DVD players, and so on. That exhibition can be said to have set a precedent. People everywhere also began to emulate it. What kind of fashion show? Children's product exhibition, furniture exhibitions, and so on. At this point, the male lead also begins to get to the point. This is also the purpose of his trip. Especially the import toy expo held in Shanghai in the 80s. The sales volume at that time was extremely impressive. The two of them became more and more friendly as they chatted. After knowing each other for a few days, they seemed like old friends who hadn't seen each other for years. They freely expressed their thoughts in this good atmosphere. Zhou Yufeng also let go of his guard and mentioned that they would hold the exhibition again next year. Hearing this, Su Guitao was very surprised, wondering how he knew something that even a public official like himself didn't know. Realizing she had slipped up, Zhou Yufeng quickly laughed it off. I'm just guessing, it may not be accurate. But fortunately Su Guitao didn't think much of it. The male lead then continued, The initial purpose of launching the sales conference was just to deal with the backlog of goods in the factory, although the income from holding a sales exhibition once exceeded the factory's sales for several years. But no one saw the subtlety in it. It wasn't until the 1980s that the sales exhibition gradually transformed from a quick means of clearing inventory into a high-end symbol. With the increasing consumption level of people, people began to crave new things from the outside world. This is also the fundamental reason why La Boca became popular. So, Suga, we can hold an exhibition and sale at the night market in this seaside city. With our previous experience and the current situation, we will definitely achieve great success. Upon hearing this, Su Guitao was somewhat surprised. This was a question he didn't dare to consider. Moreover, the process of conducting the exhibition is extremely complex. But these things are no problem at all for Zhou Yufeng. It is indeed a bit tedious. But if you have access to manufacturers, this matter becomes simple. As long as you find upstream sellers, negotiate with them regarding the exhibition. And considering the purchasing power of this city, the manufacturer will not refuse such a profitable thing. But Su Kuotao still feels somewhat unrealistic. Zhou Yufeng could only patiently persuade him. After all, the resources in Su Kuotao's hands are crucial. I wonder if the male lead's plan will proceed smoothly this time, Boss Wang once said. That Tsinghua and Peking University are nothing compared to boldness. After successfully making his first fortune, the male lead's appetite also grew bigger. Selling speakers can no longer satisfy his desire for quick profits. So, Zhou Yufeng found Su Guitao. He's ready to put all the money he earned before on the line. Play big. Our plan is divided into two steps. Step 1. First, 
increase the variety of products. This is the only way to attract more consumers. Step 2. Let's directly choose a clothing manufacturer with poor benefits. This is the only way to purchase goods at a low price. When selling, the price should be discounted. By leveraging the popularity of the trade fair, we can directly promote our clothing. At this point, Suguatao is completely at a loss. Where can we find such a large venue? And do you have the confidence to convince those old stubborn people? You don't need to worry about the venue. I rented a venue at the night market before. It's several hundred square meters. Definitely enough. And now we are helping the manufacturer clear the inventory. We all make money together. So they won't refuse. At this point, Suguatao was completely convinced. He slapped his thigh. Yu Feng, you are really amazing. I can't believe I didn't think of this earlier. I'll leave these matters to your arrangement. Afterwards, Zhou Yu Feng continued, Let's settle the score among us brothers. The cost of the manufacturer's purchase is split between us. The profit afterwards is also split between us. And doing business always involves risks. If we happen to incur losses carelessly, then we'll also share the losses. At this point, Su Guotao was already deeply impressed by Zhou Yufeng. He didn't expect the male lead to be so young and have such a well-thought-out plan and courage. Let's first draft a plan tonight. We'll gather information on the available product categories and the operating conditions of the manufacturers. Then, tomorrow we'll go talk to each of them. As for the type of clothing, women's wear will be the main focus for now. After all, being beautiful is a woman's nature. There is a saying. A woman's wardrobe always lacks one piece of clothing. The next day, the two brothers began their negotiation journey. On the way, Su Guotao kept introducing the operation and management style of the factory to Zhou Yufeng. This scene reminded me of when Su Guida and the male lead went to negotiate a collaboration with a plastic bag factory. At that time, Zhou Yufeng used his eloquence to deceive the factory manager of the plastic bag factory. He made the factory manager dizzy with his smooth talk. And as they left, he even freeloaded a box of packaging bags from them. Soon the two arrived at the first stop for negotiations, Xiaoxin Toy Factory. The decision to cooperate with the toy factory was carefully considered by the male lead. This way, it can attract the needed customers, and does not compete with the clothing. Kill two birds with one stone. Su Guotao used to cooperate with Xiaoxin Clothing Factory. The factory once produced a batch of meaningless empty dolls specifically for export. They were made for export. However, the foreign market didn't buy it at all. This also resulted in the toy factory losing a large sum of money. At this point, Zhou Yufeng stated the reason for their failure. It's because there's not enough cultural export. Void space. So, they don't buy it. The two of them walked and talked along the way. They soon arrived at the door of the office of the factory manager. How to achieve the highest return at the lowest cost. Now, please see how these two set up the situation. The person in front of them is the manager of the Xiaoxin Toy Factory. Shi Gang saw that the person knocking on the door was Su Guotao. He warmly greeted the teacher. Teacher, let me introduce a friend to you. This is the person in charge of the Jiangshui Clothing Factory. Zhou Yufeng, manager Zhou. He came this time mainly to discuss cooperation with you. As soon as he heard about the cooperation, Shirji Gang was very puzzled. How can this clothing factory and toy factory cooperate? It's totally unrelated. But after all, he's introduced by Su Guotao. This Su Guotao is the head of a state-owned enterprise, specializing in the management of import and export trade. We can't afford to offend him. So he warmly welcomed the two into the house. This Shirji Gang is also a straightforward person. While pouring water for the two, he inquired about how to proceed with the cooperation. At this time, Su Guotao said, Let Chief Shou tell you. So, Zhou Yufeng started chatting mode. Hello, Chief Shou. I am Zhou Yufeng, the person in charge of Jiangshui Clothing Factory. The main purpose of coming here today with Director Su is to discuss the organization of a sales exhibition in the city. Shi Gang frowned slightly. Is this exhibition something that can be easily arranged? Although there were doubts in his mind, he did not express them. The male lead continued. The purpose of organizing this exhibition is to help several toy factories in Guanghai City solve the problem of product backlog. At this moment, Shirji Gang poured a large pot of tea for the two of them. He invited them to sit down and talk slowly. Manager Zhou, you just mentioned about setting up a sales exhibition, but you sell clothing. The clothes and toys really don't match at all. We sell children's clothing. In a way, your toys are part of the concept too. 
they are all sold to children. So, by pairing them together, we can attract more customers, Director Zhou. I've also heard about the exhibition you mentioned, but they are all held in first-tier cities like Beijing and Shanghai. Can we do it in a second-tier city like ours by the sea? At this moment, the male lead confidently says, it's precisely because we haven't held one before. That's why we need to hold one even more. And it has to be a grand affair. We've already talked to several manufacturers, like Lushan Toys, Kangda Toys, Flower Toys, etc. The scene will definitely be grand at that time, although we cannot guarantee to clear the slow-selling toys all at once. But even if we handle half of them, it's fine. This way, the pressure on the factory to recover the funds will also be much smaller. Moreover, the inventory accumulated from unsold products is originally eliminated from the market. If we don't handle it promptly, the factory will be dragged down in the long run. Although the consumption power in Kyoto and Shanghai is strong, the competition is also fierce. So we can't sell in first-tier cities. We can only choose to hold the sales exhibition in this city by the sea. Upon hearing this, Director Sher nodded repeatedly in agreement, but he also asked his own biggest concern. What if we can't sell the products? To which Zhou Yufeng replied, This coastal city is also a major energy producer. The average monthly wage for residents has reached 100 renminbi. It's not a luxury item. Based on everyone's salary, they can afford it. So, you don't need to worry about this. As long as the promotion is in place, the more people we attract, the greater our sales volume will be, and the venue for our exhibition is located in the prime location of this seaside city. The night market next to Singleton Hotel is several hundred square meters big, and it's free for you. This woman is so bad, because she's jealous of others. He has always wanted to break up his best friend's family. Whenever he has the chance, he speaks ill of his best friend's husband. It's really a case of making friends unwisely. The exhibition plan really appealed to Shirji Gang. As the manager of the Xiaoxing Toy Factory, if we can clear out the unsold toys from previous years, it can be considered a great achievement. Seeing that Shizigang is already interested, the male lead continues to say, now that the venue is available, the products are also ready. Just check with the relevant department for approval procedures. Let Su Guotao handle this aspect. After all, he is more familiar with this aspect. Originally, the policy from above is to encourage companies to reduce inventory, so the approval process should not be difficult. At this point, Shirji Gang became worried again. People from the 80s are still relatively conservative in their thinking. He is mainly afraid that things won't work out, and it will affect his position as a factory director. But the current business operation is indeed not good. Even the workers' wages cannot be paid. If this continues, it will only lead to bankruptcy and reorganization. So Shizigang is very conflicted right now. But the male lead's next words dispelled his concerns. Director Sure, we have so many workers to support. When we encounter difficulties, we must take the lead in solving them. This statement completely dispelled Shirji Gang's concerns. Yeah. As the factory manager, you should consider the employees. So the two finally reached a cooperation. Later, Zhou Yufeng gave a meaningful look to Su Guotao indicating him to strike while the iron is hot. Let's set the time for signing the contract first. Old Su understands Director Sher's intentions very well. Come to our office to sign the contract in three days. We haven't seen each other for a long time. We should have a good drink when you come. That's it. The collaboration issue with the first toy factory was resolved. After that, they visited the Lushan Toy Factory, Kanda Toy Factory, and Huaduo Toy Factory successively. At the same time, Inside a state-owned hotel in Zhihai City, Shinzairin is hosting her own birthday party. The table is already full of people, except for a few classmates. Xiao Duo has also accepted Shinzairin's invitation. I don't know why. I feel a bit repulsed when I see Shinzairin. This woman has been trying to destroy the relationship between Xiao Duo and Zhou Yufeng. Xu Jun is also there. He's Shinzairin's number one follower. Over the years, he has received a lot of help from Shinzairin. Even his civil servant status was obtained through Shin Zirin's connections. This kid even relies on the officialdom when eating with everyone. There's a condescending feeling. It's as if only this can make him seem so powerful. At this time, Xu Jun said, I heard Zhou Yufeng has returned to his hometown of Lingxue. It seems this kid can't make it here. He should take a good look at himself in the mirror. His words were filled with sarcasm and disdain towards the male lead. His words have gained recognition from Shinzairin. These two people have a very poor impression of Zhou Yufeng. 
As long as there are other people present, the two of them will definitely speak ill of Zhou Yufeng. At this moment, Shen Ziren looked again at Xiao Duo. It's good that guy went back, so he won't bother Xiao Duo again. But what he doesn't know is, Zhou Yufeng and Jiang Xiao Duo had already made up long ago. What do you do if someone insults your family based on their own background? This woman in front of us only takes the chance to mock Jiang Xiaodua's husband. Little does she know that what goes around comes around. People like her are destined to meet a bad end. Just when the male lead is working hard to make money, busy and stressed out. His classmates, however, were holding a struggle session for him. Everyone was accusing Zhou Yufeng of various wrongdoings. It seemed as if they had some deep-seated hatred. Watching her former friends disparage her husband like this, Xiao Duo felt very sad. She really wants to tell everyone that she and the male lead have made up. It's unfair to say that Zhou Yufeng is in the wrong, but the atmosphere at the scene was too intense. She couldn't get a word in edgewise. It's Jia Pei Pei's turn to speak at this moment. That Zhou Yufeng is really despicable. When I bought bell bottoms from him, he didn't give me any discount at all. He said 110 yuan was already the lowest price, not a penny less. The same pants in the department store are only 44 yuan each. Shinziren, where could he give up the opportunity to defame the male lead? I've said before that Zhou Yufeng is not a good person. I told you not to buy it. Now you've been fooled, right? At this moment, Li De realized the crux of the problem. Zhou Yufeng sells for 110 bucks. Others sell for 44 bucks. So this kid can make at least 66 bucks per pair of pants. This can cover my one month's salary, if that's the case. Zhou Yufeng really has a business acumen. It seems we underestimated him. Just as the words fell, Xu Jun's laughter was heard. If he really makes money, he can still return to his hometown of Lingxue. He's just a pants-wearing guy making a small commission. The mocking laughter of the crowd made Xiao Duo very angry, but their usual relationship was very good, so he didn't act out. He could only close his eyes tightly, suppressing the anger in his heart. At this point, Zhu Jun continued saying, This money must have all been earned by the boss behind the scenes. With his bear-like appearance, where does he have such a good brain? If he could earn money, I could become the President of the United States. I reckon this kid is still in the dark. I thought the net price for the trumpet was 110. As soon as the words fell, a burst of laughter came from the state-owned hotel. At this point, Jiang Xiaoduo could no longer bear it. Everyone was disparaging her husband right in front of her. This is just too much. She stood up angrily. Shin Ziren watched as her best friend's emotions suddenly became so agitated. He quickly asked what was wrong. At this time, she didn't yet know that Zhou Yufeng and Jiang Xiaoduo had already made up. I heard Xiaoduo loudly announcing, I'm going to remarry Zhou Yufeng right away, if you dare to mock my husband again. I won't attend any more class reunions like this from now on. I won't allow anyone to hurt my husband. This statement is like a bolt from the blue. Everyone showed a surprised expression. They couldn't believe it was true. This group of people even thought that this couple had completely broken up. And the biggest reaction came from Shin Ziren. She is very angry now. Even her expression has become somewhat ferocious. You actually want to remarry that jerk? Jiang Xiaoduo, are you running a fever? Of course. I'm planning to remarry Yu Feng in a few days. We are going to resume our relationship immediately. You can't say that about her. Shin Ziren's emotions became even more agitated. Jiang Xiaoduo, are you crazy? Do you forget how Zhou Yufeng used to beat you? That jerk just gambles and drinks all day long. Finally, you got divorced. And now you want to go back? Are you out of your mind from being beaten? This woman has always wanted to break up her best friend's family. Such malicious behavior will certainly ruin their friendship and bring disaster upon herself. Facing the slander and accusations from her friends, Xiao Duo feels very heartbroken. She wanted to tell everyone that Zhou Yufeng has completely changed. But before Xiao Duo could explain the situation, Xin Ziren angrily clenched his fists. Perhaps because he was worried she would be hurt again. Or perhaps because Xiao Duo suddenly didn't listen to him. Anyway, Xin Ziren's next words will completely destroy the friendship between the two. Have you forgotten who cried and told me that Zhou Yufeng hit you back then? Your mother also ended up in the hospital because of these things. At this point, Shin Ziren's emotions had completely exploded. You are a big idiot with no brains. What's good about Zhou Yufeng who hides things? I kindly introduced Shu Jiang to you. She runs a taxi. What about you? You're just a divorce second-hand item. 
Who do you think you are to look down on others? At this moment, Shaoduo felt very wrong. Tears kept swirling in her eyes. She never expected her close friend to insult her like this. She really misses Zhou Yufeng. If he were here, he would never let himself be treated this way. But Shen Xiren still hasn't stopped hurting Xiao Duo. These words are like Shen Xiren's premeditated preparation. It's just taking advantage of this opportunity. Let's just say it together. Xiao Duo was completely disappointed in her former good girlfriend. At this point, there is no need to stay. As she watched Jiang Xiao Duo leave, Shen Xiren was somewhat shocked. But everything in front of her was caused by herself. So she felt too embarrassed to try to keep her. Xu Jun has always been supportive of Shen Xiren. After all, she is a protective umbrella for herself in the unit. So when she saw her old classmate leave, she showed no sympathy. Instead, they continued to insult the couple Jiang Xiaoduo and Zhou Yufeng. Not being a family, not entering the same door. The two of them are just a bunch of trash. If it weren't for you pulling me that day, I would have gone after Zhou Yufeng long ago. The author wants to say, just by the way the male lead holds the small chin. I estimate this kid will be begging for mercy in less than one round. Fans, do you remember when Zhou Yufeng beat up Hu Han before? At that time, that old guy was really beaten up. Tian Liang is still okay. He did not participate in slandering the male lead. He did not insult Xiao Duo. Instead, he suggested going to comfort her. At this point, Xu Jun started to show himself again. This scene is like a servant persuading his master to calm down. Naturally, today is your birthday. Don't let Jiang Xiaoduo, that fool, ruin your mood. The cake hasn't been cut yet. Quick, sit down and let's continue. But Shin Xiren is not in the mood for that. He turned around angrily and said, What kind of nonsense birthday? And then left in a huff. Watching Shin Xiren's departure. Everyone seemed somewhat at a loss. But luckily, he had settled the bill earlier. So everyone began to toast and chat. Without the slightest effect from the incident. There was no sense of embarrassment either. Meanwhile, the male lead and Su Guotao were heading to the next negotiation under the scorching sun. At this time, Zhou Yufeng was still in the early stage of entrepreneurship and couldn't afford a car. So we can only rely on bicycles for transportation. The negotiations with the previous few manufacturers went very smoothly. This has also greatly increased the confidence of the two. Now there's only one manufacturer left. If we can reach an agreement, we can organize the exhibition. At this point, the male Li breathed a sigh of relief. I believe we can settle the matter with this factory today. Do you know what the basic quality for becoming wealthy is? It's having courage. Daring to take risks. In order to accumulate substantial wealth in a short period of time, the male Li is ready to take a risk. Things are going very smoothly. Zhou Yufeng and Su Guotao have negotiated with six toy factories. After that, they set off on their way back, although very tired. The results are very satisfying. After all, this is helping these few factories clear their inventory, and they don't even need to pay for the factory site fees, so they have no reason to refuse. Next, we need to continue negotiating with the clothing factory. If we can reach an agreement, then half of the job will be done. The next day, the two of them arrived at the Jiangshui clothing factory. It used to be one of the top domestic factories, but because the thinking was not progressive enough, coupled with overcapacity, resulted in a large number of unsold clothes. This situation was relatively common in that era. Director Jiang This is the Zhou Yufeng I mentioned to you before. He is the biggest private entrepreneur in this city. He can help your factory deal with the previously unsold clothing, because he was introduced by Su Guotao. So Jiang Dei did not question the identity of the male lead. But some are also surprised that this young man in front of us has achieved such great success in business at such a young age. Zhou Yufeng also showed great humility, modestly said. I dare not, I dare not. Just doing some small business. I dare not say the largest self-employed person. After that, he entered the main topic. Director Jiang, Minister Su mentioned you specifically before. We need to understand the situation of your factory before we can collaborate. Can you tell me approximately how many unsold clothes you had before? Jiang Da and Lu revealed a pensive expression. From last winter until now, there have been over 6,000 pieces. The male lead then asked. How many women's styles are there? There are about 5,000 women's styles. Because of different categories, the prices also vary. Currently, there are three styles of women's clothing that are not selling well. The wholesale prices are 8 to 10 yuan for different grades, compared to the bell-bottom pants the male lead made before. 
This price is already quite cheap. But after all, it's unsold clothing, so the price still needs to be negotiated. Later, Jiang De and Bei led the two to the warehouse. You guys go ahead and look around first. Afterward, I went to pour water for the two of them. Looking at the costumes that came into view, Zhou Yufeng already had a rough idea in his mind. The style is conventional. Clearly can't keep up with the trends. The feeling of wearing it is also very rough. Just like touching a burlap sack. Wearing such clothes would not be comfortable. But there are advantages. That's good quality. Zhou Yufeng fell into contemplation. No wonder it's not selling well. But he still has confidence. No matter what the item is. Each has its corresponding consumer group. At this point, Jiang Dei had already walked over with two cups of water. How is it boss Zhou? How does it look, Director Jiang? I want all 5,000 unsold women's clothing. The rest can be forgotten. When Jiang De and Shun heard this, their eyebrows raised instantly. This guy is so ruthless. He knew that this batch of clothes had already been phased out by the market. Later, he said 7 yuan for each item, but Zhou Yufeng didn't buy it. Director Jiang, this price is a bit too high. It's really difficult for me to accept this pricing. At this moment, Jiang Dei mentioned manager Zhou. Although this batch of clothes is not selling well, the quality is very good and is deeply loved by the common people. I know everything you said. It's because the quality is too good. One piece of clothing can be worn for several years, so the sales volume is not good. And currently, new products are constantly emerging in the market. It's already very difficult for clothing like this to gain a foothold in the market. We are taking a great risk by cooperating with you this time, so this price won't work. A successful merchant must be cunning and deceitful. The male lead is especially proficient in this, so he begins to list many flaws of the product, forcing the manufacturers to lower prices. Director Jiang, the spandex produced in your factory, is made of poor quality material, so the comfort of wearing it is very low. Moreover, there are all kinds of new products on the market currently. This style is already outdated and can't keep up with the trend, although the expectations of the domestic people for clothing are increasing. But you are already outdated after all. So it's difficult to have a place in the market. If I'm not mistaken, the unsold products in your factory have been increasing year by year. Are the products in the warehouse piling up more and more? These words made Jiang to break out in a cold sweat. The young man in front of them, relying solely on reasoning, understood the situation in the factory clearly. His original intention of tricking Zhou Yu into the wind has now changed. At this point, the male lead continued to talk about Director Jiang. Indeed, the situation of clothing manufacturing will only get worse year by year. If this continues, your factory is very likely to be dragged down by this vicious cycle. At this moment, Director Jiang fell into contemplation. I used to naively believe that Jiaoyang's sales would still bring in good numbers. But what this young man is saying does make a lot of sense. After that, he stopped being so stubborn and started seeking advice from the boss, Mr. Zhou. Indeed, Jiaoyang used to be the flagship style of our factory. Sales are excellent. But why has it become so poor in recent years? At this point, Zhou Yufeng responded. Indeed, when Liang first appeared on the market, it was relatively trendy, and the quality was also very good, so the common people are very receptive to it. Plus, buying your clothing doesn't require a ticket. You give money and they sell it, and anyone can purchase goods. So at that time, sales were extremely high. But the market is ever-changing, with new products vying to be first. Indeed, good roots simply cannot compete. Consumers won't buy it, won't buy into it. At this time, Jiang De is full of question marks. Although it is true that the sales of Liang have indeed dropped sharply, it's not as serious as this young man is saying. Is this kid deceiving himself? At this moment, Zhou Yufeng released Wang Jia. The non-ticket system that has been in place for 30 years will be completely invalidated on December 1st of this year. The clothing industry will undergo a major transformation. When this statement was made, both Jiang Dei and Su Gu Tao were left with their mouths wide open. If the non-ticket system is invalidated, then the environment that Baoqi relies on for survival will no longer exist. By then, various clothing factories will quickly rise. People will no longer need to purchase clothing through scalpers. Their choices will also become more diverse. Jiang De and you are getting more and more afraid. Their factories are about to face an unprecedented impact. He was extremely frightened by this. Seeing Jiang Dei's condition, Zhou Yufeng was very satisfied. It seems that his plan has worked very well. Then he gestured to Su Guotao. 
Old Su understood immediately. Later, he said to Jiang Dei, Old Jiang, the news from Manager Zhou is true. We just received the news not long ago. But for now, this news is still top secret. So you mustn't tell anyone else. Otherwise, you will be subject to legal sanctions. Zhou Yufeng also took the opportunity to strike while the iron was hot. Integrate the above situation and go straight to the factory director. The price of 7 yuan is really too high. If you don't lower the price, then I'll wait until next year to ask again. Su Guotao quickly came over to help. Lao Jiang, 5,000 items is not a small number. Our relationship is so good. When Mr. Zhou said he wanted to buy clothes, I thought of you first. At this point, Jiang De and are in a dilemma. The price of 7 yuan is already very low, and he doesn't want to lower it further. But Zhou Yufeng's analysis just now makes a lot of sense. If the cloth tickets are really cancelled, the impact on the factory will be devastating. In addition, these unsold products will make the factory beyond redemption. He didn't dare to gamble, so Jiang De compromised. He turned to look at this young man. Boss Zhou, then you name a price. This man relied on being a business elite in his past life. After the rebirth, he began to madly accumulate wealth. He made a fortune for himself, while others ended up with nothing. Under the deceptive tactics of Zhou Yufeng, Jiang Dei, who was duped, let the male lead set a price. In this situation, the male lead wouldn't hesitate, so he raised the dragon-slaying sword once again. He reached out with a big hand. The price of four dollars was unacceptable to Jiang Dei. He didn't expect that the person introduced by Lao Su would be so unscrupulous. He slashed himself on the waist with one stroke. Even Lao Su was scared out of his wits. Cold sweat. Thinking in his heart, this Zhou Yufeng is quite ruthless. He directly cut the wholesale price in half for others. This price has also been carefully calculated by the male lead. The cost of clothing alone is more than two dollars. Plus labor, machinery, and so on. Indeed, four dollars is already a loss. But the core of business is to find ways to maximize one's profit. Although some take advantage of others' misfortunes, the business world is just that cruel. Jiang De and I understand this in our hearts. It's because these products are outdated and can't be sold. That's why this guy dares to lower the price so much. If you don't agree, these clothes will just sit in the warehouse gathering dust. And currently, the factory's business situation is not good. Although it's operating at a loss, at least it can help the factory recoup some losses. After giving it some thought, the factory director agreed. 5,000 women's clothing items, a total of 20,000 yuan, must be paid in full. Zhou Yufeng, in order to achieve the goal, readily agreed. As the sun sets in the west, it's as if celebrating a victory. The sky reflected a fiery cloud. At this moment, Zhou Yufeng was in a very good mood. Even his steps became much brisker. Everything at the factory has been settled. Tomorrow I'll go to the relevant department to pick up the approval documents. But Su Guotao has been frowning the whole time. The cost of this purchase is shared by both of us. 10,000 yuan per person. This is all his savings. And it was also secretly taken out by the people in this house. He is very afraid in his heart. If it's not successful, it's estimated that his wife will divorce him. Yu Feng, this time we've gone too far. These clothes are not only outdated but they have been stuck for so long. Bro, I have no confidence in this. Suga hasn't shown up for work. We have already paid the money. The most important thing now is to discuss the exhibition with the head of your unit. Su Guotao also knows that there's no use in worrying. We have to go ahead and make the appointment now. There's no turning back now. Then let's go all out with this young man. Although Su Guotao is a little scared now. But this is inevitable. In the future, he will understand how correct his original decision was. The next day, the two then arrived at Su Guotao's unit, Guenhai International Trading Company, with Su Guotao's connection. Things progressed very smoothly. They quickly obtained the approval for holding the sales exhibition. In the era of rapid economic development, Iron Rice Bowl, and took risks to start their own businesses. The most outstanding among them stood tall in the forefront of the times. Meanwhile, inside the department store by the sea, Shui Wenwen is in a very good mood, because Forefront has already adjusted the price of the Horn Warehouse, from the original 44 yuan to 110 yuan. This makes her feel fortunate. If the pricing of Forefront has always been 44 yuan, so he couldn't sell a single horn from his stockpile, but it seems like he celebrated too early. Point. How could that old fox just give up now? 
His goal is to bring down others. Then one family became dominant, so Shwe Wenwen's nightmare was far from over. The two families also formed an irreconcilable hatred because of this, in order to enhance her own prestige. This woman publicly humiliated her best friend. Friendship is simply worthless in her eyes. Ever since breaking ties with her best friend, Shin Xiren, Xiao Duo no longer hangs out with them. Zhou Yufeng is also busy with his own career, and has no time to invite her out. Xiao Duo is feeling a little worried now. She wants to tell her parents about making up with the male lead. But when she thinks of her father hitting her before, she can't help but feel scared, so she doesn't dare to speak up. Coupled with the fact that the pervert Lu Rui has been pestering her, it has made Xiao Duo extremely distressed. At this moment, the sound of the doorbell rang, and Xiao Duo's face instantly lit up with joy. It should be Lu Rui who has arrived. Xiao Duo, go open the door quickly. It's true that if you talk about Chao Chao, Chao Chao will arrive, although somewhat unwilling. It's not polite to turn someone away once they've arrived. So, Xiao Duo obediently went to open the door. When Lu Rui has nothing to do, she will come to Xiao Duo's house to show off. This makes her even more anti-party. So she wanted to take this opportunity to clarify things. After opening the door, she found that it wasn't just Lu Rui. Xin Xiren also came along. This surprised Xiao Duo a bit. The two of them were arguing fiercely just a few days ago. What is he doing here? At this moment, Shin Xiren said, I met Lu Rui downstairs. Then he went upstairs with him. What's wrong, Xiao Duo? Don't you welcome me? Xiao Duo didn't speak. He remembered Shin Xiren's angry eyes and the words he had said publicly to humiliate himself. His sudden visit made Xiao Duo have a bad feeling. What's wrong? Is Xiao Duo still mad at me? You're being too petty. Xiao Duo dared to say, No way. I'm not mad anymore. Come in quickly. After speaking, he turned sideways to let the guest in. At this time, the conversation in the living room was heard by Jianxin, who was cooking. Xin Xiren's uncle is a senior official at the ministry level, while Xiao Duo's father is just a section chief. They can't afford to offend this doctor. Jiang Xian dared to invite Xin Xiren to sit down. Later, Xiao Duo was asked to go wash the fruit for them. Even Xiao Duo's usually aloof father dared to step forward to greet them. Naturally, Xin Laoji, how is your health now? Uncle's body is still okay. He's just too busy. Running around all over the place. I don't get to see him at all. On the other hand, Xue Wenwen and Jiang Mingming are working hard to sell their own speaker inventory. It has been two months since they last opened. We must seize this opportunity. Boss, 110 yuan is too expensive. Can you make it cheaper? I'll take one if it's $100. Xue Wenwen said mysteriously. Pretty girl. I'll give you $100 to take one. But don't tell anyone. Otherwise, our business will be difficult. The pretty girl suddenly became happy. Don't worry, I definitely won't spread rumors. When I get back, I'll use the loudspeaker to broadcast. Watching the customers leave. Jiang Mingming is very happy. Invested a full 5,000 yuan. Finally seeing a return. Cost 50. Profit 50. More than his one month's salary. How could one not be happy? While Shue Wenwen appeared much calmer. Seeing Jiang Mingming being so pathetic, she couldn't help but say, Look at you, what a sight. It's just a few coins. My goal is to become a millionaire. Unlike you, this woman is preparing a feast for herself. The guests are coming to the house with false faces. The seemingly harmonious atmosphere will soon turn into a storm attacking oneself. Half an hour later, everyone gathered together and prepared to have dinner. Jiang Yongguang was very attentive constantly serving more dishes to Shin Xiren, while Shin Xiren just smiled and looked at everyone, Uncle Jiang. Actually, the main reason I came this time is to tell you all something. Jiang Yongguang was somewhat puzzled. He wondered if it was because Shin Xiren's uncle, the provincial governor, wanted to promote him. Uncle, you also know that Xiao Du and I have a very good relationship. I have always treated her as my own younger sister. The last time we had dinner together, Xiao Du said he is now preparing to remarry Zhou Yufeng. Do you guys know about this? Jian Yongguang, upon hearing this, instantly flew into a rage. With a fierce look in his eyes, he glared at Xiao Du. He questioned whether what Shen Xiren said was true, and even a small gamble was very shocking. He didn't expect Shen Xiren to be so ruthless, actually coming to his own home and his own bed. Xiao Du's mother herself has heart disease. She can't handle any stimulation. After hearing this news, his face became even more unsightly. 
Lu Rui, on the other hand, looked at Xiaodu with a smirk on his face. This guy really looks down on Xiaodu. He always thought of her as a woman who had been married before. But he was also attracted by Xiaodu's beauty. Jiang Yongguang is now so angry that he's shaking all over. He clearly stated that. His daughter absolutely cannot have any connection with her ex-husband. Jian Xiaodu, explain to me what's going on. Why are you still in contact with that man? Are you so shameless? The more Lu Rei sees Xiaodu being bullied, the more excited he gets. At this point, he's ready to turn up the heat. Uncle Jiang, there's something I've been holding inside for a long time. Last time Jiang Yi asked me to pick up Xiao Du for him, but I saw Xiao Du with her ex-husband instead. They were very intimate. Acting lovey-dovey in front of many people, this was like the final straw that broke Jiang Yongguang's back. His body trembled more and more violently. Finally, Jiang Yongguang erupted. You actively stick to trash like Zhou Yufeng. Who was the one who called me crying about being beaten up by Zhou Yufeng? And now you dare to be unclear with him. Where should I put my old face? Seeing father's emotions getting more and more agitated, Xiao Du hurriedly explained. It's not like that. Yu Feng has changed. He's made a lot of money selling bell-bottom pants now, and I feel disgusted as soon as I see Lu Rui. During dinner, he kept trying to take advantage of me. He's just a hypocrite. Before Xiao Du finished speaking, Jian Yongguang slapped over. It's countless times that he has gambled. He called the male lead garbage. But what about his own behavior? This slap was very powerful. A small bet led to an unstable posture, and he fell over. Shin was also shocked to see this scene. He didn't expect Jiang Yongguang's hand to be so ruthless, directly sending Xiao Du flying. At this point, Xiao Du's whole face was swollen from the beating. Blood was also oozing from the corners of his mouth. He felt extremely disheartened. The betrayal of his best friend, Lu Rei's harassment. In addition to Jiang Yongguang's beating, these things made him tremble with pain. This woman is pretending to be dead, just because she wants to stop her daughter from getting married, to express her dissatisfaction. She protested by lying down. Ever since her best friend exposed the privacy of the small gambler, the small gambler has been completely chaotic. Jian Yongguang even ruthlessly slapped the small gambler, seeing his favorite daughter being hit. The heart attack also struck Jiangxi's excited heart. He fell to the ground, convulsing in pain. Enduring the intense pain on his face, Xiaodu crawled to his mother's side. He knew well that his mother's heart disease was very serious. Combined with Jiangxin's fragile personality, it made the situation even more dire. He was very afraid that his mother would fall and couldn't get up. After that, the Jiang family became even more chaotic. Everyone rushed to take Jiang Xian to the hospital in a panic. Outside the emergency room, Jiang Mingming inherited Jiang Yongguang's mantle, continued to scold Xiaodu for gambling. Why do you have to be with that useless Zhou Yufeng? Are you only willing to let mom die of anger? Xiaodu is feeling helpless now. Clearly he hasn't done anything. Is it wrong for me to pursue my own happiness? Seeing Xiaodu gambling without a word, Jiang Mingming scolding more vigorously, even starting to blame Xiaodu. I'm telling you, it's because of you that your mother got sick in this lifetime. Jian Yongguang also believes that all of this is caused by gambling. He completely ignored why Shen Zirin suddenly appeared at home. At this point, Jian Yongguang's expression changed again. He began to beg Xiaodu to leave Zhou Yufeng. This kind of love for children is really a burden, and his change of heart is too sudden. At this point, Xiaodu starts to defend the male lead. Yufeng has really changed. He's no longer idle and aimless. He started working hard to earn money. At this moment, Jiang Yongguang became fierce again. Do I have to kneel down for you to agree? Do you have to break up this family before you stop? Seeing his father so agitated, Xiao Du knelt in front of Jiang Yongguang, said with a tearful voice, Dad, Yu Feng is doing well now. He's working very hard. I love him very much too. Please don't force me anymore, okay? At this moment, Jiang Yongguang glared angrily at his daughter. I'm forcing you. When did I force you? Is what you're saying even human language? Then he pointed at the wall and said, Your mother is still being rescued. Who is forcing whom in the end? At this moment, the small bed is like a knife in the heart. On one side are the parents who raised me. On the other side is the man I love the most. Finally, he made a difficult decision. From now on, cut ties with Zhou Yufeng. From now on, we'll go our separate ways. We'll never see each other again. Looking at my daughter who has already compromised, and Jiang Yongguang who has achieved his goal. 
the emotions gradually eased. Meanwhile, to celebrate the smooth progress of their business plan, Zhou Yufeng and Su Guotao went to the state-run hotel for a big meal. All the participating manufacturers in the trade fair have now reached agreements. The permit for holding the exhibition has also been obtained. As long as the manufacturer sends the goods, the sales exhibition can start immediately. At this time, Su Guotao suggested taking the male lead to go shopping tomorrow. After all, the manufacturer is still arranging the goods. There was still time, but it was rejected by Zhou Yufeng. He really misses Jiang Xiaoduo now. At this time, he still doesn't know about Xiaoduo's family situation. If he knew that Xiaoduo had changed her mind, how sad he would be. This man thinks he has mastered the code to wealth, unaware that he has already fallen into someone else's trap. The business world is like a battlefield. One wrong step could be irreparable. Ever since listening to Zhou Yufeng's words, Chinigo borrowed money to purchase a large batch of loudspeakers. He had no idea that he had fallen into the trap set by the male lead. But who can be blamed for this? Initially, he relied on his identity as a night market supervisor to bully Zhou Yufeng. He even threatened not to reveal the source of the goods and forced the male lead to leave the night market. However, Zhou Yufeng was not the type to be beaten without making a sound. He deliberately concocted a dream of getting rich for Chinigo to avenge the bullying he had suffered in the past. At this time, the male lead's business has been growing rapidly. He has successfully convinced suppliers to provide goods to him. He also obtained the approval to hold an exhibition. After that, he hurried back to the seaside city overnight to prepare for the upcoming exhibition. On the other side, Chinigo was looking worriedly at the speakers in front of him. He bought them at 50 yuan each. But the department store sells them for only 44 yuan each. At this moment, Zhou Yufeng also greeted him. Chinigo turned his head fiercely. In an instant, he was burning with anger. It's been so long and I haven't sold anything. It's all because of this kid in front of me. Zhou Yufeng, how dare you come here? I was just looking for you to settle the score. What do you mean? Are you deliberately trying to trick me, Mr. Chin? Mr. Chin, you're the big boss of this night market. How dare I? How's it going? Have you struck it rich now? Upon hearing this, Chinigo became even more furious. This kid dares to mock me. So he punched him. But he was no match for Zhou Yufeng. You see, the male lead is best at fighting. Then, Zhou Yufeng pushed forward. Chinigo ended up like a turtle, legs up in the air. Now Chinigo harbors deep hatred towards Zhou Yufeng. But he can't win in a fight or in an argument. Leaving him shaking with rage, Zhou Yufeng dared to push me, you mother of asterisk 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 -er. Do you still want to set up a stall at the night market in the future? Believe it or not, I'll have someone kill you. But the male lead is not afraid of his threat at all. Boss Qing, you're wrong to say that. We have a leasing contract. It's clearly written in black and white. If you talk nonsense again, I'll call the police. At this point, Chinigo has completely lost his sanity, roaring in anger. Today, I won't let you get away with it. I'd like to see what you can do to me. This statement hit Zhou Yufeng right in the chest. He had long expected Chinigo to say this. Immediately he shouted to the crowd, Comrades, this Chinigo is using his position as a night market supervisor too. He actually tore up the contract and didn't let me set up a stall. And Chinigo didn't even try to explain himself. Instead, he continued arrogantly saying, I just won't let you set up. Let's see what you can do to me. The male lead, having achieved his goal, turns around and leaves. We've said enough? This guy will probably be fired soon. After that, Qin Boss also indirectly implicates him for selling the speakers at a high price earlier. Mr. Qin really doesn't hold back on old grudges. At least I worked for you before. Qin Ego immediately retorted. When did I work for you? At this time, he still didn't know that his career was likely about to be over. A smart brain doesn't grow hair, just like the old man in front of us. Although his hairline is moving towards the back of his head, it also proves that he is very smart. After leaving the night market, Zhou Yufeng headed towards the Industrial and Commercial Bureau. On one hand, he needs to handle the registration for the exhibition. On the other hand, he needs to completely drive Chinigo out of the night market. Speaking of which, this Chinigo has really gone too far. Not only does he snatch other people's sources of goods, but he also resorts to violence. No wonder the male lead had to rush into the kill zone. Zhou Yufeng was just about to go in, but was stopped by a security guard. 
Comrade, what's the matter? You can't just come in here. This is the Bureau of Industry and Commerce. The male lead in classical costume took out the prepared letter of introduction. Information was too closed off in those times, so it definitely wouldn't work without this. The security guard took the letter of introduction and began to read it carefully. After a brief explanation by Zhou Yufeng, they were allowed to pass. An old man with gray hair is reading a newspaper in the office. Paper. From the receding hairline on the back of his head, we can tell that. After all, a smart brain doesn't grow hair. Zero. This person is the director of the Bureau of Industry and Commerce. At this time, Zhou Yufeng walked in. His attitude was very humble. Director Lu, I am Su Guotao's cousin. I'm here to file for the exhibition. Director Lu was also very enthusiastic. After all, at that time, there was a lot of encouragement for everyone to start their own businesses. Young man, hurry up and get it done. I'll call Director Zhang over. I'll have him take you to the night market later to explain the situation. As for how many days the trade fair will last, it depends on your requirements. We will try to accommodate as much as we can. Zhou Yufeng did not expect things to go so smoothly. While expressing his gratitude, he also seemed hesitant to speak. He is already prepared to teach Qin's dog a lesson. After Director Lu saw the expression of the male lead, she asked, What's wrong? Do you have any other difficulties that we can help with? Ashamed, ashamed. There is actually something I'd like to tell you. I've already rented a space at the night market, and it's already been provided free of charge to the participating businesses. Can we waive the exhibition fees? When Director Lu heard this, exhibition fees. What exhibition fee? The Bureau of Commerce has never had this requirement. At this point, the male lead continued, Chinigo, who manages the night market, said it must be paid. He said that money must be paid for holding an exhibition in the night market. Twenty bucks a day. Director Lu was furious at the words. What? Our industrial and commercial bureau has never collected this fee, and it's twenty bucks a day. The male lead saw that the timing was about right, and spoke again. I have always paid on time. But Chinigo is very assertive, and insists on payment. And he also said that this money is ultimately paid directly to you. It's you who collected this fee. Someone said they want to mess with my kidneys, so that I can't take care of myself. Chief Lu, you have to stand up for me. Zhou Yufeng demonstrated what happened today in a grayish manner. Of course, the matter of beating up Qin's dog naturally needs to be skimmed over. One must never speak of anything that is detrimental to oneself. The male lead was seen pretending to wipe tears while saying, Qin Igo even said he wanted to mess with my kidneys and leave me unable to take care of myself. He also said you are his cousin. At this point, Director Lu was already extremely angry. He slammed the table hard, causing me to stand up in pain. Director Lu is a very upright person. With over 40 years of experience, he has received high praise. But now he has been slandered by a small night market manager. Xiao Zhou, don't be afraid. I don't even know this person. Even if you know me, I will never condone it. Don't give him a single cent. This is my decision for you. At this time, Director Zhang also entered the room. It was the first time he had seen the old leader so upset. Xiao Zhang. There is a night market supervisor named Chinigo. That kid abuses his power. He's always taking bribes, and he even threatened to beat someone up. One person gets two of those things. He said to fight, so just fight. Then he waved his hand. You go and open that kid for me right now. A small rat's mess has really ruined everything. And also, visit all the vendors at the night market and see how much money they have cheated others out of in private. See exactly how much money they have swindled. When you tally it up, don't let them off lightly. Director Zhang quickly replied, Rest assured, I will immediately inform the people at the Ministry of Public Security. We will handle this matter tonight. On the other side, Chinigo is still setting up his stall in the night market, completely unaware of the impending disaster. At this moment, the male lead called out to him from behind, Boss Chin, how's business? When Chinigo turned around, he saw that it was Zhou Yufeng, immediately changed his attitude. You dare to come here, kid? Didn't I tell you already? As long as I'm here, you're not allowed to set up a stall. Can't you understand human language? The male lead did not respond. It's him. It's him. What does that mean? Is this an introduction to a potential partner for me? Then a hand firmly grabbed his arm. Chinigo was shocked and turned pale. He wondered who had the audacity to dare to touch his pure body 
he suddenly turned his head. This scared him, and his face turned pale. With a left and right finger, two police officers had already subdued him. Don't move. We have received a report from the public. You are now suspected of crimes such as trafficking in human organs. I advise you to be honest. If there is any resistance, we have the right to use force to subdue you. And that's how Chinigo was taken away. The crowd discussed, saying that he deserved the punishment. At this time, Zhou Yufeng still hadn't forgotten to provoke Boss Qin. What about the bell bottoms on your stall? Do you want me to help you sell them at a low price? Chinigo stared fiercely at the male lead, as if he wanted to eat him. It's obvious that he hates Zhou Yufeng now. But what can he do now? After handling Chinigo's matter, the male lead also breathed a sigh of relief. Now there are no obstacles to starting the exhibition. Zhou Yufeng has one more crucial thing to do. He needs to go see his beloved right away. After buying some fruit, he gets ready to wait downstairs at Xiao Duo's house. But what he doesn't know is, Xiao Duo's whole family is trying to stop the reunion of the couple. Under the pressure, Xiao Duo couldn't hold on and completely compromised. Completely compromised. When returning from a business trip, he found his beloved's attitude becoming extremely cold. He had planned to surprise her. But it's like getting cold water poured on hot face. At this moment, Xiao Duo is preparing dinner for her mother. Believing that heart disease is also an old problem. Usually no one in the family dares to make her angry. This time, her mother fell ill again because of her own affairs. This made Xiao Duo feel extremely guilty. Just as Xiao Duo had just walked downstairs, a hand suddenly reached out from the darkness and pulled her into an embrace. It was Zhou Yufeng. At this moment, the male lead is breathing in the familiar scent of his lover's body. His heart suddenly feels much calmer. Xiao Duo, I'm back. I missed you so much. But at this point, Xiao Duo has already agreed with her family to break ties with the male lead. Then she angrily said, Zhou Yufeng, what are you doing? Let go quickly. Afterwards, she broke free from the male lead's embrace and loudly questioned, Didn't you see what I was holding in my hand? Daring to hug me in front of everyone. How audacious. After saying that, he turned around and prepared to leave. Zhou Yufeng was stunned. Why is Xiao Duo suddenly so cold to herself? We had agreed to remarry before, hadn't we? Could it be that she's changed her mind again? Watching Xiao Duo walking alone ahead, Zhou Yufeng quickly caught up with her. Could it be because I've been too busy lately? And neglected her? Xiao Duo, where are you going now? Why are you holding a rice bowl? Xiao Duo, say something. But Jiang Xiaoduo continued to walk forward on her own, completely ignoring the male lead. This road is very familiar to Zhou Yufeng. It's very close to where he sets up his stall. Keep going and you'll reach the hospital. So he asked if someone at home was sick. But Xiaoduo's attitude was very cold. What does it have to do with me? Just take care of yourself. Then he continued walking forward. At this moment, the male lead says, What is it that you want to tell me? Is there something wrong with your family? Losing your temper like this won't solve any problems. But Xiao Duo completely ignores Zhou Yufeng. This made her very angry. Suddenly, she became very upset with her own attitude. It's really torturous. Afterwards, she quickly ran forward and grabbed Jiang Xiaodu's arm. He said angrily, What the heck is going on? Say something, will you? But Xiaodu's attitude remains icy cold. Without the slightest change. Innocently, she thought this would make Zhou Yufeng give up on her. Then... Another hand opened and grabbed her arm. She said loudly, Take your hand off. This time, the male lead was really scared. He had never seen Xiao Duo treat herself this way. He was very afraid of losing the woman in front of him. So he stood there, staring at her dumbfounded. But Xiao Duo also had her reasons. Her pressure mainly came from home. She's worried that if she continues to date the male lead, her mom will really be angered to death by herself. Zhou Yufeng, you wait for me here. Don't follow me. I'll tell you what happened after I come back. Watching the distant background as Xiao Duo leaves, the male lead is extremely despondent. He has a very bad feeling now. He feels like he's likely to lose her. But there's nothing he can do now. Can only wait quietly at the hospital entrance, waiting for Xiao Duo to give herself an explanation. The girl's parents despise the man's poor family background and heartlessly break them up. The father slapped the girl. The mother's reaction is to cry, make a scene or commit suicide. The male lead, who works hard outside, couldn't wait to find his lover after returning home. But at this time, Xiao Duo, under pressure from her family, 
has already decided to give up this relationship. After a big argument between the two of them, Xiao Duo went to the hospital to visit her sick mother. At this moment, her body began to tremble uncontrollably. Why? Why can't she be with the one she loves? Don't I have the right to pursue happiness? At this point, tears couldn't help but flow. She was very sad. How much pain must this poor girl be feeling? By now, Xiao Duo had already wiped away her tears. She is very sensible. She doesn't want her mother to worry about her. She came to her mother's sickbed with freshly cooked porridge in her hands. Her spirits have recovered very well. Her body is no longer in pain. Her mood today is very good. Because she has achieved her goal of breaking up her daughter, watching her mother's good appetite, Xiao Duo is ready to leave. Zhou Yufeng is still waiting for her at the hospital door, but she stopped Xiao Duo with her heart. She was worried that her daughter would soften her heart, worried that she would be with Zhou Yufeng again. This time she must completely sever the relationship between them. It's as if she has met her mother and wants to say something. Xiao Duo just wants to leave quickly now. As a daughter, she cannot resist her parents. But that doesn't mean she doesn't have her own thoughts. At this moment, she spoke her mind. Xiao Duo, mom just said two things. You must remember to keep your promise to me. Absolutely cannot have any contact with Zhou Yufeng. When I think of the past when Zhou Yufeng hit you, mom gets really anxious. Silly girl. Only you would forgive her time and time again. Xiao Duo wants to explain. She wants to say that the male lead has changed. Now she is very good to herself. And she has also started to work hard to earn money. But her parents already have a deep-rooted impression of Zhou Yufeng. No matter how she explains, they won't listen. Xiao Duo can only promise not to entangle with that man anymore. After seeing her daughter's attitude, let go of your heart completely. In her heart, Xiao Duo is still an ignorant child who needs to take care of everything by herself. After leaving the ward, Jiang Xiaoduo finally let go of her disguise. Tears streak across the cheeks. The body couldn't help but tremble. Although the previous Zhou Yufeng was at fault. But Xiaoduo has always deeply loved this man. Why can't the family give him a chance? Xiaoduo is in great pain and feels very helpless. Thinking about breaking up completely with the man she loves in a while makes her unbearably sad. Meanwhile, Zhou Yufeng is still waiting for her lover at the hospital entrance. She doesn't understand why Xiao Duo has suddenly become so distant towards her. I can only guess that someone in her family is sick. Maybe it's because she's worried about her family that she's acting this way. At this point, Xiao Duo couldn't come out. The male lead couldn't wait to start asking. Xiao Duo, is it your mother who's hospitalized? But Jiang Xiao Duo just said lightly. Let's talk as we walk. Looking at her lover's indifferent expression. A sense of foreboding also arose. The marriage partner suddenly backs out. After investing so much emotion, it ultimately ends in disappointment. The male lead can only turn grief and indignation into motivation, and do his best to advance his career. A real man doesn't worry about having no wife. Xiao Duo, who had just left the hospital, saw Zhou Yufeng, but didn't stop. She continued walking forward. The male lead quickly caught up, afraid that this woman would disappear from his sight. Zhou Yufeng. Since we got divorced, our fate has come to an end. Don't bother me anymore in the future. The male lead was stunned. He didn't understand why his loved one suddenly said this. We had agreed to remarry before you went on the business trip. At this moment, Xiao Duo continued, Yufeng. Thank you for never giving up on me. And for being so good to me. I really can't do it this time. This matter came too suddenly for Zhou Yufeng. So he grabbed Jiang Xiaodu's arm and kept asking why Yu Feng. Shin Xiren came to my house and told my parents about our situation. My mother was so angry that she was admitted to the hospital directly. My father was also very upset about this. They both can't accept me at all. How can we still be together? Hearing this, the male protagonist quickly said, Xiao Duo, I'm a millionaire now. And I've also closed the deal. The male lead understands in his heart. It's because the previous Zhou Yumiao treated Jiang Xiaoduo badly. That's why his parents are so opposed. But Xiaoduo seemed to have no patience to listen to him anymore. She shook off the hand holding on to hers, and then said, Even if your business is big, it's just an epiphany. I can't defy my parents. Don't think about it anymore in the future. After saying this, he left without looking back. Only Zhou Yufeng remained standing in place feeling dazed. He really wanted to tell Jiang Xiaoduo that he was a time traveler. The former Zhou Yufeng, who treated him badly, 
is already dead. The things that hurt him were not done by himself. But who would believe these words when spoken? If spoken out loud, Shaoduo might think she's crazy. Making this decision was also very painful for Jiang Shaoduo. She is just like Zhou Yufeng. She also deeply loves each other, but her family's attitude makes it impossible for her to refuse, even though it's very uncomfortable in terms of emotions. But the male lead is doing very well in his career. Zhou Yufeng has already bought the house in front of him. He plans to bring his younger brother and sister to this seaside city, so that the family can reunite, because of the large family. He specifically bought a two-story house with a large yard in the suburbs. After all the hard work, he finally has something to show for it. After receiving the deed from the seller, the main character's mood also improved somewhat. Finally, he no longer has to live in a cheap hostel for another night. The transfer issues for Xiao Jing and Xiao Yu have been resolved. Yu Nai is also about to enter university. We'll bring them over after the exhibition. The most important thing now is to handle the exhibition. This business event is crucial. No room for any carelessness. A man works hard to earn money just to marry her. But the lover's attitude suddenly becomes extremely indifferent. Just because the family is trying hard to break them up. Next day at noon, the male lead arrived early at the Haishu train station to wait for Su Guotao and others. Xiaodua's situation made her appear somewhat listless. She looked dispirited. Soon, the exhibitors appeared in Zhou Yufeng's career. Not only are there several factory managers, but also the employees they brought. Zhou Yufeng immediately perked up. Now is not the time to consider other issues. We must handle the current situation well. The comic looks limited in numbers, but in fact, there were more than ten people on this trip. After all, such a large-scale trade show would be too busy with fewer people. After a brief exchange of pleasantries, Zhou Yufeng went straight to the point. The exhibited products will probably arrive around 10 p.m. Let's go to the Industrial and Commercial Bureau first to register with Director Zhang. Then we can start promoting the exhibition. In order to ensure the smooth progress of the plan, I must have unified command for this event. Later, the group went to the Industrial and Commercial Bureau together. There were very few individual businesses at that time, so they were managed by the Industrial and Commercial Bureau, because Su Guotao had connections, and Zhou Yufeng had also visited in advance. Everyone successfully obtained the filing documents. After completing these tasks, it was already late. There was no time to rest. The male lead directly took everyone to the venue to familiarize themselves with the situation. Although the conditions were a bit rudimentary, fortunately, there's a large flow of people here, and the venue is large enough for everyone to display their products. Zhou Yufeng led the setup of the venue. While explaining some details, I know everyone is feeling uncertain. It's normal. After all, this is our first time working together. But once we start, there's no turning back. Since we're here, please rest assured and focus on making the exhibition a success. You can have opinions, but only the ones that are retained. Soon you will understand that my plan is not wrong. As soon as the words were spoken, the pre-prepared banner has been hung up. At this moment, Su Guotao said, Yu Feng, you really have foresight. This is just a small part of our marketing. Tomorrow, we will vigorously carry out the promotion, spread the word, make sure our event is a big hit. Anyway, you can expect to be stuffing money into burlap bags. Around 11 o'clock the next day, it's time for everyone's lunch break. The pedestrian traffic on the street has also increased. Zhou Yufeng and his group were seen working hard to promote. Extra! Extra! The big factory owners from Wahai City have arrived. All items are being sold at a loss. At this moment, some observant kids have already spotted the toys inside the cart. Excitedly, they grab their mom's hand and jump around. This batch of Sun Wukong dolls was originally meant for export. But how would foreigners know who Sun Wukong is? So the sales overseas are very dismal. But the children in China really love it. Journey to the West It was a must-watch program every summer and winter vacation. The author still vividly remembers to this day. There was a man in the village who had a mania. Every day, besides drinking, he would beat his wife, and even stole eggs from the neighbor's house. He was recognized as a waste by the entire village. One day, he suddenly changed his personality, simply because he has regained his memory. Let's see how the male lead stirs up the storm in this era, and becomes a billionaire. Zhou Yufeng's advertisements are also spread all over the streets. The moms all brought their kids to watch these products. 
This simple and crude way of promotion quickly attracted a large crowd. The crowd followed the promotional team directly and walked forward together. At this time, Su Guotao said, Yu Feng, your plan is very effective. Quite a few people have already caught up, and the male lead is also very happy. So Zhou Yufeng and the others directly brought the attracted customers to the exhibition hall. Children all like toys. So most of the exhibitors are moms bringing their kids. At this time, the male lead also walked onto the pre-built podium, while other vendors stood on either side of him, facing the surging crowd. Zhou Yufeng remained calm and composed. Ladies and gentlemen, no admission tickets are required for this sales exhibition. All products are being offered at low prices by the manufacturer. Everyone can make a purchase. At this point, Su Guotao is no longer worried. Instead, he looks excitedly at the crowd in front of him. He firmly believes that this event will be a great success. Only to see Zhou Yufeng turn and say, Since everyone is already here, how much merchandise can be sold depends on individual ability. Several factory managers are somewhat surprised. They are all in management and have no sales experience, so it seems a bit at a loss. At this point, Su Guotao has picked up the megaphone and started promoting vigorously. The largest clothing factory in Guanghai has closed down. Clothes that were originally priced at 50 yuan are now only 20 yuan. Certainly, everyone knows this type of clothing. When the moms heard how cheap it was, they all became interested, and Zhou Yufeng began his explanation. The clothing in this exhibition are all in odd sizes. Price is fixed at $20, limited quantity, while supplies last. Even though it's already very cheap, the moms still want to negotiate the price. After all, everyone is like this, always hoping for a cheaper price. And Zhou Yufeng firmly responded to this question. The price is already a clearance price. If we lower the price, we will lose money. At this time, more and more people are gathering in front of the booth. The crowd began to rush to make purchases. For a while, Zhou Yufeng and Su Guadao were actually overwhelmed. On the other side, several factory directors of the toy factory were very surprised. The clothing factory went bankrupt. Can this advertisement still be shouted like this? Afterwards, he quickly ran towards his own booth, taking advantage of the large crowd now. They also need to act quickly. The crowd began to imitate the male lead's advertising slogan. The children make a big fuss about compensation. A bamboo dragonfly costs only 50 cents. You might think 50 cents is too cheap. But this thing is simple to make, and the cost of mass production is only a few cents. But if it's not a direct manufacturer sale, the price will definitely be higher than it is now. After all, there's a middleman making a profit. Zhou Yufeng is too smart. Several toy manufacturers are responsible for attracting children, but he's actually playing into mom's idea. In fact, the companies are in competition. After all, they are all selling toys. The biggest winner of this exhibition is definitely Zhou Yufeng. This man in front of us is up to no good. He stole eggs from the Shen family, pried open the office door, and even kicked the good leg of the cripple. Yet, this guy surprisingly has a high business acumen. Cheap, low quality, over $50. The current price is only $20. Such a low price instantly ignites the emotions of the crowd. Everyone starts to rush to make purchases. In just a short hour, three large boxes of clothing have already been sold. Su Guotao was originally worried that the investment would go down the drain. Now, he is beginning to feel fortunate about his decision. After a busy night, everyone has finished their work, although very tired. Everyone's faces are filled with smiles. The first day of the exhibition was so lively. How could it not make people happy? By this time, Zhou Yufeng's voice was completely hoarse. He shouted through the amplifier all day. After returning home, Su Guotao couldn't wait to come to Zhou Yufeng's room. The two wanted to take stock of today's sales, only to see Zhou Yufeng reaching out a hand and saying, I have a total of 5,020 yuan here. At this point, Su Guotao smugly said, here I have a total of 6,980 yuan, more than Zhou Yufeng's. The male protagonist is also very pleased. He is very satisfied with today's income. You know, this is the 80s. An ordinary person can't even earn 100 yuan in a month. This money is undoubtedly a huge sum. Su Guotao was afraid of counting the money wrong, so he took the money out to count it again. This kid had never seen so much money before. It's normal to feel a little excited, even though they've been tired all day. Su Guotao shows no signs of fatigue. That's the power of money. The sales of the two have already reached 12,000 yuan. 
In other words, 600 items were sold in just one day, and the exhibition has not been fully promoted yet. Based on today's customer feedback, there will definitely be more people coming tomorrow, compared to Su Guotao's excitement. Zhou Yufeng, on the other hand, remained much calmer. At this point, he was already yawning nonstop, clearly extremely exhausted. He waved his hand and went back to rest in the room. Meanwhile, Su Guotao remained full of energy. He can't wait for it to get light immediately and continue making money. The next day, the two of them arrived at the bank. Such a large sum of money cannot be kept on one's person. It's too dangerous. It's better to save it and be at ease. The matter of splitting the money was already agreed upon. When making the investment, it's half and half. When making money, naturally it's also half and half. The male lead is very happy looking at the amount in the passbook. He has taken another step toward his goal. Purchase price is $4.00. Selling price is 20. Such high profit motivated the two of them. After arriving at the venue, Zhou Yufeng continued to work hard to promote. Manufacturer's clearance sale. Prices slashed. All items for only $20 each. Several factory managers were surprised to hear that the ad jingle was even better than yesterday's. Jumping off a building. Afterwards, they hurried back to their own booths. They were preparing to replicate Zhou Yufeng's promotional methods. Meanwhile, on the other side, the clothing sales at the department store are rather bleak. Most of the customers have been snatched away by the male lead sales event. Jiang Mingming didn't come to work today. Since yesterday, his store hasn't sold much. Today's foot traffic is even lower than yesterday's. This booth has emptied the wallets of his entire family. And he also borrowed a lot of money from outside. So he's a little upset. But Shui Wenwen's mindset is much better. After the exhibition ends, the business here will also recover. They even discuss going to the exhibition together. But what they didn't know was that the fashion industry was about to undergo a major transformation. This young couple would face unprecedented challenges. One day you would get rich. His ex-girlfriend, who loves the rich and despises the poor, is clamoring to get back together. Will you agree? The news that someone is holding a sales meeting in the seaside city has spread completely. Everyone is coming to buy clothes. At this time, Jiang Xiaodou is working in the library since the last breakup with Zhou Yufeng. They haven't seen each other. At this moment, a colleague ran over. Xiaodou heard that there's a clothing sale at the night market. The manufacturer of high-quality products has gone bankrupt. The boss ran away with a single word. The employees had no choice but to sell clothes to pay their wages. Clothes that were originally priced at over 50 are now being sold for only 20. Shaoduo was also tempted. So, the two of them decided to go and take a look together. The exhibition is even more bustling at this time. The advertisements have never stopped. Indeed, it's the last day of super low prices. Only 20, everything for 20. The crowd in front of the booths has already formed a long line. Everyone is surprisingly orderly in their purchases. Zhou Yufeng and Su Guotao also have clear division of labor. One is responsible for getting the goods. Xiao Duo and the others also joined in. Girls naturally love beauty. Moreover, no one can resist such an affordable price. Five minutes later, it was finally Xiao Duo and her colleagues turn to make the purchase. Both of them are 26 years old. Su Guotao looked at the young girl so he recommended buying the pink one. Colleagues also nodded in agreement. At this moment, Lao Su's gaze turned to Jiang Xiaoduo. He had no idea about the relationship between the girl in front of him and Zhou Yufeng. Otherwise, he wouldn't dare to take the money. Xiaoduo also chose the pink color. This color looks younger. The others are not suitable for someone of this age to wear. The male lead who received the signal quickly lowered his head and started searching. Soon, Zhou Yufeng found two pieces of clothing. She stood up and prepared to hand the clothes to the customer. Just as he reached out his hand, he was caught off guard by the person in front of him. This city is really small. He had just broken up the day before yesterday, and now he's meeting his ex-girlfriend so soon. And Shaodou was also stunned. The sudden encounter made her a little at a loss. The expressions of the two flashed by, then quickly returned to normal. Perhaps their minds have already let go. I don't want to be entangled with the past anymore. Only to see Zhou Yufeng suddenly smiled, handed the costume over and said, Comrade, here's your pink. This guy is really good at flirting. Xiao Duo's face turned red. She stared at the male lead, not knowing what to say. The two didn't exchange much. After buying the clothes, Xiao Duo left the exhibition. Her colleague kept praising Wei Mei's beauty all the way. On the other hand, Xiao Duo was feeling a bit down. 
She never expected that Zhou Yufeng's career had already done so well. Her heart was in a state of confusion. She didn't know if she truly didn't care, or if she was beginning to regret. On the other hand, Shui Wenwen said that she had already found a source for the $44 trumpets. This was good news for the two of them. Low purchase prices meant high profits. The couple were tempted, but they overlooked one issue. Currently, the competition in the speaker market is so intense. The manufacturer's wholesale price has also risen from the original 45 to 50. Why should they be able to get goods at a low price? How inflated can a person's ego get after making money? He actually started eating breakfast. And he even added three eggs. Nightfall. The busy people who have been working all day have started to pack up. These two days have really worn out Zhou Yufeng. At this time, Bai Jianmen suggested eating white noodles for breakfast tomorrow. We've been eating corn noodles these past few days. I want to have some fine grains to satisfy my appetite. Su Guotao also expressed his agreement in classical Chinese. This guy has become generous because he's made some money. Otherwise, he can't bear it. Then he said again. It's not that we are stingy. It's really that we can't make much money. The profit from a piece of clothing is only two cents. Bai Jianmen was very surprised, taking the clothes from Guanghai to sell them here and making a profit of two cents. He himself also does business, so he doesn't believe it at all. But this matter cannot be blamed on Su Guotao. Nowadays, people are full of hatred and jealousy. They even envy their fellow villagers for making money. They block up the fish ponds of others. At this moment, Lao Bai mysteriously said, The profit from this piece of clothing can also reach 50 cents, right? He even claimed to be doing business, and made a big effort just to make 50 cents. Doesn't he know that others make 16 yuan on one piece of clothing? It's maddening, but Su Guotao hasn't said anything. After all, the more secretive this kind of thing is, the better. So he patted Lao Bai on the shoulder, and praised him for being smart. Back home, these two kids couldn't wait to start taking inventory. Today's sales were much better than yesterday's. Together, they sold over 24,000. They also sold over 1,800 pieces of clothing. This result can be considered quite excellent, and this is only after two days. Tomorrow is the weekend, so it will definitely be even more bustling. Thinking of this, the two of them are full of energy. The next day, to treat everyone, Zhou Yufeng specially cooked noodles for everyone, and each person also has two eggs. Afterwards, they continued to go to the trade show to sell goods. There are more people coming to buy things today than the previous two days. Zhou Yufeng's advertisements have become more persuasive, and it's not just him. Other exhibitors are also constantly promoting. Everyone cherishes this opportunity, and wants to clear their inventory while they can. But their situations are not the same. These factory managers work for others, while the male lead works for himself. At night, Zhou Yufeng and Su Guotao started inventory again. Today's business is indeed better than the previous two days. Together, the two of us have already exceeded $30,000. At this rate, the remaining clothing will sell out very quickly. There are currently 1,700 items left. At most, two days. It's even possible that they will all sell out in one day. After all, tomorrow is also the weekend. The person who has always been looked down upon by the entire class has unexpectedly transformed into a big boss. Instead of acknowledging him, old classmates have intensified their mockery and sarcasm. As night falls, the exhibition is also coming to an end. After several days of hard work, the goods in everyone's hands are basically sold out. They also rarely take a break. Zhou Yufeng was eating ice cream while asking about the sales situation of several business partners. Lao Lu's toys are basically sold out. The kid is now extremely happy. He helped clear the inventory for the factory. This is a great achievement. Although there are still a few boxes left, I sold them to the teacher at a very low price. He is leaving for Guanghai tomorrow. At this time, the market chief is leisurely smoking a cigarette. The initial nervousness and anxiety completely disappeared. The two of them started chatting on the side. Zhou Yufeng asked why he didn't continue selling goods. The teacher said there's just a little bit left. In a while, a casual shout will do. At this point, he asked Su Guotao to come over and sit for a while. The crowd has been busy since they arrived at the seaside. There really hasn't been time to chat leisurely like today. Just as Su Guotao was about to go over and sit for a while, several more people arrived at the exhibition. Isn't that Shin Zirin and Zhu Jun? Old Su, who was just lost, quickly stepped forward to greet them. It's really a small world in the seaside town. Zhou Yufeng is about to meet them again. It really proves the saying, old enemies often meet. Shinzirin heard that there was a discount on the clothes at the sales event, 
so they came together. It is said that Pepe works at the bar. She should be working at this time, but she's here to buy clothes. Zero. At this time, the three of them had already arrived at the booth. Due to the dim lighting, they did not notice Zhou Yufeng, but the male lead did spot them. At this point, Su Guotao patiently introduced the costumes. He did not know that the guys in front of him had a grudge against Zhou Yufeng. Otherwise, they might be driven out. Two girls are picking clothes. Xu Jun, on the other hand, is looking around. When he turned around, he saw the person he least wanted to see. Isn't that Zhou Yufeng? Are you here to work as a laborer kid, daring to slack off and eat ice cream? Look at your unscrupulous behavior. Zhou Yufeng was not disturbed by their arrival. He simply calmly stated that he was here to sell firewood. The weather is too hot. Eating an ice cream can relieve the heat. But Zhu Jun has no intention of letting him off the hook. With your bear-like appearance, you still sell fire? Why don't you mention that you are also the one who started this sales exhibition? The male lead is not someone who likes to show off. His life principle is to keep his wealth confidential. But that doesn't mean he's easy to bully. So he began to retort. Can it be you who opened it if it wasn't me? Xiao Jun, your foul mouth hasn't changed at all. Why are you so scattered? As soon as Zhu Jun suffered a loss, Shin Xiren also quickly joined the battle. Why are you so good at boasting, Zhou Yufeng? You must be working for someone else again, right? At this time, several factory directors also noticed something was not right here. So they all came over to Zhou Yufeng's side. Upon hearing Shin Xiren's doubts, everyone also chimed in. Zhou, don't forget to bring me to the next exhibition. Xu Jun was greatly astonished when he heard this. Director Zhou. Could he have misheard? Shin Xiren also threw the clothes he had picked out at Su Guotao. What kind of shabby clothes is this? Is this for wearing? I won't buy this cheap stuff. Later, they left with Zhu Jun and Jia Peipi. They have always looked down on the male lead. They all thought that Zhou Yufeng was useless. Now that he's doing well, they started to feel jealous instead. They wanted to give their old classmate a piece of clothing, but he just threw it back at them. He even scolded them, saying that their stuff was worthless and not worthy of their status. Shin Xiren and others originally wanted to humiliate Zhou Yufeng. They thought that the male lead would still acknowledge their bullying. After seeing his career getting better and better, they became even angrier and started throwing things, then left in a huff. A fierce tiger does not turn back at the barking of dogs. Zhou Yufeng did not bother to argue with them. After breaking up with Xiao Duo, he only wanted to advance his career. At this moment, Zhou Yufeng walked into the room with a bowl of noodles in hand. Tell Su Guotao to quickly finish his meal first. Lao Su is taking stock of today's sales. As soon as this kid walks in, he starts counting money. Back then, there were no hundred yuan bills. The highest denomination was just ten yuan. So, taking inventory is indeed laborious. And it's also very easy to make mistakes. At this time, Zhou Yufeng also sat down to watch him count the money. Lao Su is very meticulous. This is already the sixth time, and we're about to start the seventh time. The room was quiet, with only the sound of counting money. Well, this Lao Su may not necessarily be meticulous. He might just be addicted to counting money. This kid is very excited now. You can't tell he's been tired all day. After a while, Lao Su excitedly said, Yu Feng, we made over 30,000 today. I wasn't as excited as Su Guotao just said I'll save it for tomorrow. As soon as he finished speaking, Lao Su suddenly stood up and said very seriously, Yu Feng, I never dreamed I could earn so much money. In just three days, my savings reached 50,000 renminbi. Thank you so much. But Zhou Yu Feng quickly interrupted him. In his view, this small amount of money is nothing. Moreover, without Su Guotao's relationship, the exhibition would not have been so smooth. The fact that so much money was earned is the result of the joint efforts of the two. If I had to say something right now, it should be a mutual congratulations. Then the two held hands tightly. They had only known each other for less than a month. Maybe this is fate. Currently, there are very few clothes left in stock. Su Guitao suggested purchasing another batch. He wants to make more profit from the trade fair. But this proposal was immediately rejected by the male lead. Old Su was very puzzled. Why doesn't Zhou Yufeng want to continue this profitable business? The male lead patiently answered. Currently, the average living standard in this coastal city is not actually high. Most of the customers buying clothes are from the Baili region. If we rashly purchase large quantities of goods, I can't eat at this market. Even if we go to other cities, it won't work. First, 
we don't understand the local situation, and we don't have anyone to buy elsewhere. If we go rashly, we may end up losing the money we've earned now. The risk is too great. Su Guotao didn't think about these things. He's not a businessman. He's just a 9-to-5 office worker. If it weren't for Zhou Yufeng, it's almost impossible to make so much money. But now he is unwilling to go back to work. After all, he has seen the flowers at the mountaintop. Who would pay attention to the grass at the foot of the mountain? So he wants the male lead to help him make money. Zhou Yufeng didn't speak. He just nodded lightly. He had concerns. When two people collaborate to make money, naturally everyone is happy. But business carries risks. What if we lose money? Not to mention business competition is like walking on a tightrope. One moment of carelessness, and everything will be lost. At that point, even the best relationships can turn hostile. He has seen too much of this in his past life. The person in front of us is walking on a tightrope. One wrong step and they will fall into an abyss. Even so, he has never backed down. After three days of hard work, Zhou Yufeng and Lao Su have sold all the costumes in their hands. The two of them invested a total of $20,000. But in the end, they made a profit of 100000 The profit can be said to be quite substantial. The unsold products from several other toy factories were also sold out. And so, this exhibition achieved great success. The next day, Zhou Yufeng sent everyone to the train station. After three days of getting along, they had formed a deep friendship. Amidst reluctant farewells, the male lead watched them board the train to Guanghai. Meanwhile, Zhou Yufeng's next plan was about to unfold. The top priority is to bring the younger brother and sister over first. Otherwise, there won't be time later. Afterwards, he called the eldest brother Kang Jinzhong. He wanted to instruct Kang Jinzhong to handle the transfer of Xiao Jing and Xiao Yu's school registration as soon as possible. When Kang Jinzhong heard that it was Zhou Yufeng, he immediately became enthusiastic, concerned about asking the male lead about his recent situation. A Han's corruption case, Zhou Yufeng helped Lao Kang a lot. Otherwise, his factory director position would probably be untenable. So he greatly admires Zhou Yufeng. Kang, I have to go to the magic city tomorrow. You and Zheng's transfer will still need your help. Kang Jinzhong also promised wholeheartedly. He values his little brother very much. So Kong Lao will definitely handle the protagonist's matter with care. The next day, Zhou Yufeng arrived in the magic city. The most popular clothing on the market is shipped from here. Although Zhou Yufeng had no assets in the magic city in his previous life, it didn't affect his understanding of this city. His purpose for this trip is to make a big profit in the clothing industry once again. After breakfast, Zhou Yufeng came to the most profitable and powerful company here. It's also the most powerful company, mode of fashion company, searching for memories from the past life. This company formed a modeling team in the 1980s. That was the first fashion show team in China. As people's lives get better and better, the demand for material things is also increasing. Coupled with such a performance, it instantly awakened the pursuit of beauty among the crowd. In 1984, this model team held a grand show in Kyoto. It is said that at that time, the price of the clothes on the models reached hundreds of yuan, and the Modu Clothing Company also used this model team to beat other competing clothing companies to a pulp. He quickly became the industry leader. Now it's 1983. If you can start a model show ahead of time, then in the future, the industry leader will be Zhou Yufeng. But putting on a model show is no simple matter. He has many problems to solve. He only has 50,000 yuan at hand. This amount is probably far from enough. In addition, no one here seems to be buying. This is making Zhou Yufeng quite troubled. On the other hand, Mr. and Mrs. Jiang Mingming found an excellent source for merchandise. The supplier promised to offer them a batch of trumpet pants for 44 yuan each. The condition was that they had to make a one-time purchase of 10,000 yuan worth of goods. This young couple was very tempted. They thought that the money upstairs was meant for buying goods at this price. But 10,000 yuan is not a small amount after all. The money invested before was all borrowed from various sources. There is no more money available at home. But Shui Woman didn't want to miss this opportunity. So she nervously went ahead and placed an order for 10,000 yuan worth of goods. But what they don't know is, the wholesale price of bell-bottom pants in the market has dropped to $20. Everything in front of their eyes is a scam tailored for the two to make money. To satisfy his wife's unreasonable demands, he actually stole the money intended for his sick parents. The young couple in front of us is working diligently in their business. At this moment, a man wearing a cap backwards approaches. He claims to have a channel for obtaining goods at a low price. While others purchase at 50 yuan, 
he only needs 44 yuan. The condition is that they need to purchase goods worth 10,000 yuan at once. A lower purchase price means higher competitiveness. This caught the attention of the young couple. But in 1983, 10,000 renminbi was not a small amount. At that time, the average monthly salary was only 80 renminbi. Jiang Mingming was in a dilemma. Setting up this stall has emptied out my home. I even borrowed some money from outside. But Shui Woman doesn't want to give up this opportunity. Her own channel is 50 yuan, while this person's channel is 44 yuan. It's a difference of six dollars. Jiang Mingming clearly understands this principle, but the family really can't come up with the money, so he wanted to give up. But his wife Shui Woman still couldn't accept it. She suggested borrowing some money from Jiang Mingming's dad and paying it back after they had earned some money. As soon as she finished speaking, Jiang Mingming shook his head repeatedly. He had already borrowed 5,000 yuan from his dad before. The younger siblings still need money for their education, so I can't speak anymore. So the two of them began to confront each other. Jiang Mingming's wife is really dominant. She seems quite determined to achieve her goals. And that man wearing the cap backwards, just patiently watching from the side. At this time, Shui Woman came up with a solution. He wanted to secretly take out the old lady's money, and then secretly put it back when he earned enough money. You should know that the old lady has always been in poor health, if suddenly falling ill. Then if there's no money for treatment, you can only wait to die. These words touched Jiang Mingming. This silly boy thought the plan was feasible. He wouldn't have to endure scolding, getting money again, being scammed. Night falls. The whole family sits together to have dinner. This young couple is hiding extremely well. Others can't see any signs at all. Jiang Xiaodou is in a good mood today. These days, Lu Rui, that pervert, has stopped harassing her. Later, she announced some good news. Xiaodou's position at the library has become permanent. Jiang Xin is also very happy. Among all of her children, the one she loves the most is Jiang Xiaoduo. Her emotions are somewhat agitated, and her body is trembling a little. Jiang Xin has had heart disease all along. Once there is an emotional change, the heart will also react. After dinner, Jiang Yongguang took Jiang Xin out for a walk. At this time, Shui Woman walked to Xiao Duo, who was washing dishes. Xiao Duo, go accompany your parents for a walk. Both of them are in poor health. You can relax with me. After saying that, he pushed Xiao Duo and walked out. After Xiao Duo left, only Shui Woman and Jiang Mingming were left in the room. At this time, Jiang Mingming said sneakily, Lock the door and don't let anyone in. I'm going to get the bank book. Then he began to search in his father's room. Confronted with the temptation of money and the pressure from his wife, he has lost his mind. Finally, he found a little book. Opening it, he indeed found a passbook. The accommodation fee only costs two dollars. But this kid in front of me is still bargaining. After accumulating a large sum of money through the trade fair, the male protagonist moved on to the next goal, to start a clothing company. In order to inspect the market, he arrived in 1983. Even up to 2022, it's a first-tier city. The cost of living here in the magic city is not lower than that in other cities. Based on the principle of saving where possible, Zhou Yufeng didn't stay in a hotel, but chose a family inn instead. These inns are generally very cheap. Although the conditions are a bit poor, we won't be staying for long anyway. We'll just tough it out. There was no one at the front desk, only a child walking over. At this point, the male lead said, Is your grown-up at home, little kid? The child immediately turned around and called for his mom. This little guy is quite young. Looks like he's similar to Xiaoing. At this moment, a woman with a shovel came out, enthusiastically asking if they want to stay at the hotel. Seeing the boss coming out, Zhou Yufeng immediately revealed his unscrupulous nature. Sis, I'm planning to stay here for a while. The last place charged me two bucks. Could you give me a discount? If it's okay, I'll stay here. This sis is not one to be taken advantage of. Immediately reduce the price by 20 cents. It looks like the competition is fierce for this small hotel. Young man, how many days are you planning to stay? About a week. The older lady's expression immediately changed. Well, seven days doesn't count as a long stay. I'll give you a discount of one cent at most. A bottle of wine. A bowl of food. It's already dark now. It's not convenient to go out and look for more now. So the male lead agreed to stay. During this time, Zhou Yufeng hasn't rested well. Just sent everyone back to Guanghai and came straight to Modu. Carrying a tired body, the male lead immediately went back to his room to sleep. The next day, Zhou Yufeng arrived at the bus station early. 
he was going to catch the earliest bus to the motor clothing factory for an inspection. It's worth mentioning that this place is truly a firster city. The morning rush hour is no joke. As soon as the car arrives, a large crowd of people surges in, finally squeezed onto the train, only to find even more people inside. No need to hold on to anything at all. Everyone was unsteady. The male lead almost didn't get off the car after it arrived at the station. If it weren't for his good physical condition, he would probably have been forced to ride all the way to the terminal. Bumpy all the way. The male lead finally arrived at the destination of this trip. Motor Clothing Factory. Their first tour brand is truly exceptional. The entire building belongs to them. They must have made a lot of money. I was about to go in but got stopped by the security guard. Who are you looking for, young man? At this moment, Zhou Yufeng said, I'm from out of town. Where should I go to enter for the merchandise? At this time, the old man pointed forward. After reaching the end of this road, turn right. Then you'll be able to see. Back in those days, there were no smartphones, and definitely no Gouda maps. So we'll just have to ask. Watching the protagonist's figure recede into the distance, the old man couldn't help but sigh. This kid started his own business at such a young age. At this point, a long line had already formed at the shipping point's entrance. These people come from all over the place, north and south. Their purpose is to buy wholesale products to sell back. But they are all small-scale retailers. Their businesses are not big. But Zhou Yufeng is different. This kid has extremely high business talent. He's also very bold. His goal is definitely more than just procuring goods. How humble can a man be in the early stages of entrepreneurship? At this moment, he is trying to please others with a cigarette in his hand. To expand his business. Moth. Carrying hope in his heart. Moth. Here, he not only successfully accumulated millions of funds, it also formed an irreconcilable hatred with Moda's largest clothing factory. After queuing for several hours, it was finally the male lead's turn to choose clothes. The guy in front of him is called Fong Bao Bao. He has a lot of power and manages all shipping matters. At this time, he is asking the male lead with an arrogant expression what to order. Newcomer Zhou Yufeng doesn't understand their products, so he inquires about what styles of clothing they have. Fong Bao Bao impatiently introduces them, but what he doesn't know is that the man from out of town in front of him will become his boss in the future. After listening to the introduction, Zhou Yufeng felt a bit lost. Simply based on verbal descriptions, he couldn't imagine the specific clothing styles, so he looked towards the piled-up goods on the side. But this action annoyed Fong Bao Bao. This kid already had prejudices against outsiders. Now he was even more impatient, so he urged Zhou Yufeng loudly to make a decision quickly. Motor clothing factory is not just for him. If you don't buy anything, just leave. Hearing this, the male lead quickly started to use his connections. He took out a pack of cigarettes and was about to establish a relationship with the guy in front of him. Brother, it's my first time at the Moda Clothing Factory, and I don't know much about our products. Can you let me go in and have a look? Fong Bao Bao was shocked to see the cigarettes. She scolded Zhou Yufeng for not knowing manners, saying that if smoking caused a fire, he couldn't afford to pay for it. If this were elsewhere, Zhou Yufeng would probably have been beaten up. But this is, after all, Modu. In addition, he owed a favor to someone, so he didn't lose his temper. So he didn't lose his temper. After a moment, the male lead awkwardly smiled and took back the cigarette he had just offered. I don't smoke, but can I hold it in my mouth? Zero afterwards, he earnestly said. Big brother, I have a large amount of inventory. If I don't select some, it will be difficult to sell when I go back. Phone Bao Bao didn't make things difficult for him. If you want to see the style, you'll have to wait until everyone is done unloading the goods. After all, there are so many people waiting behind. Zhou Yufeng quickly agreed. He dare not offend this kid now. If Feng Bao Bao gets angry and ignores him, then this trip would have been in vain. When away from home, one must be patient in small matters to achieve great things. Afterwards, he left the line and went to a shady place to wait patiently. At this moment, a middle-aged man who had just finished unloading goods was preparing to leave. He really bought a lot of stuff, big and small. He hadn't walked far before clothes started falling all over the floor. Zealous Zhou Yufeng quickly walked over. Big brother, let me give you a hand. I can't carry so many clothes by myself. What if I lose them if I carry them in two trips? So the man did not refuse either. The two walked and talked along the way. Zhou Yufeng likes making friends very much. Through the conversation, he found out that this middle-aged man is called Lu Jing. 
Afterwards, he began to inquire about the guy with the cool watermelon haircut from earlier. Lu Jing doesn't talk much. He just said his name is Feng Bao Bao. He's just a gatekeeper. Ask for a benefit fee of 10 million up close. Just arrived at the fashion scene in the Magic City. Was challenged by a small warehouse manager. This kid is not tall but has a very loud voice. Making Zhou Yufeng feel a little overwhelmed. At this time, Lu Jing reminded. Feng Bao Bao is known for being petty and her father is the director of this venue. If you offend her, she will definitely make things difficult for you, but in the near future. It's not just Feng Bao Bao. Even Feng Bao Bao's dad has to work for Zhou Yufeng. The two of them chatted as they walked. They soon arrived at Lu Jing's tricycle. After loading the clothes onto the car, the two then waved goodbye to each other. It was already noon at this time. Feng Bao Bao was probably going to have lunch. Zhou Yufeng walked back. Watermelon head. With Lu Jing's reminder, Zhou Yufeng will be even more careful not to offend him. For Baron Spring's success, let's get the clothes first before making a plan. The male lead arrived alone at the fashion scene in the Magic City. No one offered to introduce me in the first place. It would have been easier if I had friends in the audience. In this situation, it can only be solved by personal connections and worldly wisdom. This is also Zhou Yufeng's specialty. A little setback like this won't defeat him. At this moment... Feng Bao Bao noticed Zhou Yufeng approaching, and waved to him. It's lunchtime now. Come back in the afternoon. The male protagonist was taken aback at the words. I thought this guy is really good at making things difficult for people, but he didn't show any dissatisfaction. After hearing that it was time for lunch break, the people in line also went out to have lunch one after another, so there were only Zhou Yufeng and Feng Bao Bao left at the front door. At this time, the watermelon head is about to pull down the roller blind. However, his head is too low. He can't even reach it by jumping. Seeing this, the male lead quickly comes forward to help. This Feng Bao Bao is also just over 1.5 meters tall, and Zhou Yu Feng is at least 1 meter 80 tall. I only heard the sound of the rolling shutter falling down. Shi Guatoshin thought that this kid is quite tall and also quite capable. At this point, Zhou Yu Feng began his social graces. Brother Feng, I'm really sorry for this morning. I didn't know that smoking is not allowed here, and Feng Bao Bao's tone also softened. I know it's not easy for you to come such a long way. I'm just addressing the issue, not targeting you personally. After all, there are regulations based on common sense. Don't overthink it. Zhou Yufang has it in mind. You damn well know I came all the way from far away. I'll show you later. Then continued to say, Feng, thank you for your understanding and reminder. Shall we go out for a meal together? Afterwards, the two of them found a restaurant near the clothing factory. The male lead also considerately ordered a table full of dishes. Foam, can I have a look at the clothing styles later? If I blindly stock up, I'm afraid I won't be able to sell them. How much are you going to stock up first? If the quantity is too small, I can't show it to you. Only to see Zhou Yufeng holding up four fingers. First, stock up clothing worth $40,000. If it sells well, I'll make additional investments. Feng Bao Bao was surprised to hear this. At first, he thought the guy in front of him was just a small-scale entrepreneur. He didn't expect him to be so capable. Zhou Yufeng was also very humble. You are too kind, brother Feng. For someone like me who buys a lot at once, can we have a bigger discount? This is exactly what Feng Bao Bao wanted to hear. Certainly, it should be cheaper. It's cheap, even just a few bucks. Now, let's see if Zhou Yufeng understands anything. He can drink five tons of alcohol in a day. Whether it's red or white, he can't stop drinking. The empty bottles can go around the earth fifty times. Money can make the devil push the mill. I originally wanted to continue to make things difficult for the male lead, but as soon as kickbacks were mentioned, the atmosphere between the two became harmonious. Zhou Yufeng is really good at handling people this week. He knows deep down that fighting won't solve the problem. As long as others get what they want, then he can get what he wants. At this point, he continued to answer questions while they were hot. Foam, I want to go to the warehouse to check on the goods this afternoon. As long as the goods are okay, the rest can be negotiated. Foam Bao Bao is quite straightforward. He immediately agreed. He earns a fixed salary himself. Now, if there's a chance to make extra money, they definitely won't let it slip by. After dinner, the two of them arrived at the storeroom, one behind the other. It's a big company after all. The entire 10,000 square meters are filled with the latest clothing. The male lead walked up to a party dress and carefully examined it. You can hardly find a few of these styles in the whole Jinhai city. Once they enter the market, 
they will definitely be popular, and both the craftsmanship and the materials are not comparable to those cheap goods. But the price is also very high. The cost price of a piece of clothing is already around 15 yuan. Previously, Zhou Yufeng only paid 4 yuan for a piece of chikar fabric. At this time, the male lead is still carefully observing the clothing. Feng Bao Bao, however, is getting a little impatient. She urges him to quickly finish and get to the point. Feng Gu, please don't be anxious. There's no problem with the style and fabric. As for other matters, let's discuss them later in the evening. Upon hearing this, Xiaobo's attitude changed. His expression instantly turned serious. Just as he was about to explode, Zhou Yufeng continued, Brother Feng, I'm definitely taking this deal. You can rest assured about that. But after all, the amount of incoming goods is too large, and the price is not low either. I need to report to the company first. Shi Gua Tu also showed understanding. His expression also softened. You go and negotiate first. I get off work at 6.30. You can come directly to me at that time. On the way back, Zhou Yufeng furrowed his brow and began to ponder. The cost price is 15 yuan. I estimate I still can't eat it all. I can only choose a city with higher purchasing power. Feng Bao Bao can only give up a dollar at most. The cost of renting the venue would be at least 10,000 yuan, plus other expenses. The remaining payment is just over 30,000. If sold at a unit price of 50 yuan, minus necessary expenses. At most, I can only earn 120,000. It seems that it's necessary to adjust my plan. If we can sell in Kyoto, and with the support of a modeling team, then we will have a much better chance. But using a modeling team requires approval from the top management of the Shanghai Fashion Show. So the male lead thought of Feng Baobao's father. It was already 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Zhou Yufeng, as agreed, came to the dressing room to find Feng Baobao again. Later, the two of them went to the hotel together. Feng, I heard your club has a modeling team. I want to organize a performance in Kyoto. Can you lend it to me for a few days? At this time, Watermelon Head is a bit drunk. His face is as red as a monkey's butt, said without hesitation, no problem. As long as you pay, it's fine. This man only has 40,000 yuan in funds, yet he set his sights on a multi-million dollar deal. Three rounds of drinking. Feng Bao Bao also asked the question he cared about the most. Bro, how much merchandise are you planning to order this time? The male lead then went through the prepared list. A total of 20 styles. 100 pieces of each style. The watermelon head is very surprised. Zhou Yufeng wants all these clothes to be the latest this year. So the prices are also the highest. And then he slams the table. The price of these clothes is 15 each. I'll give you a discount directly. I'll give them to you for 14 each. But there's a condition. I'm taking a risk by doing this. So you can't let me do it for nothing. I want to charge 20 cents for each piece of clothing. In total, it's only $500. But you can save over 3,000. Zhou Yufeng shook his hand when he heard this. Brother Feng, are you satisfied with so little? Your appetite is too small. Feng Bao Bao is a bit busy. He doesn't understand what the male lead means. At this time, Zhou Yufeng continued saying, You probably only encounter a few big clients like me in a year, right? Why not try to make more profit from such a good opportunity? Let's talk business. Upon hearing this, Feng Bao Bao stood up excitedly. He is now very worried about what this kid in front of him will mess up. If he messes up his own work, it will be terrible. Only to see Zhou Yufeng patiently saying, Don't worry, Feng Da, let me finish. I, Zhou Yufeng, have accumulated a considerable amount of wealth in my eight years in business. It's all thanks to my unique vision and courage. No one understands the market better than I do. Countless people have become rich by following my lead. I didn't come to talk to you about a small deal worth a few hundred yuan today, but how to divide the cake in the fashion industry. At this moment, Feng Bao Bao didn't know what to say. Her face turned red with embarrassment. She had to listen to him continue. My idea is for the two of us to collaborate. You are responsible for the channels and connections. I am responsible for sales. Let's hold a grand fashion show in Kyoto. Of course, I will cover all the expenses. If you don't trust me, we can sign an agreement. For every piece of clothing sold, I give you a commission of $5. For a $40,000 order, the commission is 15000 In the face of enormous profits, no one can resist, especially someone like Feng Bao Bao who is only interested in profit. At this point, Zhou Yufeng continued to say, If you don't want to work with me, but you will also lose the biggest opportunity in your life. Feng Bao Bao poured the wine and said, Just as Feng Bao Bao poured the wine, she said, 
The model team has always only served the fashion factories in the Magic City, and the procedures for holding a fashion show in Kyoto are very complicated. This matter requires the signature of the factory manager. There has been no precedent for providing services to anyone before. The main issue is that the purchase quantity of 40,000 yuan is not substantial. So, it's difficult to discuss this matter. At this time, Zhou Yufeng continued, I can increase the amount of goods purchased. Moreover, as long as it can bring huge profits to your factory, this matter can be easily discussed. Feng Bao Bao looked at the male lead suspiciously. You only have 40,000, right? How can I increase the purchase quantity? I can sign an agreement with your factory. As long as I sell one piece, I'll give you a rebate of 14 yuan, plus the purchase price. So you can get $28 for each piece of clothing, and I can use the goods in my hand as collateral for you. Even if I only sell one piece of clothing at this model meeting, then you don't have to pay me back the $40,000. Let's put it in the contract in black and white. No matter what the outcome, you can only gain, not lose. If someone willingly gives you money, would you dare to take it? In the face of huge benefits, no one can resist temptation, including Feng Bao Bao and Zhou Yufeng, who can't resist when they see the fish already hooked. He continued, Regardless of whether this event is successful or not, you have no risk. But at this moment, Watermelon Head's mind was filled with doubts. It was the first time he had encountered such a good thing, and inevitably he was somewhat suspicious. As long as Brother Fong can settle the matter with the model team, the previous 500 yuan I gave you doesn't count. I can offer a bit more as a hardship fee. In the end, Zhou Yu Feng extended another finger. I'll add another 1,000 yuan. The things to be discussed have all been discussed. It's also getting late. The two bid farewell at the hotel entrance. Zhou Yu Feng reminded him not to forget their agreement. After that, they both went home. The person in front of me is called Feng Shilai. He's Feng Bao Bao's father. This Feng Shilai is quite extraordinary. He single-handedly started the modeling team at the fashion scene in the Magic City. At this moment, his eldest son returns home in a languid manner. Feng Bao Bao is drinking again at first sight. Feng Shilai is a little angry and warns him not to hang out with idle people in society. This blockhead seems to be a little afraid of him. He hurriedly explains that this time he didn't hang out with idle people, but went to discuss business with the dealer. Feng Shilai became even angrier when he heard this. What business does a warehouse manager have to talk about? He must have been using my name to take advantage of others again. Old Feng is very upright and hates these kinds of things. Don't let his age fool you. His thoughts are very progressive, and he's not at all like an old fogey. Besides, he is politically reliable. At this time, Feng Bao Bao reported to her father about the matter between her and Zhou Yufeng. Of course, she didn't mention anything about the kickbacks. Feng Shi was surprised after hearing this. Regardless of the outcome, the factory can easily pocket 40,000. Moreover, this guy named Zhou Yufeng even offered a rebate of 14 yuan for each piece of clothing. He felt it might be a trap. But Feng Bao Bao didn't want to give up her commission of over 10,000 yuan. So she began to explain to her father in an unusual manner. But Feng Shilai didn't want to listen anymore. He once again advised his good son to be honest and do things conscientiously. Do not expect good things to fall from the sky. Feng Bao Bao feels very helpless. This is the first time in these years that he has fought for something with his father. He never dares to do so normally. But the result is met with his father's cold eyes. He doesn't want to give up. He only makes 60 yuan on a regular day. After working hard for a year, he only makes 720 yuan. If this can be achieved, then he won't have to worry about food and drink in the future. Afterwards, I began to figure out how to persuade my stubborn father. But after thinking for a long time, I couldn't come up with a solution. So I thought about asking Zhou Yufeng for ideas tomorrow. The next day, Feng Bao Bao arrived at the office early. He knows the male lead will definitely come to find him. His guess was correct. Zhou Yufeng attaches great importance to this matter. It concerns the male lead's future development. So Zhou Yufeng also arrived here early. God of wealth. Feng Bao Bao quickly greets him warmly. Without the previous arrogance and domineering attitude, even saying she wants to treat the male lead to a meal, seeing she was mood so good. Zhou Yufeng thought that this matter was already settled. He thought this kid was quite efficient. At noon, the two of them came to a breakfast shop together. They ordered two fried dough sticks and a bowl of crispy tofu. Eating at a breakfast shop in the middle of the day, only he, Feng Bao Bao, could have come up with that, and even said he wanted to treat himself to a meal, but ended up eating this. This guy is really stingy.
The person in front of me is in the midst of a high-stakes gamble. He is prepared to invest all his wealth in exchange for the opportunity to become a top billionaire. After lunch, Fong Bao Bao prepared to take the male lead directly to his dad's office. He wants the two to communicate directly. This behavior carries a relatively high risk. Fong Bao Bao might end up getting a beating. Zhou Yu Feng is naturally very willing. Ever since he found out that Feng Shilai had defied all odds to establish the modeling team, he has been very curious about this person. Few people in that era had both vision and courage. He admired such people. After arriving at Director Feng's office, the male lead didn't exchange pleasantries. Instead, he began to talk about the prepared cooperation plan directly. Feng Bao Bao sat quietly throughout the whole process. Can't get a word in edgewise. Feng Shilai patiently listened. In the blink of an eye, 40 minutes had passed. Even though he understood the male lead's plan, Director Feng still had some doubts. So let's confirm again. Zhou, my bro, put down 40,000 at our place. Does that count as your purchase money? Zhou Yufeng replied firmly. Of course not. You can consider this money as a deposit, or as a bed agreement. If my sales volume is large this time, then you just need to deliver the goods. I will pay you promptly. If the sales are not good, even if only one item is sold, then the entire 40,000 will belong to you. Upon hearing this, Feng Shilai completely understood. Although the young man in front of him is not very old, but he has real courage. This collaboration can be said to be unprecedented, and he can come up with so much funding at such a young age. It seems that he has very rich business experience. At this point, Director Feng couldn't help but begin to appreciate Zhou Yufeng. Although Feng Shilai has approved Zhou Yufeng's plan, but after all, his position is as a director. Ultimately, the cooperation must be approved by the factory director. So the two agreed to continue the discussion tomorrow. The next day, Feng Bao Bao arrived at the office early today, but he seemed absent-minded, continuously looking around to find Zhou Yufeng's figure. He wondered why the god of wealth hadn't arrived yet. He is completely distracted from work now. At this time, an individual who came to stock up couldn't help but start urging. Feng Gu, have you recorded my five floral dresses? Only to see Feng Bao Bao suddenly furious. What are you rushing for? Do you think I'm a robot? If you want to buy, then buy. If you're not buying, then get lost. A familiar figure appeared before his eyes. It was none other than Zhou Yufeng, whom he had been eagerly waiting for, ignoring the people in the queue. Feng Bao Bao seemed as if she had seen a fish as a little cat quickly running towards Zhou Yufeng. Yufeng, why are you only just arriving? Did you get any results from discussing things with my dad yesterday? My dad told me to bring you to see him. Right after you left yesterday, I urged my dad to talk to the factory manager about this matter. My dad is very sad to see our natural relationship. Before the end of the workday, he told me that the factory director wants to see you. Zhou Yufeng knows which of Feng Baobao's words are true and which are false. After all, after these few days of getting along, he has gained some understanding of this square melon head. Afterwards, the two of them walked together towards Feng Shilai's office. Feng Bao Bao was especially happy. On the way, she kept instructing Zhou Yufeng to have a good talk later. Before they could reach Director Feng's office, the three of them met. It looks like Feng Shi has just finished a meeting. After a simple greeting, Director Feng prepared to take Zhou Yufeng to meet their road factory manager. People say that domestic violence happens once or countless times. Finally, this poor woman chose to get a divorce. The male lead also wakes up suddenly. One day he will stand in front of his loved one with a brand new look. After successfully persuading Director Feng, Feng Shilai then brought Zhou Yufeng to the office of the factory director. The man in front of them is called Lu Diguang. He is the head of the Moto Clothing Factory. Zhou Yufeng's plan needs to be approved by this person. This person's approval is necessary. The male Li behaves very naturally. He doesn't treat Feng Bao Bao with the same courtesy. Afterwards, he began his self-introduction. Hello, Director Lu. My name is Zhou Yufeng. I am a sole proprietor of Jingdu Department Store. Lu Guang is very enthusiastic, kindly patting the male lead on the shoulder, praising him for his youth and promise. I already got his situation from Director Feng yesterday. Then Zhou Yufeng patted his own backpack. I have brought the funds from Director Lu. As long as you nod, you can pay today. Lu Guang didn't respond. Instead, he asked why he wanted to cooperate with the Magic City Clothing Factory. Zhou Yufeng's answer was also very straightforward. Of course, it's to make money. Director Lu, the cooperation model I proposed is only beneficial to you. There is no downside, not a single disadvantage. 
It can also serve as the future development direction for your clothing factory. Hearing this, Director Lu put down the water glass in his hand. This kid still wants to advise me. What do you mean by the future development direction, young man? You know, our factory has no competitors domestically, the male lead said calmly. You can think of the money in my hand as a franchise fee. In the future, whenever you want to sell clothes from your factory, you can collect this fee. And the brand of Motive Clothing Factory has already gained public recognition. It can be said that there is no worry about not having buyers. So setting a threshold is completely reasonable. Hearing this, Lu Deguang and Feng Shilai both widen their eyes. The future development of the clothing factory is a difficult problem placed in front of them. But this young man explained the matter in a few words. The two who didn't play underestimated Zhou Yufeng a bit. You can use this method. Continuously recruit new individuals. As long as the dealer sells a piece of clothing, you can all charge corresponding fees here, and the number of franchisees must be strictly controlled, because the consumption capacity of each city is different. Over time, the brand's popularity will grow. Of course, this business model is not exclusive to your company, so there are still flaws. For instance, other clothing factories could also replicate this model, and the franchise fee is likely lower than yours. This is just a normal competitive relationship. It's unavoidable. Only by quickly popularizing this model, the more willing dealers to join, the smaller the risk for your factory. For someone like me, a sole proprietor, to be able to obtain exclusive sales rights, the advantage will be much greater than that of peers, and the risk will be smaller. Upon hearing this, Lu Deguang was completely convinced. This new business model opened a door for him and pointed out the next direction for his development, only to see Director Lu constantly gambling in the room with a water cup in his hand. He is trying hard to digest what the young man said. This young man is really extraordinary. How did he come up with such forward-thinking ideas? Afterwards, he began to inquire. Zhou, did someone else teach you this plan? Or did you come up with it yourself? This man is even doing business without wearing underwear. Zhou Yufeng proposed that joining the franchise system is the future development direction of the Magic City Clothing Factory. Such a novel and feasible plan actually came from the mouth of such a young man. This both impressed and made Director Lu Deguang suspicious. So he opened his mouth to ask, Did you come up with this plan yourself, young man? If I say I traveled through time, would you believe me? Director Lu, do you have any objections to our cooperation? At this moment, Feng Shilai looked at the leader of the factory. He dared not voice his opinion now. After all, he had no decision-making power. At this time, everyone was waiting for Lu Deguang to recover. Then, after some thought, he burst into laughter. Xiao Zhou, if we were to hold a fashion show, where do you think the venue should be? As soon as this was said, Zhou Yufeng's mind was made up. Lu Deguang has passed this test. I'm going to rent the ground floor of the department store. This way... It can attract enough customers and also appear honest. After the negotiations, Zhou Yufeng took out the prepared red envelope and handed it to Watermelon Head. This is how the male lead operates. Feng Bao Bao is in a great mood now that he's followed through on his promise. This thousand yuan is more than a year's salary for me. He didn't expect Zhou Yufeng to be so straightforward. Then he scratched his head awkwardly. Just pulling a thread and taking so much money from others. Feng, now that you have money... Why not treat me to a big meal? The previous oil stick and tofu brain were too plain. Feng Bao Bao also readily agreed. No problem. At this point, the two had become very close. There was no sense of unfamiliarity at all. They walked out of the costume department's office, arms around each other's shoulders, and then they arrived at the state-owned hotel. During this time, the two of them kept toasting and exchanging cups. The atmosphere was particularly intense. But Zhou Yufeng did not stop thinking. In his previous life, the turning point for Mashu fashion to dominate the national market was this performance. This innovative sales model will thoroughly ignite people's desire to buy. All the clothing for dining is sold out in an instant. Even though we keep sourcing supplies from outside, the demand still outstrips supply. If we can replicate the sales miracle this time, then the turnover will reach tens of millions. One's future achievements can definitely exceed those of the previous life. But there is a problem at the moment. If the goods don't sell enough, then whose profit belongs to the second batch of clothing? This matter is not detailed in the contract. In other words, anyone can take this money. At this moment, Zhou Yufeng thought of Feng Shilai. He is in charge of the shipment. If he can be brought into his own camp, then this matter will be secure. 
Currently, Feng Shulai's eldest son Feng Baobao has already become involved in his own business. For each piece of clothing, he gets a rebate of 5 yuan. With him around, Feng Shulai shouldn't have to struggle. At this time, Zhou Yufeng came up with a plan. He wanted to visit Feng Shulai. First, to establish a relationship. Second, to lay the groundwork for future matters. At this point, both of them were a little tipsy. The male lead picked up a wine glass and approached Feng Bao Bao. He explained the contradictions in the second batch of costumes and expressed his concerns to Feng Bao Bao. This square-headed guy is no fool because this matter will also affect his income. After listening, she immediately agreed to come down. At this point, the two were completely in sync. This man came out for a drink without wearing underwear and was prepared to go home with a person with a watermelon head. After successfully getting a commission of $1,000, Feng Bao Bao has completely trusted Zhou Yufeng, then took the male Li back home. Feng Shilai looked very angry at the drunken Feng Bao Bao. This kid always likes to hang out with those people outside, just about to scold him. But then I found Zhou Yufeng behind Feng Bao Bao. Feng Shilai is really clever. He immediately guessed that the two of them must have something to discuss with him. His expression instantly became friendly and amiable. It's Xiao Zhou, huh? Hurry up and come in and sit. Feng Bao Bao eagerly repeated the conversation between the two at the dinner table. Of course, this includes a 1,000 yuan agreement and a 5 yuan commission for each piece of clothing. Feng Shilai remained silent throughout, just quietly listening to the eldest son speak. Later, Feng Bao Bao handed the agreement she signed with Zhou Yufeng to Feng Shilai with bright red fingerprints and signatures on it, indicating that the two are now in a cooperative relationship. Feng Shilai carefully reviewed the contract. He was very worried that Feng Bao Bao would do something stupid and suffer losses. Then he fell into contemplation. At this point, Watermelon couldn't help but ask Head, Dad, Yufeng is a very trustworthy person, right? The payment promised to me has been given to me. Don't worry. Feng Shilai just raised his head and said lightly, Baby, resign tomorrow. Feng Bao Bao was shocked. He never expected to be fired. Now he begins to doubt if he is really his parents' biological child. But Zhou Yufeng didn't say anything. He is very smart. If things work out, Feng Bao Bao will receive a commission of over 10,000 yuan, equivalent to missing 10 years of work. Feng Shilai's starting point is very clear. The factory regulations do not allow employees to engage in private transactions. Immediate dismissal upon discovery. Feng Bao Bao has a relatively simple mind. If his relationship with Zhou Yufeng is discovered, then his dad, Feng Shilai, will also be implicated. Just as Xiaogua, nickname, was about to say something, he was interrupted by Feng Shilai. All right, you just focus on doing this business well with Xiao Zhou. Let's not talk about work anymore. As for your second purchase, even though it's not written in the contract, it should still be considered your additional benefit. I won't say much more. On the other side, this is still inside the department store. The prices at the speaker warehouse have been slashed again. At this moment, a young man is promoting his own speaker warehouse for only $43. Shui Wenwen and Jiang Mingming are shocked. They had just bought a batch at the price of 43 yuan. How did they lower the price again? As soon as the shoppers heard this news, they quickly gathered around the stall. Others are selling for 110 yuan, but it's only 43 yuan here. How can anyone resist? At this point, all the other merchants have gone crazy. This kid just came in and directly lowered the prices to the lowest. Their goods simply couldn't sell. Jiang Wenwen and Shui Mingming are still not awake. The speakers they purchased for 43 yuan are all goods that have brought in money. His purpose in doing this is to kill off all the competitors in the department store. Facing the criticism and attacks from everyone, he remains unmoved. All of this is within his expectations. The mall is like a battlefield. It's full of deception and intrigue. Those who enter are well versed in its ways. The clothing sellers in the entire department store are all part of his calculations. The mall is like a battlefield. Even though there are no flashing swords and shining spears, the loser will lose everything. Jiang Mingming is very angry. Everyone is selling for 110 yuan, but someone is selling for 43 yuan. There's no difference between this and smashing a place up. The most important thing is, the money he invested was stolen from his father. It's his old man's pension, if the business goes under. He also criticized Qian Jin Lai for his approach, which other merchants were very unhappy about. He scolded Qian Jin Lai as acting like a man-man. How could they know? The ultimate goal of Qian Jin Lai is to crush all competitors. From now on, one company will dominate, 
Even though he has offended his peers, he has won unanimous praise from consumers. Everyone is coming over to support Qian Jin. This sight makes Jiang Mingming even angrier. He had a conflict with Qian Jin before. Today, coincidentally, the old accounts were settled together, so he disregarded Sun Mingming's obstruction and quickly ran to the fourth floor. At this moment, the money was coming in, still loudly promoting their own clothing. Turn back to find out that Jiang Mingming couldn't even catch up. Qian Jin was very happy to see this scene. He justified his high price. Do you think everyone is as heartless as you? At this point, Jiang Mingming was thoroughly enraged. His eyes have lost their sanity. His body trembles involuntarily. But the money coming in still stimulates him, mocking that Jiang Mingming doesn't dare to do anything. Before the words fell, Jiang Mingming threw a punch. This shocked everyone. While Qian Ji Lai fell to the ground in response, shouting for help amidst the crowd, Jiang Mingming loudly vented his frustration. You damn dead mouse. Others are selling at 110. You insist on selling at 43, you bastard. This move scared the money away. The more he gets beaten, the more stable his character becomes, and the more clothes he sells. Now, he is completely a victim. Seeing the money coming in, he loudly pointed at Jiang Mingming and said, Do you still want to force me to deceive consumers with you, unscrupulous merchant? Jiang Mingming was left speechless by this question. With his intelligence, he may not have guessed the plan to make money, but he knew that the current situation was not in his favor. The surrounding crowd also realized the situation at this time. One after another, they began to accuse Jiang Mingming and even tried to grab him. At this time, several people had already rushed up. Jiang Mingming was quickly subdued by the angry crowd. Now he really couldn't express his bitterness. He had already been duped by Qian Jin Lai twice. I've been deceived for the third time now. The money that came in has now transformed into a righteous avenger, berating Jiang Mingming for being a scoundrel, threatening to report him to the police. Jiang Mingming panicked. If he gets harshly punished himself, his father's position as the bureau chief will also be at risk. At this moment, he deeply regrets his impulsive actions. Seeing her husband about to be arrested, Shui Woman doesn't know what to do, just repeating to let them release Jiang Mingming. As this farce comes to an end, Qian Jin Lai also becomes the biggest winner. He is laughing heartily at this moment. But what he doesn't know is, the Chang family still has a strong supporter, and that would be our male lead. Zhou Yufeng angrily accuses another man of behaving like a hooligan towards him. Young men must be vigilant when they go out. Otherwise, they might be in trouble. Facing a group of big men, Shui Woman was helpless, could only watch her loved one being taken away, then hurriedly rushed home to report the news. Jiang Yongguang was shocked after hearing his daughter-in-law's account. It is currently the period of strict crackdowns. How could this rebellious son dare to do such a thing? At this point, Jiang Mingming has already been arrested. The anti-crime crackdown in the 1980s was very severe. I reckon this kid will either die or suffer severe consequences this time. At this point, Jiang Yongguang also cursed. If this matter is not handled properly, it's not just Jiang Mingming who's going to lose his job. He will also be implicated. Old Jiang is very angry. How come none of these kids can give me peace of mind? They're in their thirties and still getting into fights. But after all, he is his own son. No matter what, it's not acceptable. The most urgent thing is to get the person out first. So, she endured her anger and went in to change clothes. Looking at Jiang Yongguang's appearance, Xiao Duo felt very distressed. At this moment, father seemed to have aged a lot. Even his posture slouched a bit. At this time, Shui Wenwen also complained that Jiang Mingming was too impulsive, shouldn't have resorted to violence to bring in the money, only to hear Jiang Yongguang say, Let's not talk about other issues. Let's go and see the situation first. It's best to settle it privately. We must not make a big deal out of it. And so the three of them arrived at the police station together. Jiang Yongguang is at least a bureau chief. Although he is the chief of the cultural bureau, he has no real power. But this time he's willing to sacrifice his dignity. Hello, comrade, I am Jian Yongguang from the Cultural Bureau. My son had a little misunderstanding with someone. You caught me. Comrade with the hat asked, What's your son's name? Jian Yongguang felt a little guilty. After all, this matter is quite embarrassing. Then he chuckled awkwardly and said, Call Jiang Mingming. Upon hearing this name, the hat instantly became furious. You still dare to say it's a misunderstanding? People were beaten into the hospital. This is a misunderstanding, I tell you. I'm the one who caught this kid. It's the peak of the crackdown now, and he still dares to defy the wind and the rain. 
This is really too arrogant. Routinely assaulting others in public for no reason. The crowd at the scene all saw it. They can all testify. The more he talks, the angrier the hat becomes. Jian Yongguang quickly grabbed his arm. Comrade. Although he was a bit impulsive, but he is still a child. Only to see the hat knocking Jian Yongguang's hand. The child is over 30 years old, and still a child. It's because you, as parents, have indulged him. That's why he dares to do illegal and disorderly things. Moreover, we also understand some situations. He just bears a grudge because someone else's price is lower than his. Absolutely outrageous. Seeing the attitude of the hat, the blood is totally drained, completely lacking the assertiveness when egging Jiang Ming to steal money. Can only watch Jiang Yongguang. The best course of action now is to seek forgiveness and bring in money. But that kid is very stubborn. If we don't shed some blood on this matter, I'm afraid it won't work. At a hospital in Zhihai City on the other side, Qian Ji Lai is wrapping the bandage in his hand around his head. This kid's technique is very skillful. It looks like it's not his first time doing this kind of thing. At this time, the nurse reminded, Comrade, there's nothing wrong with your head. How would he know? The money coming in is deliberately selling the misery. The leader of a dignified government agency is being bullied and bowing to a little hoodlum. Jian Yongguang came to the hospital to apologize to the victim's family for helping his son wipe his bottom. Qian Jinlai was also waiting for Jiang Mingming's family to resolve the issue. Seeing someone enter the house, Qian Jinlai asked who they were looking for. At this point, Jian Yongguang no longer had his former air of authority. Instead, he was trying to please and introduce himself. Qian Jin came in and was surprised to hear the words, thinking it arrived so quickly. Immediately he began his performance. He was seen clutching his head in pain, shouting that his whole body ached and his head hurt. While wailing, he also accused Jiang Mingming of bullying. It's all because his father is a cadre. Jiang Mingming dared to publicly beat someone. Hearing this, Jiang Yongguang was already scared and sweating profusely, daring to explain a little friction. It's not considered acting like a thug. Qian Jin came in angrily and said, Chiang Kai-shek couldn't even dream of this nonsense. He, a high-ranking official, would one day be insulted like this. This money is extremely difficult to handle. This kid not only has a great business mind, he's very adept at playing dumb. At this point, he's like a Gatling gun, constantly firing at Jiang, as the one in the wrong. Jian Yongguang can only hang his head and listen, dare not talk back at all. The drama brought in more and more money, started to throw tantrums and roll around on the bed. This kid has long figured out how to deal with this family. Jiang Yongguang had to continue pleading. He's very scared now. If Jiang Mingming gets a criminal record, his life will be over. It also shows that the Jiang family is not unreasonable. As long as he agrees to settle privately, they are willing to compensate for the losses incurred. But there was no response to the compensation offer. Instead, they pointed to their own head and said that they were already injured here. And today, they were beaten again, afraid of leaving Sequeli, still hypocritically saying that the family conditions are poor. If I collapse, the whole family will be done for. After saying that, he looked at Jiang Yongguang with a smile on his face, only to see Lao Jiang holding up two fingers and saying confidently, he can take out $200 as compensation. I hope he can accept the money coming in. $200 is indeed a lot for a salary man, but it's nothing to a business person. So he continued to throw a tantrum. Jiang Yongguang panicked. All the money at home was spent by Jiang Mingming on investments. Only a little retirement money left. But what he doesn't know is, his retirement money has long been stolen by Jiang Mingming. At this time, Jian Jinlai said, a minimum of 2,000, this figure can be said to be an exorbitant demand. In the 1980s, one person couldn't even earn 1,000 yuan in a year. Jian Jinlai understands all this, but he still chooses to do so. It is obvious that he wants to bring down the Jiang family. When Jiang Yongguang heard this, he was shocked. He knew that this grandson was cunning, but he didn't expect him to be so cunning. Shui Wenwen also scolded Xian for going too far, although there was some friction between them. But we shouldn't push their family to the brink of death either. But they are not moved by the money coming in at all. Either take the money and be done with it, or let Jiang Mingming go to jail. You weigh the options for yourselves. Jiang Yongguang was so angry that he was shaking all over. As a dignified government official, it was already a great honor for him to visit. Moreover, he is currently seeking his help. But the current situation is clearly not in favor of Jiang Ming. He couldn't bear to see his own child go to jail. So he gritted his teeth and agreed to come down. The woman was blamed by the public for her wrongdoing, while he shifted the blame onto his other half.
On the way back, the daughter-in-law is blaming the father for agreeing to let Qian Jin in, just asking for 2,000 yuan as soon as he opens his mouth, clearly a bad person. But Lao Jian doesn't want this either, if they don't give the money. When money comes in, it won't stop easily. For now, I can only take out my retirement money to get through this. When Shui Wenwen heard that Jiang Yongguang wanted to use this money, she nervously grabbed his arm. At this point, the act of stealing money definitely can't be kept hidden. It's better to be honest now. So she confessed that there was no money left at home. Lao Jiang didn't understand his daughter-in-law's meaning. Shui Wenwen continued, the money you saved for retirement was stolen by Jiang Ningning to buy clothes. Jiang Yongguang was stunned for a moment. He couldn't believe that his well-taught son would do such a thing. Then he became angry. Your mother is sick and needs money. Your younger siblings also need money for their education. We also need money for our retirement. He scolded the two for being too selfish. Shui Wenwen, feeling guilty, knelt down with a thud. She said Jiang Mingming did it all for the good of the family, shirking all responsibility. Back then, he was the one who told Jiang Mingming to steal money. Otherwise, things wouldn't have ended up like this. He kept begging Lao Jiang to think of a solution. If the money doesn't come in, he'll definitely go to Jiang Mingming's workplace to cause trouble. By then, Jiang Mingming will have lost her job. At this time, Jiang Yongguang was still angry. He angrily shook off his daughter-in-law's hand. Where can we find such a large sum of money? The money we saved by living frugally at home was secretly spent by them. We can't come up with the money now. At this point, Shui Wenwen's emotions are on the verge of collapse, but he can't solve this problem at all. He can only continue to beg Lao Jiang not to turn a blind eye, watching his daughter-in-law wail and cry, even though extremely angry. In the end, he softened his heart. Helplessly, he turned his head. A high-ranking official of a country, today completely lost face. He's ready to go back to the hospital to get money. Shui Wenwen is very puzzled. Why go back to the hospital just after leaving? Shouldn't he go out to borrow money? As soon as his daughter-in-law mentioned borrowing money again, Jiang Yongguang is angry again, and then he starts shouting loudly, Who can come up with so much money? Even if they can, who would be willing to lend their years of savings to someone else? Shui Wenwen started crying again. This woman usually has so many bad ideas, but now she can't come up with any. Speaking of these things, it's all her fault. If she hadn't instigated Jiang Mingming to steal money, Jiang Mingming would never resort to violent means to make money, let alone involve the 50-year-old Lao Jiang in seeking help from others. At this moment, Jiang Yongguang is in a sorry state. As the head of the Education Bureau, usually it's others who seek his help, but now it's the other way around. The only solution I can think of right now is to have money coming in and issue IOUs. As soon as they heard that they had to issue IOUs to themselves in the hospital, they became a little unhappy. He instantly became somewhat unhappy. He is a very cunning person. Seeing the cash made me feel at ease. Then he mocked that the two of them must have some bad intentions. If I get discharged, and Jiang Yongguang refuses to acknowledge it, what should I do? Upon hearing this, Lao Jiang repeatedly waved his hand, claiming to be a cadre at the very least. Definitely wouldn't do such a thing. But would he agree when the money comes in? This man actually demanded the models to go on stage without wearing underwear. Can these innocent girls escape from his clutches? Faced with Jiang Yongguang's assurance, Qian Jin completely doesn't believe it. Helpless, Lao Jiang had to reveal his trump card. Young man, I am the director of the Zhihai Cultural Bureau. This is my work permit. Qian came forward, took the documents and stuck them on his face, carefully examining them, and then immediately said that a promissory note could be made. But the compensation for the promissory note is not just 2,000. It must have interest. After knowing that Jiang Yongguang is a cadre, this kid still doesn't budge. The author really admires him for this. After that, he said that at least 2,005. Old Jiang was shocked after hearing this. 2,500 yuan. There are patients and students in the family. They definitely can't afford this money. Shui Wenwen also angrily reprimanded Qian Jin Lai for going too far. But what's the use of saying these? Now their whole family is completely in the hands of this guy. Qian Jin Lai shrugged. It's up to you. Don't agree? Then let your husband go to prison. Generalissimo Chang quickly admitted defeat in classical Chinese. This is the love of a father. No matter how difficult it is for himself, he cannot let his own child get into trouble. Immediately, Chang Yongquan wrote an IOU. An IOU for $2,500. It's just like selling anger. After getting what you want, 
You'll be very happy when the money comes in. I just took a punch and got so much money. That's really worth it. But what he doesn't know is, how much disaster this behavior will bring upon himself. John's son-in-law, Zhou Yufeng, won't let him off easily. That kid has made a lot more money than Qian Jin. Old fans all know that there will be no good ending for those who offend Zhou Yufeng. Seeing the money coming in, the IOU was collected. Jian Yongguang also breathed a sigh of relief. His son is finally saved. On the other side, the cooperation between Zhou Yufeng and the fashion factory in Shanghai has been completely finalized. Feng Baobao also resigned as instructed by Feng Shi. I have to say, the male lead has great leadership skills. In just a few days, the two key figures of the clothing factory have become his partners. At this time, Feng Shi suggests having Feng Baobao and Zhou Yufeng go to Kyoto together. First, he can help, and second, he can go out for some experience. The male lead did not refuse. After all, the two sides are currently in a cooperative relationship, and he also needs an assistant, so he readily agreed. After the discussion, Zhou Yufeng suggested going to the modeling team to have a look. He wanted to select a few famous models to participate in this performance. Feng Shilai didn't understand. At this moment, he still didn't understand the star's smile. He only said that the models were all factory workers and not very famous. But Zhou Yufeng is different. He deeply understands that a person with prestige can drive consumption, and it's violent consumption. Although Feng Shilai doesn't understand these things, he doesn't refuse either. Inside the rehearsal room, the Red Blade Bright model team is practicing the model dance. They have a tall and straight figure, consistent movements, and avant-garde clothing. Their bold outfits are very eye-catching even by today's standards. It's very attention-grabbing. At this time, the male lead is on his way to the rehearsal room. Feng Shilai's secretary is explaining the situation to him. The bond between Zhou Yufeng and Yo Danden is about to unfold. Models are training without underwear for the first time. But suddenly, a man bursts in. This scene is really beautiful. Fans must surely stay true to their hearts. Otherwise, decades of cultivation will be in vain. Under the guidance of the secretary, Zhou Yufeng came to the rehearsal room of the modeling team to prepare for selecting personnel for the Kyoto Fashion Show. Originally, he had no right to make selections, but with the relationship with Feng Shi coming into play, things became simpler. The girls who had just entered the house stared at him with big eyes, thinking it was another arranged interview in the house. At this time, the secretary said, The boss with the ponytail is Neo Danden. She is the captain of our modeling team. The one with green hair next to her is Nina. At this moment, Zhou Yufeng is very happy. So many young and pretty girls. Make him feel like he has a choice of consort, but he already has Xiaoduo. So he dismissed the idea. Nyo Danden and Nina, the male lead is very familiar with these two people. In his last life, he saw these two people a lot on TV and the internet, especially Nyo Danden. It can be said that she is a popular red figure. She has won all the major awards. In order to leave a good impression on them, Zhou Yufeng dressed up for the first time to be able to collaborate with a future superstar. Who wouldn't value that? At this moment, he struck what he thought was a very handsome pose, and greeted the model team. This action stunned everyone. The man in front of me looks stupid. But he's also very cute. Nina covered her mouth, fighting back a smile. At this moment, Nadandan pointed at Zhou Yufeng and said, He's really funny. Made the male lead a little embarrassed. Secretary quickly came out to smooth things over. Boss Zhou, your posture is very handsome. The girls all like you. The entire instant model team burst into laughter. The dance studio was filled with the girls enchanting laughter. Zhou Yufeng thought to himself, I even bought sunglasses and leather shoes for this. Now it looks so ugly. At this moment, Nyo Danden sensed Zhou Yufeng's embarrassment. She quickly cleared her throat, signaling everyone to stop laughing. Then she began her self-introduction. Hello, boss Zhou. My name is Nyo Danden. I am the captain of the modeling team. I represent all the members of the modeling team in welcoming you. Afterwards, the girls started applauding one after another. This scene is just so beautiful. Fans must hold on to their original intentions. Otherwise, decades of cultivation will be in vain. At this moment, Zhou Yufeng also expressed gratitude to Captain Neo. Thanks to all members of the modeling team. It's truly my great fortune to meet you today. But the secretary interrupted the male lead's speech. Three days later, the modeling team is preparing to select 12 people to perform in Kyoto. Nyo Danden and Nini are responsible for selecting the remaining people. Our boss Sho is very kind. He won't mistreat anyone. Originally, 
Zhou Yufeng didn't want so many people. He only insisted on Yo Dandan and Ni Nana participating. But since the secretary said so, it's fine. After hearing this, the girls readily agreed to come down. If the models don't perform, they will only receive basic wages. So they are all very willing to participate. At this time, Nina was very puzzled. Previously, it was always Neo Dandan who chose the people. But this time, she also followed to choose the people. Then she looked at Zhou Yufeng. He found that she was looking at him too. The girl, in the flush of first love, blushed all over her face. The woman deliberately came to see the boss without wearing a brow, just to fight for a chance to go on stage. Even the breeze blowing the hem of her skirt could not stop his desire for success. Facing the two future stars, Mr. Zhou couldn't help but observe carefully. Nyo Dandan is passionate and has leadership skills, while Nini is poised and energetic. What a pair of potential stars, facing the gaze of Zhou Yufeng. Both of them are clearly a little shy, especially Nini, who covers her chest, afraid of giving him the cheap. The male lead also noticed that the atmosphere at the scene was somewhat unusual. My face instantly turned as red as a monkey's buttocks. But then I thought of the self-cultivation technique that I practiced for ten years. This scene now is what I deserve. Besides, he prefers the innocent type like Xiao Duo. I can't stay here any longer. The girls look at themselves with the same look as they look at hooligans. Captain Yo, please select the remaining ten people. I'll go first. As soon as Secretary saw Zhou Yufeng was about to leave, he quickly said there were other things to discuss. But Zhou Yufeng had made up his mind. If he stayed any longer, he would have to fight with this group of people. So he stopped and walked out. At this moment, Neo Dandan said, This boss Zhou doesn't look like a good person at all. He was staring at us the whole time. He's really not serious. Then he turned to Nana and said, That boss just kept staring at you. His eyes were practically shooting stars. Could it be that he's fallen for you? This is making Nina really embarrassed. She's blushing and denying it repeatedly. As soon as she finished speaking, the whole dance studio was filled with the girl's playful laughter. The matter from the manufacturer's side is considered thoroughly settled. The matter progressed at different paces. That evening, Zhou Yufeng went to Kyoto with his costume. On the way, he kept calculating. After arriving, he must ensure that the train returns to continue hauling cargo. If there's too much... No need to fear, if there's not enough, it's a problem if it doesn't sell. This is Zhou Yufeng, he always wants to be ahead of everything. In the blink of an eye, the team arrived at the destination of this trip. At this time, it was still dark, and the entire city was at rest. Only the roar of the engine remained. Zhou Yufeng carefully calculates every category on the invoice. He doesn't trust anyone else to do this kind of work. At this moment, the team leader urged everyone to unload the goods quickly. Finishing this task would be considered completed, but Zhou Yufeng is unwilling to let them go. Although the quantity specified in the contract has been fulfilled, he made a private agreement with Feng Shilai that you can take the clothing casually. Captain Li will need you to make another trip after unloading this batch of goods. There's another batch of clothing to be transported over. Just find Director Feng and get his signature at that time. After speaking, he took out a purchase order. These were all negotiated with Director Feng earlier. You can use this document to directly pick up the goods. Captain Li looked at Zhou Yufeng with some suspicion. Didn't you sign a contract for 40,000? Pulling more would seriously exceed the limit, only to see Zhou Yufeng's firm assertion. Director Feng has already signed. What else are you worried about? After that, Captain Li said nothing more. After all, I am only responsible for the affairs of the team. Immediately, he tells the unloading crew to work quickly. He will have to make another trip later. The man spent only one dollar and got himself a wife. And she's even a model-level beauty. While Zhou Yufeng was watching everyone unload the goods, the mall manager Xie Jinghong walked over. This kid is very cunning. Zhou Yufeng quickly greeted him. As long as he is not an enemy, the male lead is always very polite. Especially now, it's a critical time for his career. Brother Zhou, I admire your courage at such a young age. But I am the manager of the business. Don't cause any trouble for me. Zhou Yufeng has seen a lot of bullies like this who pick on out-of-towners. He didn't lower himself to their level. He asked them to wait, while he dealt with the delivery personnel. By this time, all the goods have been unloaded. Captain Li was also preparing to lead the transport fleet back. He's upset because he has to go back again. But the male lead stopped him. Zhou Yufeng took out the last pack of cigarettes on him, and asked Captain Li to share it with the brothers. Then he handed the cigarettes over. At the same time, there is also a large stack of banknotes mixed in, a total of 30 notes in solidarity. Captain Lee, after taking the cigarette, 
felt that something was off. Immediately he realized and put it away. Afterwards, he changed his previous aloofness. We are very grateful for Mr. Zhou Yufeng's kindness. Boss Zhou, we will return immediately. Don't worry, even if we don't eat or sleep, we will still deliver the costumes on time. Money can make the devil turn the grindstone. This saying is really true. Captain Li is settled. The male Li then greeted Xie Jin Hong warmly. Now he wouldn't dare to offend this person. Otherwise, it will be difficult to handle the fashion show. Next day, the two began to discuss the details of the fashion show. After last night's communication, Xie Jin Hong's attitude towards Zhou Yufeng has improved slightly. At this time, Xie Jin Hong asked the question he was most interested in. Hey Zhou, why haven't we seen anyone from your model team? Quickly introduce me. Zhou Yufeng seems a bit annoyed, but he still has a smile on his face. Everything has been arranged. They will also come later. As soon as he heard that the model team hadn't arrived, Xie Jin Hong also lost interest. She waved her hand and walked away. In Zhou Yufeng's past life, Niu Danden and Nina only became famous after 1984. Now it's only 1983. I wonder if it will have the same effect. Current venue fees. The transportation and personnel expenses have been settled. There's very little funding left. Fortunately, there are no other expenses. Hopefully, there won't be any unexpected situations. As long as things go smoothly this time, then Zhou Yufeng's wealth will also rise to a new height. Although he is already very tired, he dares not rest. He personally takes care of everything, afraid of unexpected events. That's Zhou Yufeng's personality. Bold and meticulous. Smart and clever. It's as if he was born to do business. At this moment, a very sweet voice came from behind. It was the host of the fashion show who had arrived. She was warmly greeting Zhou Yufeng. The male lead was somewhat surprised. The stage hadn't been set up yet. Why did you come so quickly? The scene is quite chaotic. It would be terrible if someone got hurt, Zhou Yufeng said. Dear host, the stage hasn't been fully set up yet. Be very careful not to get injured by anything. The two of them also sensibly agreed. By the way, both of these hosts are quite good looking. They could be described as having both talent and beauty. At this point, Zhou Yufeng handed over the lines he had written overnight. He felt that the lines prepared by the two hosts were too traditional and rigid. The models are not wearing underwear for the first time on the runway. The new audience screams like slaughtered pigs, denouncing such behavior as vulgar and detrimental to public morality. As the staff and costumes all arrive in Kyoto, the model show officially enters the rehearsal stage. At this time, Zhou Yufeng is arranging for the host to become familiar with the new lines, while Feng Bao Bao is doing some manageable tasks. This kid is in a good mood, humming a tune while working. As the organizer of this event, all on-site matters are managed by Zhou Yufeng. The stage platform has been completely built. With limited time, the male lead turns back to call the model team for rehearsal. Those girls are not easy to manage, but Zhou Yufeng still has a way to deal with them. The models heard the boss calling them and slowly walk towards Zhou Yufeng. These girls are usually quite lax. The male lead is still a little uncomfortable facing the stern and resolute demeanor. I have already prepared the costumes for this performance. All the styles have been carefully selected. I hope everyone can bring their best state to meet this event. When walking the runway before, there was more freedom of movement. Usually, models are allowed to choose their favorite clothes. The sudden change made Nidandan somewhat uncomfortable. At this time, the secretary said, Since Mr. Zhou is the initiator of this fashion show, we should just follow his arrangements. No one else spoke in classical Chinese. It was obvious that some were dissatisfied. The atmosphere suddenly became a bit awkward. At this moment, Neo Danden said, Mr. Zhou, our red highlight model team's performance outfits are usually self-selected. Since this event is organized by you, we'll reluctantly listen to your choice this time. Zhou Yufeng felt that Nadandan's attitude was somewhat arrogant. Although he felt repelled, he didn't show it. Then they began to distribute the pre-prepared costumes. These clothes were all carefully prepared by the male lead. He believed that these costumes could arouse the crowd's desire to purchase. Looking at the floral dress in her hand, Nadandan's eyes lit up. I didn't expect that a big man like him would have such good taste. What he doesn't know is that since the first meeting, Zhou Yufeng has mastered the body proportions of all the members of the modeling team. The outfits for this time were also selected according to each person's characteristics. After going on stage, the group did not have any rehearsals. Instead, they chase and play with each other. The oldest of this group is no more than 20 years old. They are still a bunch of kids. 
It's inevitable that they are a bit hard to manage. But this activity is crucial for Zhou Yufeng. This behavior is intolerable to him, and the attitudes of other people at work are also not good. So the male lead is preparing to assert his authority with the modeling team, only to see Zhou Yufeng pointing at the girls on stage and shouting loudly, I didn't pay you to come and play. All of you better rehearse well, otherwise, get the hell out. Zhou Yufeng has a very loud voice, scaring all the models into a daze. I'm telling you, Lu Guan has already taken my money, and I am also promoting your event. If I don't do a good job, I will ask Lu De Guang for compensation. If anyone gets fired because of this, don't blame me then. When Niu Dan Dan and others hear they might get fired, scared to the point of not daring to make a sound, standing frozen in place, not daring to move at all. Before, they all thought that Zhou Yufeng wouldn't dare to do anything to himself. After all, he's a state-owned enterprise employee, while Zhou Yufeng is just a small individual business owner. What the hell are you standing there for? The performance is tomorrow. Start rehearsing right away. Otherwise, all of you get lost. Niu Dan has already been scolded into confusion. I only realized it was a rehearsal after hearing those two words. I quickly turned around and called the model team to gather. No one dared to underestimate Zhou Yufeng anymore. Everyone started rehearsing earnestly. At this moment, the male lead looked at the host of the event. Both of you quickly familiarize yourselves with the lines. Nose slacking off. The two of them were frightened by what just happened. Wen Yan also quickly entered rehearsal mode. The model was unexpectedly asked to perform on stage without wearing underwear. Teenage girls collectively protest. The audience blushes with embarrassment. Some even whistle at the stage. The next morning, as the curtain slowly rises, both hosts have appeared on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this fashion show. As soon as the host appeared, they instantly captured the attention of everyone in the audience. Two bright lights moved along with the host's steps. The models for this event are all top-tier supermodels from around the world. They will bring us an unprecedented visual feast. Thanks to Erda Mama for sponsoring the boxed meals. Thanks to Sher Tai Xiang Group for sponsoring the air freshener. Friends passing by, please click to follow. Otherwise, don't blame the host for being ruthless. Before the model even took the stage, the entire flow of people in the mall gathered in front of the stage on the first floor. The scene can be described as unprecedented. It's like being at a concert. I have to say that Zhou Yufeng is really something. Now, let's welcome our beautiful red highlight model team, Shining Debut. Just as the words fell, Nina takes the stage first. She is wearing a long yellow skirt. She walks gracefully. The floral waistband accentuates her perfect figure. Such avant-garde and bold attire, instantly making the audience blush with embarrassment. Eyes fixed on Nina without blinking. Next on stage is Neo Dandan, Captain Neo wearing a pink mini skirt. Looks extremely lively and cute. At this time, the audience below has completely boiled over. In the 1980s, there was a shortage of various goods. They had never seen such trendy clothes before. Zhou Yufeng was also very satisfied with the performance of the modeling team. He was previously worried that there might be some problems. It seems that I was overthinking. Zhou Yufeng is very excited, as if the audience below is not there, but rather a large-scale imitation. Then she made a gesture towards the host. It's time. The main purpose of the fashion show is to sell clothes, and the atmosphere right now is just right. The audience below is too enthusiastic, especially the male audience. B's snow white legs are walking back and forth on the stage. Is this something we can watch without spending money? At this moment, the host walks onto the stage. Audience, please calm down. There's an even more exciting show coming up. Please be patient. In order to thank our new and old customers, our fashion show in the Magic City has prepared a wave of benefits for everyone. The audience below watched the performance stop, and their eyes became blank. Zero, I wonder what this kid is up to. All the clothes showcased in the fashion show in Shanghai are the latest models, and they are the newest models not available on the market. Guests present at the event do not need to wait for the clothes to be available in their region, but can purchase them directly at the event. The styles of these clothes are all designed by the famous American fashion designer Tom Kai Kai. They are personally designed and processed by our Mode of Fashion Workshop. As long as you wear clothes from Mode of Fashion Workshop, you will be the most eye-catching person. Such trendy and high-end clothing. What about the price? Let's wait and see. Why are the panties in the girls' dorms stolen so frequently? 
Why is the old nun's door knocked every night? Is it the distortion of human nature or the decline of morality? Welcome to this episode. The sensational program will surely get the audience all fired up, but what they don't know is that they have already fallen into Zhou Yufeng's carefully prepared trap, dear audience. In order to thank our new and old customers, the fashion show in Shanghai has prepared a wonderful model show for everyone. At the same time, it also brings extremely favorable prices. The audience below was all surprised, but more were confused. People from the 80s are still relatively conservative in their thinking, so they couldn't judge the host's purpose, only to see him wave his hand. Only 100 yuan, just 100 yuan. All the clothes you see today are only 100 yuan. At this point, another host chimes in. Is it really only 100 yuan? Then our factory won't make any profit. The audience below also began to whisper. They all really like the style of these clothes. But their monthly salary is less than 100 yuan. Moreover, the family still needs to make a living, so they decided to give up. But Zhou Yufeng would not allow such a thing to happen, so his routine entered the second stage. At this moment, a voice came from the audience. The price is wrong. You are going to ruin our factory like this. After finishing speaking, the male lead rushed onto the stage. How many times have I said it? Each piece of clothing has to sell for at least 110 yuan. Only then can the factory make a profit. We have traveled all the way from Guanghai to Kyoto. We're not here to lose money. All these clothes are this year's bestsellers. Who authorized you to do this? At this point, Zhou Yufeng on stage and the host began a heated argument about pricing. And all of this was arranged in advance by the male lead. The host pretended to look at another point with a difficult expression. Selling it for 100 yuan is already a benefit. The audience already knows. Only to see Zhou Yufeng angrily saying again, It must be changed back. Otherwise, the loss will be deducted from your salary. At this moment, Watermelon Head Foam Bao Bao walks out slowly from the backstage, looking like a big boss. Manager Zhou, since you've already said it, let's consider it as a benefit for our friends in Kyoto. At this point, Zhou Yufeng still wanted to say something, wearing an expression of wanting to speak but hesitating. I have to say, this grandson's play is really abundant. Our clothing factory in Shanghai has a hundred-year history. How could what is said change it? Isn't this deceiving the audience? You must pay attention to maintaining the company's image. All right, all right, stop sighing. Just sell it at this price. If something goes wrong, I will hold someone accountable. And so, this grand show prepared for the sake of making money has come to a complete close. The audience below the stage expressed their gratitude to the manufacturers one after another. What a conscientious business. At this moment, Feng Bao Bao led Zhou Yufeng off the stage. Their mission has ended. I'll leave the rest to the host. Those who want to purchase clothing, please line up on the other side. All clothing is priced at 100 yuan. The audience on site instantly ran towards the sales point. It's as if they would suffer a loss if they were late. Since ancient times, deep feelings have no one to ask. Only the hearts of people with routines. Using this sentence to describe this scene is really appropriate. Seeing that people have already formed a long line, Zhou Yufeng showed a satisfied smile. The model auctions off used intimate clothing for 100 yuan. Five pairs of worn pantyhose. The male compatriots in the audience are boiling with enthusiasm. As the host announced that the price of the clothes on the model is all 100 yuan. The clothing counter was instantly flooded with people. Everyone rushed to make purchases. This scene truly amazed Nadandan. After this fashion show, the clothing that started at 15 yuan was sold directly for 100 yuan. Such an expensive price still caused a frenzy among the crowd. It has to be said that Mr. Zhou indeed has his ways. Girls have always admired the strong, and this girl who is just entering puberty also developed some unusual feelings for Zhou Yufeng. Zhou Yufeng was also very satisfied with this fashion show. She has perfectly replicated the sales miracle of the previous life. No, it should be said that she has surpassed the sales miracle of the previous life. At this time, the whole mall is bustling with voices. People are even urging the salesperson to take the money first, fearing that they will miss out if they are late. At this rate, these clothes won't last long. It's like the clothes can't keep up with the demand. These clothes won't hold out for much longer. But the second batch of goods is still on the way. They can only arrive late at night. Zhou Yufeng was very glad for his foresight. He had to sell all the clothes directly, before the manufacturer reacted. Otherwise, it would be disastrous if the manufacturer forcefully takes over. Feng Bao Bao is also exhausted. She lights a cigarette to take a break. 
but the salesperson hurriedly runs over. Phone. Something's not right. The merchandise is sold out. The customers are getting upset. This has really surprised the manager. It's been less than two hours. Five full trucks of clothing, all sold out. And the next batch of goods hasn't arrived yet. He hurriedly ran towards the venue. Please be patient. The clothing for this fashion show has already been sold out. Everyone, please don't wait any longer. Let's all disperse. But how can consumers agree to this? They've been waiting in line for over an hour. Finally, it's almost their turn, but there's no stock available. The audience below instantly erupts. One after another began to accuse Fong Bao Bao of wasting everyone's time. Some even wanted to smash this place. At this moment, Fong Bao Bao was in a panic. It's not that he didn't want to make more money, but when there's no stock, there's no stock. Later, it was said that another batch will arrive the day after tomorrow. Moreover, whether it's the style or the quality, it's exactly the same as today's. Customers can come here directly to make a purchase at that time. After these words, the protests decreased significantly. The emotions of the crowd have stabilized. But the leading girls are worried that the factory will raise prices. Fong Bao Bao quickly made a guarantee. You can all rest assured. We promise not to raise prices. The clothes arriving the day after tomorrow are priced the same as today's. Everything is being sold for 100 yuan. Finally, the consumers left with peace of mind. Zhou Yufeng has been secretly observing this place the whole time. He watches as the crowd finally leaves. He also came to the scene to comfort everyone with peace of mind. Everyone now admires the young man in front of them. The sales volume that usually takes a month to achieve. After Zhou Yufeng's operation, it reached within just two hours. At this moment, Zhou Yufeng looked at Feng Bao Bao. Brother Feng, be sure to collect the payment for the goods. Let's settle the accounts later. Feng Bao Bao was ecstatic at this moment. She hugged her handbag tightly with both hands. At this moment, this bag is more important than his life. The models have also changed into their costumes. The performance outfits they wore before have been sold by the salesperson. At this moment, they are leisurely chatting. Meanwhile, Nyo Dandan and Nini are being interviewed by the TV station. I bet tomorrow's newspaper headlines will be all about these two. A man taking 12 young girls out to pan for gold. After the gold panning program, the banknotes filled three woven bags. Thanks to the efforts of the entire staff, the fashion show was a great success this time. All five sets of clothing were sold out in just over an hour. The attitude of the entire model team towards Zhou Yufeng has also completely changed, especially Nina. At this moment, this little girl is looking at the male lead with a face full of admiration. At this time, Yo Dandan also came over. She knows Nina very well. This girl rarely blushes. She also has very high standards. There is no one in the entire fashion scene of Shanghai that she deems worthy. But now he keeps staring at Zhou Yufeng. It looks like this girl has stirred up some feelings. After everyone finished cleaning up the battlefield, they all came to the side of the male lead. Several people gathered around a square table. There are also several cloth bundles on the table. Zhou Yufeng was the first to open a cloth bundle. Inside were bundles of hundred yuan bills. This money was their earnings for the day. They then began to settle their accounts for the day. The scene was very quiet. The sound of swiping what little money is left. Quickly, the cash in several cloth bags is counted. Each bundle of $10,000. A total of 50 bundles. In other words, a total of $500,000. This is a huge sum of money. Money was very valuable back then. An ice cream cost only one cent. Zhou Yufeng is also a big boss. So he wasn't very excited. But Feng Bao is different. He's just a regular worker. Seeing so much money made him panic instantly. Even his speech became stuttered. At this moment, Shua Tailong from the fashion department in Shanghai said, Boss Zhou, the payment has been settled. According to the agreement, you need to give us a rebate of 70,000. We will return to the factory tomorrow. Zhou Yufeng is a straightforward person. Since I promised, I must follow through. Trust is the foundation of our cooperation. Manager Shui, there's no problem with the rebate. I can give you the money now. Or after the next batch of goods is sold. Shui Tailong was stunned. The contract didn't mention there was another batch. Zhou Yufeng calmly said. There's another batch of goods on the way to Kyoto. When that batch is sold out, we'll continue to give you rebates. Shui Tailong was extremely surprised. Originally, their plan with the factory manager was that if the clothing sold well, then their factory would take over and continue selling. But this plan clearly fell through. Manager Shui, I had already communicated with Director Fong before the model show started. Although I am also worried that the clothing may not sell well. 
but the fact proves that my choice is right. So everyone has to continue to stay busy for a few more days. But don't worry, I, Zhou Yufeng, am not a stingy person. As long as the work is done well, you will not be treated unfairly. Hearing this, Xue Tailong had to reluctantly agree. But this matter must be discussed with the factory director. Otherwise, it would be disastrous if the responsibility for the second batch of goods implicated him. Meanwhile, in the office of the factory director of the Moda Clothing Factory, a furious roar could be heard. The usually calm Luther unexpectedly dropped his cup. At this moment, he was on the phone with Xue Tailong. 5,000 pieces of clothing sold out in just over an hour. This is even more than the wholesale quantity at their headquarters. The reputation of the Moda Fashion Factory has completely spread to Kyoto. Even the television stations came to interview. Facing this big cake of the Kyoto market, everyone wants to get a piece of the action. This also sowed the seeds of future grudges between Lu Deguang and Zhou Yufeng. In just two hours, the man made three bags of money. But this behavior has offended the business tycoon. Director Lu, while listening to the report from his subordinates, sighed, realizing that this young man is not simple. 5,000 pieces of clothing sold out in just an hour and a half. At this time, Xue Tailong looked around vigilantly. He was worried that someone might eavesdrop on his conversation with Director Lu Guang. Director Lu, there's something else I need to report to you. There are still 5,000 pieces of clothing from our factory on their way to Kyoto. I heard from Zhou Yufeng that Director Feng signed for them. Lu Guang was stunned after listening to it. The previous agreement with the male lead did not mention continuing to deliver goods later. Moreover, the second batch of goods completely bypassed himself. Feng Shilai did not mention this to him either. At this moment, Lu Guang was a little confused. Xue Taliang continued, The factory director said that our factory's clothing is selling very well in Kyoto. It can totally bypass Zhou Yufeng and sell it on our own. Moreover, those goods are sent out by our factory, and the contract also does not specify it. Shall we just stop the shipment? At this moment, Luther fell into contemplation. He constantly replayed the whole incident in his mind. The previous contract with Xiao Shui was drafted by Zhou Yufeng. It did not clearly specify the quantity and frequency of purchases, and the second shipping order has Director Feng's signature. Thinking of this, Luther angrily taps on the desk. Feng Shilai actually dared to deliver goods directly to Zhou Yufeng. Obviously, he doesn't regard himself, the factory director, highly. It seems that there must be some kind of undisclosed connection between these two people. Lu Guan thought of Feng Shilai's son Feng Baobao again. This kid suddenly resigned. There must be something fishy here. Later, Lu Guan would directly call Zhou Yufeng. Xue Taoyang also interestingly called the male lead over. At this point, Zhou Yufeng had already guessed. After all, everyone around him is from the Lu family. Someone will definitely inform him. He was a bit nervous, although his actions were a kind of commercial strategy. But after all, it's not very honorable. After taking a deep breath, she picked up the phone. Xue Taoyang did not go far. Instead, he leaned against the door of the room and eavesdropped on their phone call. He expected that they would definitely have a big argument. Lu Guang is also a smooth operator. He congratulates Zhou Yufeng very politely. Brother Zhou sold 5,000 pieces of clothing in one night. Congratulations to you. Zhou Yufeng is also very low-key. He knows he must appease Lu Guang. Otherwise, it would be a disaster if we had to forcibly take back the second batch of clothing. Director Lu... We must thank your factory's modeling team and your strong support. After I return to Guanghai, I will definitely invite you to dinner. After exchanging pleasantries for a while, Lu Guang's expression also turned cold. Zhou, I heard that you took another batch of goods from our factory. Why didn't you tell me beforehand? Although we have an agreement, it doesn't mention the second batch of goods. Bro, I don't think it's right for you to do this. At this moment, Zhou Yufeng's expression also became serious. At this point, Saying anything is of no use. We might as well see what he wants to do next. Bro, I, Luo Deguang, am not a petty person. Since the goods have already been sent out, you can continue to sell them. But I have a question. When did you sign the contract to sew them up? This is bad. Listen to Luther's attitude. I'm afraid he's already prepared to tidy up. Men forcing girls to perform without wearing underwear. In just two hours, he earned three bags of money. Facing Luther's questions. Zhou Yufeng does not dare to be negligent at all. If this question is not answered well, then helping oneself to sew it up will definitely be punished. Zhou Yufeng is a smart person, and a person of high standards. 
He doesn't want this kind of thing to happen. Director Liu added 5,000 pieces of clothing, because a customer ordered in advance. This answer is still reasonable for ordinary people, but Liu Duguang is after all a figure in the alcohol industry, so he just remained silent. The male lead continued to explain, hoping to salvage the situation. He completely shouldered the responsibility himself, attempting to turn the situation around by helping to salvage it, but Luther Guang ignored him. Zhou, just let me know if you need anything in the future. Director Feng's position has been adjusted. He's immediately been transferred to another position. Sure enough, in the end, Zhou was implicated. It's useless to say anything now. So the male lead hung up the phone. As for Luther's behavior, Zhou Yufeng didn't care at all. As for the sewing, their family will at least get a commission of 50,000 this time. This is also why sewing up is willing to take the risk to help themselves. The mall is like a battlefield. Not only is there scheming and plotting inside, but also a fight to the death. Currently, Zhou Yufeng has enough funds in hand to open them all. There will definitely be a big battle with Luther Guang at that time. Even the seamstresses at home have received the transfer notice. He only earns a hundred yuan a month. By helping Zhou Yufeng, I can get fifty thousand. This is a good deal. The second batch of clothing also arrived in Kyoto two days later. The model show is once again held. The difference from last time is, this time the fashion show is broadcasted on TV. The whole nation knows about the fashion in the Magic City. The model team has also become completely popular. After a busy night, everyone begins to take stock. Phone Bao Bao is very diligent. He has already been fired. But he must take care of the new boss, Zhou Yufeng. At that time, there was still no photocopier. So the speed is very slow. It took one hour to count all the banknotes. Exactly 50,000. Zhou Yufeng is in a very good mood. His personal wealth now exceeds 99% of the population. Lian Lian expresses gratitude to everyone for their efforts these past few days. Xue Tailong said there's no need to be polite. They also came to Shanghai Apparel Factory to generate revenue. Later, he said, Boss Zhou, when do you think we should go back? There's still a lot of work at the factory that needs my attention. Zhou Yufeng appreciates Xue Tailong very much. Although this kid confessed his own guilt, it's also for the good of his company. Then he turned to Feng Baobao and said, Brother Feng, you go deposit the money first. After depositing the money, we will head back to Guanghai. This guy with the crew cut immediately ran out. He also hopes to go back early. This way, he can get his commission earlier. We now have the capital. Zhou Yufeng is also about to start a new plan to open her own clothing company. At this time, all the members of the modeling team were gathered in front of the TV. Yo Dandan and Ni Nana have gained quite a lot this time. The TV is playing a clip of an interview with the two of them. You should know that this is an exclusive interview. Their fame has skyrocketed because of this. Popularity means money. The higher the popularity, the more money they have. The members of the modeling team are all very envious of the two of them. Afterward, everyone talked about Zhou Yufeng. The fact that this event sold 10,000 pieces of clothing has already spread. These girls around 20 years old all admire him. Some people have even started to care about whether Zhou Yufeng has a girlfriend. His wife's whole family dislikes him for being too poor. They want to force the two to divorce. Now he is worth millions. He has even gained a group of young fangirls. Boss Zhou sold 10,000 pieces of clothing in just two days. The profits this time are at least 1 million. Although it's a fact. But Nyo Dandan still can't believe it. The members of the modeling team were quite shocked after hearing this. They only get a hundred bucks a month. How long will it take to earn so much money? At this time, a little girl with a red face asked Nyo Dandan, How old is Mr. Zhou this year? And whether he has a girlfriend? These are exactly what Nyo Dandan wants to know. Girls all admire the strong. He is no exception. Seeing that the captain remained silent, the girl asked again. Captain Nyo. Do you think Mr. Zhou would like someone like me? Nyo Dandan finally came to his senses. I'm not clear about these things either. After all, I've only known Boss Zhou for a few days. The girl looked at Nina again. Nina, Boss Zhou has been staring at you before. Could it be that I've fallen for you? Although Manager Zhou has a good impression of you, we sisters will compete fairly. As long as you two haven't declared, I still have a chance, you know. The crowd began to tease Nina one after another. The little girl even blushed. She shyly said she couldn't understand why Zhou Yufeng would like her. Nyo Dandan looked at the people in front of her, feeling complicated. She didn't know why, but she just couldn't be happy now. This cheerful girl even started to sigh. When meeting Zhou Yufeng for the first time, everyone thought she was a loser. 
completely unworthy of the model team, but since knowing the male lead earned one million, the crowd began to stir restlessly. Yo Dandan was no exception. She didn't know if Boss Sho would like her type of girl. Later, everyone returned to the Magic City. At this time, Zhou Yufeng stayed at the best hotel in the Magic City. She used to live in a rundown palace for 50 cents a night. It's like one month she's in Shangri-La, the next month she's in hell. Feng Bao Bao also followed her. At this time, in her eyes, Zhou Yufeng was like a god. She wanted to continue working with the male lead, but didn't know how to speak up. So he went on a licking spree towards Zhou Yufeng. This made Zhou Yufeng extremely embarrassed. She doesn't like others to flatter her, but prefers those who are down-to-earth and competent. At this time, Feng Bao Bao asked, Yu Feng, what are your plans next? Are you going to continue cooperating with the fashion factory in Motive? But how could Zhou Yu Feng be satisfied with being just a wholesaler? She wants to open her own fashion factory here, and it's also top-notch nationwide. Feng Bao Bao advised her to set up a factory in Kyoto. Compared to other cities, the platform here is larger. The purchasing power of the masses is also stronger. But Zhou Yu Feng has her own ideas. The wages for workers, as well as the land and conditions here, are much better than in Kyoto. As for purchasing power, we could just open a specialty store in Kyoto. Feng Bao Bao also agrees with Zhou Yu Feng's idea. In just two days, she made 50,000 yuan on her own. She now looks up to the male lead. Then she had a hesitant look on her face. She wants to continue making money with Zhou Yufeng, but she is embarrassed to say so. The male lead has long seen Feng Bao Bao's thoughts. She has a good impression of this watermelon head. She simply promised to let her work with her at any time. Zhou Yufeng is a person who cherishes talent. Feng Bao Bao may not be considered a talent, but her father, Feng Qilai, is indeed a rare talent. This is also why she is willing to keep Feng Bao Bao. Men boast that their underwear can glow. Ignorant girls have expressed doubts one after another. The model show has ended successfully. Feng Bao Bao also became Zhou Yufeng's first employee. It's also time to go find that old fox Lu Diguang. Zhou Yufeng wants to start her own clothing factory. When the time comes, she will definitely have a head-on confrontation with Lu Diguang's factory. But you have to take things one step at a time. Rome wasn't built in a day. Before that, we still need to continue to utilize the influence of the fashion factory in Shanghai. At this point, Lu Diguang still doesn't know that Zhou Yufeng is going to compete with her for the cake, but he also understands in his heart. This young man will never be content to be a middleman. At this point, the two of them had their first meeting after the fashion show. A few weeks ago, this young man only had 40,000 in his pocket, but a few weeks later, he had become a millionaire. Zhou Yufeng was very modest. Brother Lu, thank you for your understanding and support. You are truly a benefactor in my life. Lu Diguang didn't mention those unhappy things anymore. Among businessmen, there is no right or wrong, only interests. He now has a strong interest in the joining proposal put forward by Zhou Yufeng. This time, he asked Zhou Yufeng to come to discuss the joining matter. Although the Modu clothing factory is currently doing well, it has also reached a bottleneck. So Lu Diguang wants to break through the current situation through the male lead. Zhou Yufeng didn't hide anything either. He directly explained the complete train of thought to him. This took a whole four hours to explain. By the time he finished, there was already a crowd gathered outside the door. Shui Tailong and the members of the model team are all present. The former is completely concerned about the development direction of the factory, while the latter is looking for opportunities to get close to the male lead. Zhou Yufeng and Lu Diguang are chatting very well. The male lead wants the franchise rights for the seaside city. The plan was given by someone else. So, Lu Diguang didn't object either. The two walked out of the office together. Lu Diguang tentatively asked Zhou Yufeng what his next step was. The male lead expressed that he only wanted to be a franchisee. As soon as our factory manager and boss Zhou came out, the crowd gathered around. They warmly greeted Zhou Yufeng one after another. Lu Diguang was seen with his arm around Zhou Yufeng's shoulder, saying, From now on, boss Zhou will be our business partner. To thank everyone for their hard work these days, Zhou invited everyone to have dinner at the Zeman Hotel. When did I say I would treat everyone? As soon as he finished speaking, the models and the team widened their eyes excitedly. The consumption at the Zeman Hotel is extremely high. They have never been there before. To say that Lu Diguang completely doesn't care about the previous matters, that's impossible. After all, no one wants their trusted aides to have contact with outsiders. So he's preparing to punish the male lead. Get out the benefits. Everyone is thanking Zhou Yufeng one after another. The Zhu Man Hotel is a foreign-owned hotel. 
They have steaks and red wine that you can't usually get. At this moment, a few team members are whispering. This time, Boss Joe is very likely to ask for Nina's phone number. Nadandan also overheard. Since returning to the sea, this little girl has been absent-minded. She has been thinking about Zhou Yufeng. Now, she finally has the chance to meet him. But the male Li just walked past her, without even looking at her. This instantly made her heart sink to the bottom. A huge sense of loss swept over her. Various delicious dishes were laid out on the table. It's all home-cooked dishes. When they come to a foreign-funded hotel, they eat braised pork with vermicelli. These people are also great. Most importantly, they still drink red wine. Drinking red wine and eating dry pot fatty intestines. This move really caught me off guard. Although this combination is quite unusual, it doesn't affect the enthusiasm of the crowd at all. The little girls from the model team are very happy. They all raise their glasses to thank Zhou Yufeng for her generosity. After practicing, Zhou Yufeng and Lu Deguang shook hands and bid farewell. Although they appeared friendly on the surface, they each harbored their own concerns. Cake Soon, the two will be at loggerheads. Although Lu Guang has been operating in this industry for many years, Zhou Yufeng is not an easy target either. As the saying goes, no matter how cunning the hunter, they are no match for a clever fox. The father-in-law despised the son-in-law for being too poor and forced his daughter to divorce him. Nowadays, the man's net worth is in the millions. Surrounded by numerous beautiful women, after the dinner gathering with the fashion company in Shanghai, the male lead also prepared to leave. He now has one million in savings. The matter of the funeral can be put on the agenda. Drank too much last night. Got up early today. Plus the hustle and bustle of these days. Zhou Yufeng, who is waiting for the bus, is yawning nonstop. He stretches his back lazily. Finally, I can go home. Then I have to visit Feng Chilai and study the issues with the opening scene. Just remembered the models Nina and Nyo Danden. These two girls not only look beautiful, but also perform well on the runway. They will need to start their own company in the future. Just as he was contemplating these issues, realized someone tapped on her shoulder. Zhou Yufeng looked very puzzled. Is it because she ran into an acquaintance? So she turned around, and found it was Nyo Danden from the modeling team. At this time, he was shyly greeting Zhou Yufeng. Maybe he came specifically to see her off. Then he asked Nyo Danden what was going on. But Captain Nyo, who is usually cheerful and outgoing, became awkward, standing timidly without speaking. This week, Yu Feng seemed really clueless. Just by looking at someone's emotions, you can tell they're definitely here to confess. At this moment, Nyo Danden has lost her usual cheerfulness, completely with the expression of a little fangirl. Perhaps everyone is in this state when facing their beloved. Just as he was about to speak, a bus quickly pulled into the station. It was the one that Zhou Yufeng wanted to take. Nidandan, speak up quickly. The blogger is getting anxious with you. If you don't confess to the man you love, he'll be gone. At this moment, Zhou Yufeng saw the bus arriving. The next second, he ran out, leaving behind a surprise Nyo Dandan. This little girl was a beat too slow. At this moment, Zhou Yufeng's voice came through the air. Captain Yo, my car is here. Let's talk next time if there's anything. Goodbye. Captain Nyo. As she watched the car slowly drive away from the platform, Nyo Danden felt very despondent. This girl has high standards when it comes to finding a partner. After finally meeting someone she likes, she ends up losing him right under her nose. But she makes a firm decision to make Zhou Yufeng her man no matter what. Night. Zhou Yufeng arrived at Feng Shilai's house. It's time to fulfill the promise made to others before. On the table were two bank books. One with 21,000 the other with 50,000, all prepared by Zhou Yufeng before he arrived. Feng Shi looked solemnly at the passbook on the table. There was no trace of overnight success joy. Instead, he was unusually calm. At this moment, Feng Shi thought, I, Feng, had drifted through half of my life and only managed to scrape together a little wealth. Now, after doing a small favor, I have received 50,000 yuan. Watching Zhou Yufeng drinking water, Feng Shi Lai is growing fonder of this young person. They have both credibility and courage. This child will surely become successful in the future. Yu Feng, I heard that you are planning to open a clothing factory in this coastal city. How are your preparations going? Zhou Yu Feng is also planning to ask Feng Shi's opinion. After all, he has been in this industry for decades. This belongs to the expert level. I don't know much about the clothing industry, Uncle Feng. I am not clear about things like factory area, manpower and equipment, equipment channels, etc. Also, 
I have no idea where to find talents in this field. Do you have any experienced master craftsmen to introduce to me? Handling things like Yu Feng will be much easier, but if you want to enter this industry, you are bound to have conflicts with mode of fashion. Do you have the confidence to win? The poor son-in-law was beaten out of the house by his father-in-law and even forced his daughter to divorce him. Now the male lead is worth millions. Can the lovers reunite after all the troubles? Zhou Yufeng is growing up too fast. In just three days, he earned a million. Now he's going to start a clothing factory. Feng Shilai is very worried. If he starts a clothing factory, it will definitely conflict with Modu Apparel. I advise the male lead to be cautious. But Zhou Yufeng is very determined. He wants to create an earth-shattering business. No matter what kind of storms he will face in the future, let them come. Besides, he has already chosen the venue, right here in this coastal city, where the per capita income is low. This way, labor costs can be effectively saved. The only pillar industry there is a steel mill. It has made finding employment very difficult. If I can help solve a part of the employment problem, the leaders of each department will definitely support me. As for the competition with the Magic City Clothing Factory, I came up with a brand new marketing plan last night. Even if Luther Guang is very powerful, I have confidence to defeat him. Feng Shi was inspired by these words. I didn't expect this young man of only 25 years to be so bold. He has solved all the problems that troubled him before. Then he put his arm around Zhou Yufeng's shoulder and talked to him about the specific details of setting up a clothing factory. This is how Zhou Yufeng gained Feng Shilai's full approval. The conversation lasted for six hours. The male lead also bid farewell to Feng Shilai, getting ready to go home. At this time, my younger siblings should also be at the beach, thinking about the family soon reuniting. The male lead quickened his pace. Zhou Yufeng has made great gains during this time. Not only did he earn his first million in life, but he also recruited Feng Shilai, a major general, under his command, and now he's preparing to open a clothing factory. It could be said that he's had three strokes of good luck, with Feng Shilai as his assistant. The management of the clothing factory is not a problem anymore. On the other side, the younger brother and sister have already arrived in this coastal city. Looking at the crowd in front of them, Yuna and you seemed a little bewildered. Both girls are visiting a big city for the first time, just as they were a little at a loss. Tian Liang Liang, who came to pick them up, finally saw the three of them, so he called out to them loudly. Both little girls turned their heads at the same time. It's been a few months, and the two of them have become even more beautiful. Surely we'll be able to captivate thousands of young boys in the future. All three of them know Tian Liang Liang. After all, they were classmates with Zhou Yufeng and had met before. And among the many male classmates, Tian Liang Liang is the only one who doesn't look down on him. Don't judge him just because he's bald. His character is reliable, coupled with his good relationship with the male lead all along. So Zhou Yufeng entrusted him to pick up his younger brother and sister. Afterwards, Tian Liang Liang sent a few people home. On the way, Yuna kept asking about her big brother's recent situation. It's been a long time since the siblings met. All three of them miss the male Li very much. Tian Liang Liang patiently explains that. These people still don't know that Zhou Yufeng has made a lot of money now. Thinking about how poor the family was a few months ago. Wouldn't even split a penny into two halves. When Zhou Yufeng was cooking at home, he put too much rice. He was scolded by Yu Na with a dog's blood on his head. Now Zhou Yufeng not only bought a house here. His net worth has reached one million. It's like the story of the three months river. One moment you're on the east bank, the next you're on the west. Just as everyone was heading home, they encountered Zhou Yufeng's ex-wife, Jiang Xiaoduo, on the road. The poor son-in-law is looked down upon by his wife's entire family. They even forced her to divorce her daughter. Nowadays, a man's net worth is in the millions. There are countless pursuers around him. Since Xiaoduo divorced the male lead, she returned to her parents in Zhihai City. But now, she has encountered Zhou Yufeng's younger brother and sister on her way home from work. When she saw her former sister-in-law, Yuna was stunned. For a moment, she didn't know how to greet her. The atmosphere became somewhat awkward. Xiaoduo was also stunned. She watched these children grow up, and now they have all grown taller. The sudden reunion left her at a loss for words. Several people stood facing each other like this. Tian Liang also sensed the awkward atmosphere, so he broke the silence and greeted Xiao Duo actively. So Xiao Duo stopped overthinking, asked a few little guys how they came to the sea, complimented Xiao Na and Xiao Yu for becoming beautiful. Xiao Jing has also grown taller. After that, she habitually reached into her bag and took out a few one-dollar bills. 
Yuna, hold on to this ten dollars, and buy something tasty for your younger siblings, before I divorced Zhou Yufeng. Although life was a bit hard, I still gave some pocket money to my younger siblings. Xiao Duo is too kind-hearted. All the old fans know that Xiao Duo's family is in a very difficult situation. She was cheated out of a lot of money and owed a lot of debt, but she still took out her last ten bucks. It can be seen that Xiao Duo really likes these few children. Yuna didn't mind. After all, her brother and sister-in-law have already divorced. It's different from before. The main thing is, Zhou Yufeng has been doing well in business during this time. Before leaving, I already sent them the money. Everyone needs to go home early to clean up. So she waved goodbye to Xiao Duo. Xiao Duo wanted to say something more, but she didn't speak. Watching the figures of the people moving away, Jian Xiao Duo felt a little low. These little ones used to stick to themselves. Now they deliberately keep their distance. Tian Lian, as an outsider, naturally can't say much. After all, this is someone else's family matter. Xiao Duo stood there in a daze, looking so pitiful and helpless. Ever since her divorce from Zhou Yufeng, she's been really struggling. Her parents keep bringing up the past to upset her, forcing her to go on a blind date with someone she doesn't like. Brother and sister-in-law mock themselves every day. Now the family is in a lot of debt again. Xiao Duo can only silently bear all these things. The next day, Zhou Yufeng finally returned home. The male lead is now very successful. He has money, a career, and a house. The family is finally reunited. Marrying another daughter-in-law would make it perfect. At this moment, Xiaona was cleaning the front door. When she looked up, she saw Zhou Yufeng, who was smiling. Excitedly, she waved at her big brother. The siblings have been relying on each other since childhood. Deeply emotional, Xiao Jing and Xiao Yu also heard their sister's voice. They both turned to the door. The three of them ran towards Zhou Yufeng. This scene is really heartwarming. Let me wipe away the tears from the corner of my eyes. The two sisters kept asking me about my well-being. They know that it's hard for their big brother to earn money outside. Xiao Jing, on the other hand, is clamoring to be held by Zhou Yufeng. The whole family is finally reunited. And now I even have a big house. Just think, I used to rent a house back in my hometown. It feels like a lifetime ago. Xiao Ye Xiaoan, your school records have been transferred. Have you checked in at the school? Both of them replied that they had already checked in this morning. They can start classes tomorrow. Zhou Yufeng smiled and said he bought them new clothes. And they are the latest fashion. I'll just wear my new clothes to class tomorrow. Inside the house, the sounds of laughter and joy from the siblings were never-ending. It's been a long journey. The beloved woman was taken away, and the man spends his days drowning his sorrows in alcohol. Now he is wealthy. He swears to win back his beloved. The Zhou family is now completely better off, even riding a bicycle. In those days, bicycles were not something everyone could afford. The money changer is asking for over $300. Xiao Jin couldn't wait to start rummaging through his big brother's bag. This little guy has never had anything good to eat before. Now it's time to make it up to him. Zhou Yufeng lovingly rubbed Xiao Eng's nose, laughing at him for being a foodie, while Yu Jing pouts, saying he is growing his body. Eat more to protect his older siblings. The male lead dotes on little Jing very much. He is the youngest at home. Still in elementary school. Later, Zhou Yufeng said again, This house has been bought by my brother. Afterwards, you can pick the room you like. This really surprised my younger siblings. They knew that their big brother was earning money, but they didn't expect that he could afford a house worth thousands of dollars. And now our family doesn't lack money. We can eat whatever we want on a regular basis, but you can't spend money randomly. The most important thing, even though you are in a new environment, your studies cannot be neglected. After saying that, he looked at Xiaona and Xiaoang. Especially the two of you. Can't be too playful. After announcing these things, Zhou Yufeng went back to his room to sleep. During this time, he was busy with business affairs. Feeling exhausted, he looked at the night scene outside the window. The male lead sighed a lot. Hard work pays off. His efforts will be rewarded. Then he entered dreamland. The next day, Zhou Yufeng got up early and washed up. There are too many things to do so they need to be dealt with quickly. At this time, Yu now walked over. She recounted what happened to Xiao Duo yesterday, sister-in-law. It's clear that she still hopes for a reconciliation between the two. Zhou Yufeng didn't feel surprised after hearing this. It's because this house is close to Xiaowa's home that he bought it. Although they have been divorced for a long time, Zhou Yufeng still deeply loves Jiang Xiao Duo. When the two just separated, 
The male lead used alcohol all day to numb himself. He even had hallucinations, thinking that Xiao Duo has always been by his side, never left. Zhou Yufeng has always been very hardworking. He goes out early and comes back late every day to do business. He hopes to make more money, so that his family can have a better life, and to gain the approval of his parents-in-law. Let Xiao Duo return to her side as soon as possible. In fact, he still harbors some resentment towards Xiao Duo. Although he deeply loves that girl, Xiao Duo is just too indecisive. She has always been influenced by her family's ideas. This is also the reason why the two of them have not been able to reconcile. Yuna also advised her big brother to remarry his sister-in-law. Over the years, sister-in-law has always taken care of these younger siblings. She even borrowed money from home to help them maintain their livelihood. But now Zhou Yufeng is also unable to do so. Since coming to this city for development, he has never stopped pursuing Jiang Xiaoduo. But Xiaodua's family has always opposed their relationship. Xiaodua's father even hit her because of this. Xiaodua's mother even resorted to threatening suicide. Yuna advised Big Brother not to give up. Yesterday, sister-in-law even wanted to give her ten dollars. This shows that sister-in-law still cares a lot about them. But as a younger sister, she also didn't want to interfere. But what she doesn't know is, Zhou Yufeng has been waiting for an opportunity. An opportunity to gain the approval of Xiaodua's parents. And this opportunity is about to come. The father-in-law looks down on his son-in-law, forcing his daughter to divorce him. Nowadays, a man can make a million in two days, but his ex-wife's family is deeply in debt. Since the divorce, Zhou Yufeng has been drowning his sorrows in alcohol all day. He has even started having hallucinations, thought my lover had never left. But the truth is right in front of me. It's already irreparable. Zhou Yufeng can only turn longing into motivation. Only by making his career successful, Xiao Duo may still have the chance to turn back. Time does not disappoint those with a sincere heart. In just two months, she earned her first one million in life. And this is just the beginning. In the future, she will earn countless more. When she returned home, her sister, Yuna, talked about meeting Xiao Duo. Xiao Duo even wanted to give them pocket money. Zhou Yufeng immediately became serious and asked if she had accepted. Yuna quickly replied that she didn't, saying that it wouldn't be right to ask for money again now that you two are divorced. Yuna, we owe a lot to Xiao Duo. Since marrying my brother, she hasn't had a single good day. It's true that Zhou Yufeng used to be really bad. He didn't work at all and just drank all day. The family relied on Xiao Duo and her family for money to make ends meet. At this moment, Yuna said that our family is rich now. Can you remarry your sister-in-law? Zhou Yufeng was very surprised after hearing this, thinking why this little girl was concerned about this. You said before that you couldn't let sister-in-law have a good life. Now it's just the right time to bring her back, Xiao Duo. The male lead had already thought about these things. It's just that he was waiting for the right opportunity. The opportunity to gain approval from Xiao Duo's parents. Then the conversation took a turn. Xiona heard that you are getting close with Lin Chang from our village. You just started college and already have a boyfriend. This embarrassed Xiaona quite a bit. Her face turned redder than a monkey's but in an instant. I wonder how he knew about this. We're talking about your business now. Why are you suddenly bringing up Lin Chang? We just normally have meals together. Moreover, that kid is so vulgar and uncouth. Just like a smelly ruffian. How could I possibly like him? Hearing this, Zhou Yufeng didn't ask any further questions. Nage was also a jerk before. So it's very likely that your sister-in-law doesn't love me anymore. But I have changed now. I will definitely make your sister-in-law get to know me again. But there are currently many obstacles. But I will definitely overcome all difficulties. Let your sister-in-law come back to me again. After saying this, Zhou Yufeng left. On the other side, Tian Liangliang just got off work and rushed out. He's going out to dinner with friends today. And the girl he likes will also be there. Seeing that Chui woman was also waiting for him, Tian Liang Liang felt a little embarrassed. This guy has been secretly in love with Chui woman, but currently does not have the courage to confess. Everyone received their salary today. Usually, they eat at the cafeteria, and everything they eat must be appropriate. So they decided to improve the food by going to a state-owned hotel. The charges at the state-owned hotel are not low, so they are planning for plan A. Of course, girls don't need to spend money. Tian Liang is also familiar with these tricks. It's a good opportunity to spend more time with Chui Woman. Otherwise, if you dine alone, your wallet will be emptied. At this time, Zhou Yufeng also arrived here. He also wanted to have a meal with Tian Liang Liang. 
so he shouted Tian Liangliang's name behind everyone. When Tian Liangliang saw Zhou Yufeng, he was very happy. He knew that the male lead had been doing very well in business recently. He wanted to get close to Zhou Yufeng. The male lead also had a good impression of him. After all, Tian Liangliang was the only one among many classmates who didn't look down on himself. This is also the reason why a lover can become friends. The poor son-in-law is looked down upon by his wife's entire family. He even forced his daughter to divorce him. Now the man makes a million in two days, and countless young girls confess their love to him. Among Zhou Yufeng's many classmates, Tian Liang Liang is his only friend. He is also the only one who did not look down on the male lead. Xiao Duo was the school's beauty back then. Under Zhou Yufeng's strong pursuit, the two became a couple. But this provoked Hu Xiaoshan. This kid is also a suitor of Xiao Duo. Even though the two are already married, Hu Xiaoshan still harbors resentment. He frequently insults Zhou Yufeng, and even wants to physically attack him. At that time, the classmates were all watching the excitement. Only Tian Liangliang helped Zhou Yufeng hold on to Hu Xiaoshan. This is the reason why the two became friends. As for Hu Xiaoshan, he was beaten quite badly by Zhou Yufeng. How many clothes did the male lead leave for Hu Xiaoshan? This meeting happens to be a good time to give them to him. Tian Liangliang is very happy. This is the first time he has received a gift. At this time, the male lead said, Liang Liang, I don't know your size. If the clothes don't fit, you can alter them. Are you guys planning to go eat together? I was just about to ask you out to eat. Then let's go together. Chui Wuwen also welcomed it. It will be more lively to have a meal together. But the other two colleagues don't think so. One more person means one more mouth. And one more expense. Treating Zhou Yufeng as a freeloader. Everyone then arrived at the state-owned restaurant. Afterward, the male lead called over the waiter. Started ordering dishes now that Zhou Yufeng has money. When spending, he no longer looks at the prices. In short, good food is expensive. This really annoyed the big boss. He thought, where did this guy come from? At this rate, they won't have enough money. Only to see Debiatu tapping the table with his fingers and saying in a harsh tone, Okay, okay, that's enough. You ordered so much, it's at least ten bucks. There's a limit to how much you can mooch off others. Why are you so shameless? Besides, our money doesn't just fall from the sky. Look at your bear-like appearance. The service from the waiter just now doesn't count. We'll order again. Debiatu's behavior made the atmosphere very awkward. Tian Lian quickly came out to smooth things over. He said that he would treat everyone to this meal. This scene is so familiar to Zhou Yufeng. He's seen many people like this before. A smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. Then he said to the waiter behind him, Sorry. No need to change the dishes. And he changed the cheap pork rib soup to the more expensive turtle soup. When this was said, Tian Liang completely collapsed. He just received his salary today. And after this meal, he'll probably have to go hungry. Two other colleagues were also greatly affected by Zhou Yufeng's actions. Isn't changing the cheap stuff for expensive stuff just slapping him in the face? Shortly after, De Beitu angrily scolded the male lead as being worthless. A poor guy who only knows how to freeload is told to disappear immediately by the male lead. Faced with the angry big cup Zhou Yufeng, Zhou Yufeng did not engage with him but just waved his hand. Liang Liang has helped me before, and we are good friends. I was originally going to invite him alone, but seeing all of you here, so I invited all of you to dinner. After saying this, two other colleagues immediately started arguing. They wished they could find a hole to hide in right away. Hastily apologizing to Zhou Yufeng, everyone finished eating and went downstairs together. Tian Liangliang didn't drive Chui Wenwen today, but instead put his arm around Zhou Yufeng's shoulder. Want to walk with him? This meal made Tian Liang very proud and shocked at the same time. With just ten bucks, the male lead can afford it. Thinking that Zhou Yufeng must have struck it rich, a man's wife being bullied by a group of people, successfully provoked him. Shame can only be washed away with blood and iron. Under the moonlight, the two gentlemen started discussing their significant others. Zhou Yufeng has a piercing gaze. He can tell that Tian Liang Liang is interested in Chui Wuwen. Otherwise, with his personality, he wouldn't go to such an expensive place to eat. Tian Liang Liang did not deny it. Instead, he asked how Zhou Yufeng and Xiao Duo are doing, only to see the male lead's greed. That's the way it is. Anyway, we're already divorced. Let's each pursue our own future. This statement surprised Tian Liang very much. Last time, Xiao Duo said she wanted to remarry you, right? Could it be that after you made a lot of money, you look down on others? It's not good for little Duo to have such thoughts about you. If you disappoint her. 
As your brother, I won't agree. This statement also surprised Zhou Yufeng. Xiao Duo said she wants to remarry herself. How come I didn't even know about this? So he stared at Tian Liang with excitement, making him explain himself clearly. This really scared Liang. Thought this kid was going to turn against us. Liang Liang, when did you say you were going to remarry me? Why don't I know about it? Tell me clearly. It was at Shin Ziren's birthday last time. At that time, Xu Jun and Shin Ziren kept speaking ill of you. Xiao Duo said that you two are going to remarry soon. Don't let them talk about you like that. Because of this, Xiao Duo had a big argument with Shin Ziren. Shin Ziren was really out of line that day. He almost made Xiao Duo cry. I heard that after that, Shin Ziren went to Xiao Duo's house again and told Xiao Duo's dad about the two of you. Because of this, Jian Yongguang slapped Xiao Duo. Xiao Duo's mom also got so angry that she ended up in the hospital. Yu Feng, this is how it all happened. That's all I know. Zhou Yufeng fell silent. No wonder Xiao Duo suddenly became distant from herself. She wouldn't even look at herself. It turns out she has been carrying so much pressure all this time, and she has never mentioned these things to herself. At this point, Tian Liang continued to say, Now, Xiao Duo should have completely broken with Shen Ziren. Xiao Duo's mother also just got out of the hospital not long ago. Zhou Yufeng didn't say anything after listening. He is now both angry and happy. Happy because Xiao Duo, that silly girl, finally agreed to give him a chance. Angry because these classmates dared to bully Xiao Duo. She is my woman. I bully others. It's not okay for you to bully, especially Shin Ziren and Zhu Jun. These two guys are colluding. They are always causing trouble for themselves. Did he desecrate their ancestors' graves in a past life? If I don't take care of them, what kind of man is Zhou Yufeng? From then on, the male lead completely hated Zhu Jun and Shin Ziren. This also set the stage for their tragic ending. The poor boy made a million in two days. He has always looked down on his father-in-law, but now he's in a lot of debt. Before, he not only forced his daughter to divorce the poor boy, but also publicly slapped him. Will he now overlook past grievances and lend a helping hand? Said goodbye to Tian Liang Liang. Zhou Yufeng began to stroll on the street. He didn't realize that Xiao Duo had been quietly giving, quietly bearing. A young couple approached him head on. It seems that they have encountered the same problem as Zhou Yufeng. The man kept comforting his daughter, telling her not to worry, and assuring her that he will persuade the father-in-law to agree to the marriage. Hearing this kind of conversation, Zhou Yufeng couldn't help but sigh. Xiao Duo, in order to be with him, has already had a falling out with her best friend. Even her parents are very disappointed in their daughter. If I cause Xiao Duo to be alienated because of my own reasons, then what kind of man am I, Zhou Yufeng? I've been living carefully during this time, while he has been living in constant distress. Even though he has suffered so much injustice, this silly girl has never complained. Thinking of this, Zhou Yufeng clenched his fist. He felt very guilty that he couldn't help his beloved bear any pressure. He really wanted to find Xiao Du's family, let them marry their daughter to him. But currently, Zhou Yufeng is still a private individual. Xiao Duo's father is a public servant. The person he looks down on the most is a private individual. The only way now is to expand the business and let everyone know that Xiao Duo's choice is not wrong. The next day, Zhou Yufeng arrived at the Industrial and Commercial Bureau. This time he was going to set up a factory. He was very familiar with this place. Previously, when he was selling at the night market, he often faced difficulties from the manager's pet dog. Zhou Yufeng confessed his love here while feeding a dog drugged meat. Shortly after, that boy was sent in. Director Zhang took advantage of the situation. He promoted his own nephew to be the manager of the night market. When Director Zhang, who was working, saw it, the male lead quickly greets. Zhou Yufeng is always very careful when facing public officials. He understands that he cannot offend these people for now. Director Zhang, on the other hand, is very enthusiastic. He still remembers Zhou Yufeng. After all, we used to have dealings. Hey, it's Zhou, my old buddy. I heard your last exhibition was very successful. Are you planning to organize another one this time? 